we're live. Let's talk about these raggedy apps. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, y'all know what I I got to I got to represent today. You know, we straight out of excuses. Ain't no excuses not to be out there making money no more cuz we know these apps is gaming us big time right now. Lyft is scared, which is why Lyft is threatening to pull out of Minneapolis. Uber's scared, which is why they're starting to screw around with all the surges now. We've been saying for a while how the surge is not really surge. And now we're seeing a lot of different drivers finally catching up. And they're going, oh, man, they, they're taking our surge away from us, man. You know, I, I had a surge on this and then it did. I'm like, how many times have I said this? That they paid me an upfront fare of, let's say, $13.99. But then I got a $7 surge added to it. But somehow, instead of it being $20.99, I end up getting something like $19 or $17, $18 out of the deal. It's like they took away $2.90. They're finally catching up. People are finally catching on, man. We've been saying this for a minute. Logan Block, what up? What up? Glitch Dash, my man, Khalil. I didn't go through StreamLard today. I went right back through uh, regular YouTube. Someone's been acting funny with the internet for the last few days. So I kind of had to say, you know, I'm going to go back through the YouTube way to do it instead of dealing with StreamYard because it was kind of hiccuping a little bit. What up, Melly Mel, Bubba Sue? That's what's up, what's up? Larry Cheek, what up, what up? Man, I've been putting out some crazy content, man. People are like, I because see, I started kind of doing some stuff with my TikTok account too. So I'm putting some stuff over there while I'm doing stuff on YouTube. Because I told you guys already, YouTube don't pay me enough. They really don't. And I'm just, I keep it 100 with everybody. If I say Uber don't pay me enough, they don't. If Lyft don't pay me enough, they don't. I'll say the same shit to YouTube. They don't pay me enough. Because I mean, I can make more than a dollar fifty an hour, a two dollars an hour. I can make more than that out in these streets. So I've been going out doing a whole bunch of private rides. I went out there and knocked out some private rides today. You know, I had a real good banger today and I appreciate my man for hitting me up for it. And, and like I said, he didn't have to, I live clear on the other side of town and he was like, Hey man, I need a private ride. I'm willing to pay you for it. I know you live far away from me. So I was like, you know what? Let's, let's make it happen, man. Let's make it happen. Drivers taking care of drivers. So I did that private ride today and he took care of me. It was, it was a while. It was a hike, nature hike. And I had to wait for him and everything else like that. But he took care of me. Trust me. He took care of me. And that's how we got to do each other. That's right. Barbecue time. And that's what these apps are scared of. They're scared of us knowing our worth, knowing our value, not turning on these raggedy ass apps, hoping and praying they give us a ride. No, we market ourselves. We out there letting people know. If you look on my Instagram channel, I'll let people know, hey, I'm up. Hey, I'm for hire. Hit me up. I'm for hire. You got to go out there and market yourself. Don't rely on these apps to market y'all. Because the moment, just like I said, what's happening in Minneapolis, Lyft is talking about, oh, we just going to pull out then. So what about all of the riders who used to use Lyft? You know, they got, you know, subscriptions to Lyft and shit like that. They're doing. A, so what about all these people? What about the families of the drivers that are saying, hey, we bought cars to drive Lyft and we're doing all this. We don't care about, you know, this and that. We just want to drive for you guys. This is why we protest. Think of how many drivers in Minneapolis right now are pigeons. Don't give a shit. They just picking up popcorn rides. How many drivers in Minneapolis are pigeons out there? But yet those pigeons are being affected by the strong ones standing up for everybody. Because they're saying, if you guys change the law in Minneapolis, we're going to hurt the pigeons too. And that's why I told those pigeons, they don't give a shit about y'all. Y'all out there sitting there driving for these low rate ass rides doing this. Crap. They don't care about y'all. They'll pull pull shop on y'all just as quick. You think, oh, yeah, man, they're going to like me because I'm doing rides because I'm not protesting. They don't care about you. The last driver on their mind is a weak driver. That's the last driver. Do you think they're going to be like, well, we'll only stay in Minneapolis for the drivers that are willing to drive for peanuts? They didn't say that. They said, we're pulling shop. We out of here. Fuck all y'all. We leaving. So they don't care about nobody. You could be a pigeon or not. They don't care about you. They're not going to treat you better because you a pigeon. But live. I got a high AR. We pulling shop. We out of here. They want the pigeons to turn on the strong ones. They want the pigeons to say, hey, guys, stop fighting. They're going to leave. Just like Madness says, private rides. Let them pick up. Let them go. See you. Because when these riders need some need rides, guess who they're going to find? The strong ass drivers who've been handing out business cards. Hey, man, I heard Lyft pull. They, they took off on us, man. We don't got no way to get to work now. Guess what? You got six drivers business cards in your purse. Look in your purse. There are six drivers in there who done gave you cards. Call one of them. Lyft ain't here no more. Fuck Lyft. We don't need Lyft up here. 
Look in your purse. Get a business card. I done told y'all, get your business cards together. Because when these riders need a ride, guess who they going to call? The first card they put, hey, you know, can you? I can take you to work. Don't worry about it. I got time. I ain't on lift anyways. I got time. Pigeon free zone. Exactly. <laughs> Rifle said, this is a pigeon free zone, man. Real shit. Hey, man. And as it, private rides, keep your pockets live, not dry like the ride share lies. Man, I'm telling you, hit it, hit it. And that's how we are on this channel. You know, we're a strong group. We know what we're worth. We don't sit around growling and begging and shit. Give me a, give me an extra dollar per ride. Now, man, fuck extra dollar per ride. I mean, y'all taking 60 to 7% of off every ride. Y'all ain't nothing but a travel agency. That's all y'all are. We don't need a travel agency around here. We don't need finders for finders fees. We don't need all that. We need where are the rides at and let's get ready to do the rides. Pay me. That's what I want to know. All the rest of that shit is misdemeanor. And that's why I saw an article today talking about Uber used to be uh, burning through cash. Uber used to burn through cash. Now they're a cash, you know, boom. Everybody loves Uber because all the investors love Uber. Well, the reason why they love Uber is because Uber's ripping off the drivers now. They never gave a shit about these drivers. So what are they doing? They're telling investors, hey, it's safe to invest with us because we got a bunch of fucking pigeons ready to do these rides. No matter what we do, we could steal from them. We could take the surge away from them. We can give them 50 cent per ride bonuses and quests and shit. They don't care. We can play the hell out of these because they're weak. They're weak. When you act like you got a backbone and you stand up against these motherfuckers, they get scared. They don't like that. Just like what they what were they doing? They were sending out a bunch of emails to all of us. You're not allowed to do an off app ride. I said, man, let me email you back. You're not allowed to steal my fucking tip. How about that? I'll email your ass back. So stop stealing my fucking tip and I'll stop doing off app rides because I'm not playing these games with these fucking people. This is about money. So if you stop playing a game with me, I'll stop playing a game with you. You give me my tips. You give me a fair surge. You give me the bonus, a fair percentage of the fair. You give me all that shit that we agreed on. Let me be an independent contractor because I'm not your employee. So let's not talk about what the average employee makes. Motherfucker, I'm not your average employee. I'm not an employee at all. I'm an independent contractor. So miss me with that average employee shit. Well, the average employee rate right now, motherfucker, do I look like an average employee? We're independent contractors. That's why we go on strike. That's why we protest against this shit. Because they keep fucking us up. We're not employees. You got it twisted. We need money to keep these cars going. We need money to pay for these places that we live, our apartments, our condos, townhouses, houses. This is why we do this. We don't do this just so we can make what an average employee makes. We ain't average employees. We in the business of this shit. Tell me what average employee is dumping 40, 50, 60,000 on a piece of equipment to use just to go to work. These motherfuckers won't even buy a mouse pad. Half your motherfucking employees don't even buy a mouse pad. And we out here buying big ass cars and SUVs and shit. These motherfuckers won't buy a mouse pad. You ask them to buy a mouse pad, they get all been like, well, why should I have to buy a mouse pad? Is, uh, because you work here, right? Well, you guys should have the computers for me. You should have the keyboards for me. But yet we out here buying big ass fucking trucks and shit. Don't pay me like no employee because I ain't no employee. Ask these motherfuckers to go buy a mouse pad and see how much you get. Oh, they're trying to make us buy fucking mouse and mouse pads, and they're trying to make us buy ink pens and shit for work. Yeah, why not? I mean, you want the job, right? Go buy your own ink pens if you want the job. I'm not buying an ink pen. Exactly, because the company gives you everything. Uber and Lyft don't give us shit. Everything we got from the floor mats and these motherfuckers to the, to the goddamn drinks I'm taking on break. Uber don't pay for shit, so we need that money. We got to get that money. What up, Hot Facts? My man Robert Reese in here. What's good? What's good? Man, he says, wait a minute. You mean you don't drive a Beamer for 250 <laughs> oh, They wish. They wish. Yeah, let those motherfuckers run up on me for 250 I'm like, nah, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to do it for $10. And if it's four motherfuckers jumping in, it might be 15 Because I'm telling motherfuckers right now, I'm selling my front seat. I'm not driving no more people around no more for these rates that these apps doing. I'm an independent contractor. My front seat is for sale. So if you got three people, hop your ass in the back. Let's ride. You got four, my front seat for sale. I'm an independent contractor. Lyft and Uber ain't got shit to do with their front seat. I mean, they want to sit up there and sell my car for $28, $29 and give me seven. Fuck that. That front seat's for sale. That's a $15 seat right there. You want to ride in behind that motherfucking windshield? It's a $15 seat. If I ain't getting at least 15, you can't use that seat. I'm sorry. You can get a, a SUV. It's an SUV right around the corner. Pay for that motherfucker. My man Lawrence is always sitting next to me in this big black SUV. I get $8 for the ride. Lawrence gets $18 for the exact same ride. 
So I'm getting eight for the same ride his ass is getting for 18. Use that big black SUV. Pay his ass 18. Because I'm done playing with these apps, man. If we're going to keep protesting and keep standing up, we got to come with the real. We can't come with the shield. We got to come with the real. Let these motherfuckers know we coming for money. And if you ain't paying us, that's cool. I'm going to get the rider to pay me. You ain't got to pay me shit. I'm not begging from you. Motherfucker, you're going to be begging me to stay on your app. You're going to be sending me messages and emails. Hey, if you don't do the next ride on the app, man, fuck you. If you don't pay me through the app, let's talk real money now. We're independent contractors. A lot of states out here got four hire livery. We could do livery. We can get our own insurance. We ain't got to use your high ass overpaid ass insurance just so we can make money banking your ass up. People got to get nuts in this game, man. There's been too many people playing weak in this fucking game. I know I ain't did live stream in a minute and motherfuckers like, Jeff, man, you came back a little too hot for these motherfuckers, man. Fuck them. We protest in April the 1st. Same day we protest and they tell me, I was like, we going to pull out of Minneapolis. Knock yourself the fuck out. Drivers in Minneapolis, get on Vista Print. Start making your business cards now. So when those motherfuckers pull out, y'all still making money. You're making more money. Let those motherfuckers go. Fuck them. Checkmate their ass. Let them pull out. Be ready. Be ready. Have your business cards out. Be on Facebook, Instagram. Put yourself out there. Hey, I'm for hire. If you need a ride, I do morning rides to work. I, I'm, I do rides home from lunch. I do whatever. It is. Put yourself out there. Market yourself. Fuck them. Checkmate they ass. Don't let them sit there and threaten us. Oh, we're not going to. Motherfucker, we don't need you. You need our cars. The fuck you think we need an app for? You're scared of us. They're scared because we got the car standing right next to the person. They so scared of us. They putting out bullshit stories. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's a scam when people offer cash rides. It's a scam. These motherfuckers scared of us. They scared of us. Why do you think they put out all these bullshit articles all the time? Because they scared of us. They know who we are. They see us coming. They know we coming for money. We not messing with them. I'll go to a concert all day, every day. Cash ride, what's up? I wear my shirt, my gear. Hey, cash ride, how much they charge you? 85, tell you why I do it for 55, because these motherfuckers only going to give me 27 anyways. They don't, they scared of that kind of talk. They don't want us to be like that. Ask them, ask them. Hey, if we do a cash ride, oh, if you do a cash ride, we're going to deactivate you. I don't say, well, if you're going to fucking short me and steal my tip and, and take the surge away from me, I'm going to deactivate you, Uber and Lyft. I'm going to deactivate your ass. So put that shit back on them. We know the games they playing. Like everybody walking around getting that, oh, man, I just got my money back for my EV. I got my money back for my EV. You ain't getting no interest on that shit. You probably missed a car payment, your insurance. You was probably late on fucking rent. They be holding people's money out. If you hit them back, hey, man, that money you held out for my EV, I actually missed a couple of payments, and I end up having to pay some late fees and shit on some shit that I was dealing with. Can you reimburse me for the late fees I had to pay? They don't even reimburse people for tolls and shit. They don't care about people. They will hold your money, play your ass, and they giving these money. Hey, here's 750 Here's 500 You know how much money they made on your fucking back to give you that? They could care. Like, to them, it's pennies. They throwing you fucking pennies, making you happy. And guess what? They're going to play you again. Just like in New York, everybody's talking about how, you know, that $328 million settlement, we got they motherfucker. And guess what? How much y'all making now per hour? Y'all paying your own settlement. <laughs> you motherfuckers in New York is paying your own settlement. They took $328 million and they said, we're going to settle for this. And guess what? All y'all motherfuckers ain't making shit now. They making y'all pay your own settlement. That's real shit. This is why we protest for y'all. We protest because this shit ain't no joke. We know the game. We know what it is. It ain't no. It ain't funny. We don't sit and laugh and go, oh, man, we're sorry. You got no, no, no. Y'all paying your own settlement and y'all know it. Y'all not making money now. That's why they was clapping and laughing because they knew. We gonna play their ass. We know exactly. Hey, what's, and if you want to make them seem like it's fully legit in their eyes, get the transaction on PayPal with the invoice. So they could pay from there. Square to a hey, robbery square. We could do PayPal. We could do Square. We can do corporate rides. Why? Because you can always invoice their ass back. Be like, who am I? I'm I'm X driver. You know, travel. That's my name, X driver travel. And I'll send you an invoice. And they can send that shit to accounting and get it put on a reimbursement check when they fucking submit they they monthly expenses for business. Hey, you took X for X driver. Yeah, I took X driver. Oh man, a lot of people be using him. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he's as he's legit business. He ain't Uber and Lyft. He used to be Uber and Lyft. Now he's doing his own thing now. So a lot of people. Yeah, the next door community app. Everything AAA. Hey, we got to do it like that. We've got to stand up for our. We are independent contractors. Uber and Lyft does not own the fucking planet. Get that through your head. 
They do not own every transaction of somebody getting in your car and you getting five dollars in your hand. They don't own every transaction. They got people so fucking shook. They think, oh, I can't do it unless it's on the app. That, I'm like, wait a fucking minute. Since when did Lyft and Uber own planet Earth? Well, the only way we can do a ride is, is we have to go through Uber or Lyft. We can't do it unless it's through Uber or Lyft. They got you motherfuckers shook. You on the plantation shook. You can do whatever you want to do. When you buy that car from the dealership, you can take that car from the dealership to your house, pick up your next door neighbor, take that motherfucker to the grocery store. The same day you just bought that car, Uber and Lyft can't fuck with you. You ain't even on Uber and Lyft. The state can't fuck. You ain't even on the state shit. You just bought that car from the dealership, put insurance on that shit yourself, drove it home. Your neighbor said, nice car, dog. Can I roll in that? Take me to the store. I'll I kick it down with $5, $15. Take me to the store in that nice ass car you just bought. Dry that motherfucker. You think somebody going to, the only thing you're going to do is get on YouTube. You're going to see some raggedy motherfuckers on YouTube. Oh, you can't do it. You got to download the Uber app. You can't do that. You can't buy a car from a dealership and give somebody a ride. You got to download the app. I said these raggedy motherfuckers on YouTube sound. I'm like, you fucking plantation grown motherfucker. Get out, get off my channel with that. Just because I own a car, that's my car. I can choose if I want to put it on the Uber Lyft app. Every car does not have to be on Uber or Lyft. It's our choice to say, I'm going to do business with you motherfuckers. I'm going to put my shit. Y'all can do a background check on me, whatever you want to do. I'll do business with y'all. But when I'm done doing business, it's my call. I could be done right now. I ain't got to wait to get deactivated. I could be done right now. I could say, you know, I'm done. Fuck with y'all. I'm done. How many people out there done just turn their apps off and say, fuck it, I'm done, man. I'm not doing this shit no more. And just, they didn't wait to get deactivated. They just stopped driving. They went and got a W-2 or deal with the hell they want to do. And just because they living on planet Earth and got a private fucking car, that don't mean, oh, you can't do any rides with that car unless you download the app. You download the app. You can now use it now. Now you can take people places because now you got a ride share app. You could do ride share. What the fuck? I can share my car with anybody I feel like sharing it with. This is a private vehicle. It's not public transportation. This is a private vehicle. It's mine. It's got my name on the title, my name on the insurance, my name on the registration. It's my private shit. You think you're going to tell me what to do with my car because you fell victim of the plantation mentality? You going to, well, since I'm doing it, you got to do it. No, I'm not retarded like you, motherfucker. We ain't the same. I already know if my next door neighbor needs a ride to the store, I'll take him. Motherfucker, that man, here 20 bucks for your time because I know you be busy in the garage all the time, man. Let me slide you 20 bucks, man. I know you be busy as a motherfucker over there. I'm sorry for bothering you, Jeff. Here's 20 bucks. You can't do that. That's ride share. You can't do that. Fuck you, you ragged ass pigeon. Get off my channel. We've been doing this shit for generations. And I'm sick of these fucking apps playing games with people. When I read that shit about, we're going to pull out of Minneapolis, we'll take your rabbit ass on then so we can get some real money made up here. Get your ass out the way. Take your app offline so when people are looking for a ride, we got drivers up there ready to work. We got websites. We got people giving out business cards. We got people on social media posting. I'm ready to work. We got people on Instagram, TikTok. I'm ready to work. Get lift out the fucking way, you raggedy motherfuckers. Get out the way. If you want to pull out, pull out. But guess what? We got drivers ready to work. We don't need no app. All we need is a way to let these motherfuckers know we're ready to work. That's it. And once we making enough money, we got all this money. We been, You can go buy your livery insurance. You can go buy your commercial insurance because you can afford it now. You ain't paying no 8x the fucking rate of insurance. They charging us 5x to 10x for these damn insurance rates they charging us. You can buy your own insurance once you making the money. You ain't got to worry about them. Fuck them. And that's why I'm looking at these apps and I'm like, who do they think they are? Somebody made these motherfuckers really think they got? No, we got the cars. You motherfuckers calling us. We got the cars. Y'all the ones telling us, hey, it's on fire in your region. Get online. It's on fire, man. Fuck you. I'm doing private rides today. I ain't getting on shit. I'm doing private rides today. So if you want us to drive for you. You want us to come out and make money for you. You got to fucking pay us. Stop trying to play us. A lot of motherfuckers waking up to the game. That's why they scared. Motherfuckers waking up to the game. And I hope everybody in Arizona go get a four hire license. Any state you can get a four hire license in. Talk to motherfuckers. Uber and Lyft ain't going to tell you how. You got to find out how. You got to go research how. You got to dig deep how. And you find out and you get that shit done. And you slowly put these motherfucking apps on their ass. Because when they need money, when they start needing revenue, when they can't get no rides, guess what? They're going to start putting surges and bonuses and questions shit out there. 
And that's when motherfuckers, oh man, Uber's paying good today, just like when we did the protest. It was motherfuckers, oh man, look how much I made. Because we wasn't out there. See, if these motherfuckers want us out there, they got to pay. I don't just mean one day. You got to pay every day. Don't just pay one day. Pay every day to keep our ass out there. Because if you ain't going to keep us out there, you ain't going to pay us. Fuck it. Hey, dry, like I was telling somebody else, you can go over to hotels. You can go to any, any place they got a rental car agency. Go to where all the rental car places are. Drive to the rental car places and ask people, anybody need a ride here? Motherfuckers standing outside with luggage and shit. They trying to get rides on the apps. They stand, they just turn a rental car in. They just got off the airplane. They got off the bus. They turn a rent. They need to get to the airport. They willing to give you $20 to just take them to the airport. They got all the luggage right in front of the rental car place. They looking for a ride. Everybody keep declining that shit because it ain't paying enough. So they like, we going to fuck around and miss our plane. Go to the rental car places. Sit there. I guarantee you can pluck cash rides all fucking day. We just going to the airport right here. Man, I'll slide you 20. And guess how much they, the app's going to pay you? Three. Four, because you ain't going nowhere just from the rental car place to the airport. But they're going to charge this person like 17 and they're going to pay you four. So just take your ass to the rental car places, set up shop and do cash rides. You might not get them all, but you ain't got to get them all. You just get enough. You say you get this motherfucker. Say, hey, man, I'm going to take you down to the airport. 15, 20. Cool. Oh, man. that's Hey, you could take us right now. Take you right now. Throw that luggage in. Take them to the airport, swing your ass right back to the rental car place and sit there and wait. Do you see somebody come outside with luggage? Hey, y'all need to shuttle to the airport. I'm right here, man. Y'all need to shuttle to the airport. If you're right here, let's go. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let these apps know we are creative. We're entrepreneurs more than anything else. We ain't just drivers. We're entrepreneurs. And if they don't understand that shit, they missing out. A lot of these drivers out there, a lot of these pigeons, they don't realize they're entrepreneurs because a lot of them ain't. A lot of them are W-2 employees who just want to, they want to be told what to do. A lot of motherfuckers are not self-starters. A lot of people are not self-motivated. A lot of people are not good at marketing themselves or their talents. They're good at being interviewed and being told what to fucking do. That's an employee. A lot of people are really good employees. employee. Motherfucker, you could be employed a week. I don't think I was ever employed a week at my job. No jobs I've ever had was I employed a month, the week, the fucking year. I wasn't even employed a fucking hour. These motherfuckers couldn't stand my ass. But I bet these motherfuckers need their goddamn brakes done. I'm the first one they call in the office, Jeff. Man, my brakes are fucked up. Give me 75. I'll take the $75, but I don't want no free-ass employee of the week fucking stamp. Don't give me no free stamp. Give me $75. I was always an entrepreneur in the office. When it was time for motherfucking need an alternator. Hey, Jeff, I'm like, let me go home, get out of my suit. I'll come back and I'll change the alternator right downstairs. Motherfucker, slide me $150. I'm changing alternators right in the parking garage of the fucking casinos and shit. They're like, my car just sitting downstairs. It won't start. Alternators out. I got you. I'm fucking, when I say I'm an entrepreneur, that's what I do. Even when I was corporate, I'm an entrepreneur. You will fuck about being an employee. I was never that. Never a good employee. And it's not that I'm not, people don't say, hey, man, you don't take good instruction. I take perfect instruction from people who know what the fuck they're talking about. Now, if you don't know what you're talking about, can't fuck with you because I'm a smart follower. I'm not a stupid follower. I'm a pretty smart. I follow smart people. I don't follow motherfuckers just because you give them a title. No, I don't do that. He says, yeah, we are the earners. <laughs> That's what he says. We're the earners. Yeah, we, we used to be called driving partners. Look at all the old videos. Our driving partners, our driving partners. Now these motherfuckers call us earners because they drop because they know we ain't they fucking partners. They know that. I said that shit in videos before when that lift motherfucker walked. Oh, yeah, this is a good win for drivers. If we partners, it should be a win for all of us. Right. But no. It's a good win for drivers. We ain't partners. We're earners. Exactly. It says, I'm averaging $1,400 a week doing delivery. No way in hell I could do that work in the same hours doing Uber and Lyft. Exactly, Austin. Like I said, with, with Uber and Lyft, they're seeing a bunch of desperate drivers out right now. They're seeing a bunch of drivers out here that don't know that they can de decline rides. Still in 2024. These motherfuckers are sitting there going, oh, my God, you, you, I can't believe it. you're turning down all these rides. I'm like, motherfucker, you can turn down any ride you want to. If you feel like turning down a ride, turn one down. Oh, no, man, I can't do that. You know, I, I'm going to get deactivated if I turn down rides. I'm like, dude, where the fuck you been? This, this is the motherfucker been in the deep back of the plantation, like way in the back where the cucumbers and shit growing. He's way in the fucking back, past the cotton, past the fucking potatoes. He's where the cucumbers are fucking growing on the plantation. This motherfucker's deep plantation. It's 2024. And you don't know this shit yet? Where you been? Like, shit, we've been talking about this shit. <laughs> this is a Jeff. Are you a certified mechanic? Because if you're not, you can't do that. Shit. 
I tell a motherfucker, guess what? If, if I got to be a certified mechanic and work on my cars and all you motherfuckers cooking dinner at home, better have the health department with a health stamp. I need to see the letter A on your fucking front door before I eat in your house. <laughs> <laughs> if the health department ain't stopped by your nasty ass house, then I'm not eating at your fucking house. Everybody needs to fucking be health certified then. Hey, oh, you you don't got a health certification on a restaurant? No, then what the fuck am I doing eating at your house? You see how stupid this shit can get? When you start getting government involved in everything, you can't touch this if you don't have this license. Can't have that if you don't have that certificate. Guess what? I can't eat at your house because you ain't health department certified. You don't got no letter A on your fucking front door, but you got roaches and shit in your house. I don't fucking know. I ain't eating this motherfucker till I see a letter A on your house. <laughs> it's like, shit, I wish the motherfucker would tell me some shit like that. Jeff, you're not certified, motherfucker. Your house ain't certified. Why? People eat at that motherfucking nasty ass spot too, don't they? I ain't eating at that shit. <laughs> man, Larry, man, say, anyone see that screenshot where a driver was charged 42 for one ride worth of Uber insurance? What? $42 for one ride worth of insurance? Hell no. $42. Bro, $42 for one ride of insurance? That's that's probably like fucking 20X, 30X. They charge the shit out these fucking people for insurance, man. And they know we could afford our own. If they gave us that money, give me that money. Let me go out and select my own insurance with the profits I'm making from doing the job I'm doing. Let me go out and spend that money. I bet we spend it a whole lot smarter than they do because they're not spending it. They're pocketing. This is how they are making all these profits. They're taking the insurance, marking it up for us. Like I was telling somebody else, imagine buying a car from the dealership. And instead of the dealership saying that you can buy your own all state of progressive before you leave, because most of us do that. Before we leave, we already got our insurance already set up. Because my insurance covers me for 30 days for any car I purchase, whether I tell them I got it or not. It covers already. All I got to do is call them and say, hey, put this on my insurance. Okay. But it's from 30 days from the time I bought that car, I purchased it. It's, I, it's on my insurance. I could drive home right there. It's already done. The dealership will say, we're not going to allow you to buy your own insurance. You've got to use our dealership insurance. What if that's the only option you had? And they say, well, our dealership insurance is $30 a day. We'll be like, what? $30 a day. That's $900 a fucking month for insurance. That's my dealership insurance. If you don't take the dealership insurance, you can't take the car off the lot. That's the kind of shit Uber and Lyft are doing right now. They're not giving us a true independent contractor choice of independently choosing who we want to use to insure our cars with the deductible we want to choose as an independent contractor. We're not their fucking employees. They cannot force us. We should all be taking a rabbit ass to the court, getting all of our money back that they fucked us over for years by telling us and not informing us, misinforming us, misleading us, making us think that we couldn't go get our own insurance. People have actually messaged Uber and Lyft saying, I would like to opt out of your insurance. What do they do? They get A out of fuck with these people to get these people to stop sending the messages. They never answer their question about opting out of insurance, though. It's a, well, we're sorry to hear about your, your disappointment with Uber and Lyft, but we hopefully that you will continue drive. And then they just end the chat like after two or three responses. But they never tell us, you can opt out and use your own insurance and we don't have to charge you. We'll actually give you the money that we will be paying, that we'll be dinging you for insurance. That's what they should say. The fact that they don't say it, I think they're misleading people. They're defrauding people. A lot of drivers were being defrauded. And I think one day this shit's going to come to a head and we all need to be paid back all the fucking money we got jacked from. And we should be charged an average rate of real insurance, not this shit they own. I'm, I'm like, hey, if we should only be paying $8,000 a year, people out there paying $40,000 a year for Uber insurance and all the markups. Because just think, if you're making $60,000 a year, and they're taking like 70% of the money, 50 to 70, you're really making 120 to $180,000 a year in fare. You're making that much in fare. And you're giving all that shit back in insurance. Shit's crazy, man. Crazy. Stan Jenkins, what's up, my brother? I was just emailing him back. I, I was just messaging Stan earlier, man. He was, he was like, man, I'm on a treadmill. So if my, my text message is coming through kind of funny, I was like, dude, don't worry about it. I, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I was suave today, Jeff. Uh, that dental work makes you bite like a dog. Or oh, motherfucker, shit. <laughs> I got a, I got one fucking. I, they put my temporary crown on there already, so I got the temporary crown. I got to go get the the real one in about four or five weeks after they make it. But yeah, shit don't hurt no more. They done fucked up now. I can talk now. <laughs> we back on live streams now. They done fucked up. I got a new tooth, motherfucker. I got a crown. Your ass is going down. <laughs> I'm going to make that T-shirt. I got a crown, so you going down, Uber and Lyft. 
<laughs> Stan Jenkins back in the building, back in the building. See what that shirt say? Hey, you know what it says? Hey, I'm straight. Straight excuses. If you ain't making no fucking money out there, you ain't opening your mouth. You're not opening your mouth. You, this is it. Motherfucker sitting right in your car. Sit, motherfuckers driving. Drivers driving their car, mad that they getting thirteen. Man, I don't believe I'm getting thirteen dollars for twenty three miles. I don't believe I'm getting thirteen dollars for these damn twenty. Did you tell the person in the back seat? No, you didn't. Ain't no excuse. Ain't no excuse. If you ain't talked to this person in the back about the transaction and what you going in, they have no idea. They just paid sixty two dollars. They thinking you getting sixty two dollars. They have no idea you getting thirteen. You mad at yourself because you ain't speak up. Shit, look at that. YouTube instead of YouTube.com, we got YouTube.com, motherfucker. Where you go to the dentist, you get your shit fixed. <laughs> yeah, this is Darius going to purchase his own island after he gets his 50 million that he stole from us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, well, man, and machine, I just did a black ride in my 740 passenger pay 80 for 11 mile ride that I was about 40 minutes. Lyft took 40% of the fare. I pay for commercial insurance already. They took money for that, anyways. I'm telling you, man. This is what the problem is. What up, Big Horn Kev? This is what the problem is. When these apps are charging for double commercial insurance, if you even were to get into an accident, you wouldn't want to use Uber's insurance because they got a $2,500 deductible. You're going to use your own commercial insurance, and Uber knows that. Uber has that $2,500 hanging over your head knowing they're going to run from this. The moment they get into a wreck, they're running from this $2,500. they are going to use any resource they can to not pay this $2,500. That $2,500 is a deterrent. That's all it is. That is a high-ass deductible. We are paying how much a year in commercial insurance under the Uber and Lyft umbrella, and that's the deductible we get? That shit is uncalled for. That's robbery. You telling me we're paying like $30,000, $40,000 a year for commercial insurance and we got a $2,500 deductible, but I can pay my own insurance for $8,000 and have a $100, $200 deductible. That $2,500 is deterrent to make sure you don't chase after them for insurance. These motherfuckers are not slick. People are seeing through the games. And that's why cash rides are where everybody's aiming right now. Uber and Lyft's going to be mad, but fuck them. They've been mad. We've been mad. Everybody's mad. You're not willing to sit at the table and fucking stay mad, but we're going to stay getting money because when this motherfucker get in my back seat, oh, and I got an issue with the fare. Oh, we're going to have a problem. Hey, guess what? I'm only getting $24 for this ride all the way down to Maricopa. Damn, you getting 24? I paid $83.99 for this ride to Maricopa. $83.99 with surge and everything included from Maricopa. How the hell you only getting $24 for like 36 miles? Tell you what we're going to do. You're going to give me 70 bucks. We're going to call it good at 70. All right, bet. I'll, I'll do 70 because you saved me $15, man. You said right off the top because you're going to have to tip me on top of that anyway. So if you're going to tip me 10 to 15 on top of that, I'm saving you more than 15. I'm probably saving you 25 to 30. So I'm saving you 25 to 30 dollars by giving you a better fucking deal than these raggedy motherfuckers is giving both of us. So let's talk about it. I'm not going to sit in the car mad. If it's a deal I don't like, oh, we're going to talk about it. And if you say, you know what, I would rather just stay on the app. Okay, then we're going to find you a driver that wants to do an app ride. I'm going to cancel this ride. You can get out of my car because I'm going to find the next ride. The next ride will be mine. Oh, so you ain't doing a ride? No, I'm not doing a ride because you said you want to stay on the app. I'm not staying on the app. Not for that price. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it on the app. All right, well, fuck it, man. You got Cash App? You got Venmo? Yeah, I thought so. You got to stand your ground. If a motherfucker say, I don't want to do it on, I just want to do it on the app. I, I don't want to do it off the app. And you get the fuck up out of your car then. They just told you what the deal is. Cancel that shit. They can get out. Somebody's going to want to do that ride for them. Don't sit up there and bend. All right, I guess so. I guess so, man. But No, because you just beat yourself up now. You got to let them know. I'm doing it on the app. You got to get going. Sorry, I'm going to have to cancel this and you got to get going. Uh oh, I see the, the internet kind of like glitching and it's going slow as a motherfucker right now. Yeah, shaking my head. Insurance scam. Couldn't chat earlier, but what's up? All for kicks. I'm collecting cash rides all day. Hey, that's what we got to do, man. That's what we got to do. When I'm factoring the amount of insurance that the deliveries pay to the apps, the deductible should be $250, not $2,500. i am telling you, time to wake up, man. They getting people. And the fact that nobody's suing their ass for this and standing up against them, we need to figure something out because the current status quo is not working. We out here in these streets doing all this work and getting none of the benefit from it. These motherfuckers got news articles jumping left and right. Oh, Uber's a sure bet now. Lyft's a sure bet now. 
Let's make sure these motherfuckers include us in that. Because if we ain't a part of that money, don't let them be a sure bet on your back. You be a sure bet. When somebody needs a fucking ride, you be there. Have your business card, cash app, Venmo, Zelle, Square, whatever it is. You be the sure bet. Because if we letting these apps be the sure bet on our fucking backs while we getting evicted, we going broke, we can't afford a car repair, that makes us stupid ass pigeons. Saps. S-A-P. Stupid ass pigeons. Bunch of fucking saps driving around all day. I ain't no sap. Fuck that. You won't pay me? You Straight up? Let's do the ride then because Uber ain't paying me shit. And I ain't no sap. I ain't no stupid ass pigeon taking this ride. Too many motherfuckers be leaving the clubs at night, leaving dinners and shit like that. Nah. All this money circulating on the street right now and I'm getting scraps. I'm getting peanuts. Doubt it. Doubt it. Guess what? You want to ride in this clean ass car? Motherfucker, wheels clean, armor all detail, seats all clean, insurance they pay, gas up. Hey, I tell you what, $25. I get $25 right down the street. I'll take you there $25. Oh, cool, because they was charging me $32. Damn, for real? Because they was trying to give me $11. Like, fuck, they was charging me $32 because it was surge pricing. Well, guess what? You're saving money, and I'm making a little more, so everybody's winning right now. The apps got to come on board. If the apps ain't getting on board... Like I said, they leave in Minnesota. They telling everybody in Minnesota, including the saps, they telling everybody, fuck y'all, we out. So we need to learn how to say the same shit back to them. We've got the cars. We got the cars. Fuck them. Stop acting like they run us. We're not their employees. Their employees are sitting at the computers. Those are our employees. The employers are running back and forth to the copy machine in the conference room. Those are those employees. We're not their fucking employees. If we don't feel like doing a transaction, we ain't got to do it. We're independent contractors. Somebody want to do business straight up with us? Do it. Of course, the apps are going to try to scare them. It's a scam. People asking for cash is a scam. But you stealing my fucking tips, ain't? I'm like, come on now. Don't play the game because I, we could play that shit all day. We could play that all day. Screenshots, knowing what people are paying, what we're getting out of the deal. Oh, you guys can get 70% of the fare. When? Oh, we're going we're gonna to shore up with you for seven. No, you ain't shoring up with shit. Give me my money now. Because I ain't playing that well, you know, just like when people do the, all these little, they do all the quests and the challenges. And at the end, just like a homegirl Robin said, at the end of the quest or the end of the challenge, they freeze your phone up. They do something screwy to where you miss the whole challenge. You don't get the $800. You don't get the $1,200. You don't get the $400 because they did something to screw your shit up. They got you to do all of those rides. You get all the way to the end. You got three or four more rides left and they do some screwy shit so you don't hit the challenge. They've been doing this for years. One time I sat in Mesa one night in a parking lot arguing, arguing with Uber because I, I did a ride and the ride didn't calculate on my account. I started the ride before the period ended. And I was it was good because I had to do so many rides. Started it. And these motherfuckers trying not to pay me. Oh, I got my fucking money. I sat in the parking lot on their ass. What up, Ben and breakfast? Thank you, brother, for the super chat. Find your channel about a month ago. Thanks for all your efforts. Got my LLC. I'm getting my operated authority in Virginia. Now I set the rates, 300 making moves. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there, man. I love that. I love that. Let's see if I could put it up here. Oh, I can't put it up top, man. I wanted to put it up top. I wanted to kind of put the, I wanted to put it up top. I don't know how to do it. I'm still learning how to do these apps. <laughs> but I like that, man. I'm glad you said that. You making moves right now, Ben and Breakfast. You are making the kind of moves that these apps are scared of. Because when your shit works and everybody's going to say, damn, this motherfucker, pay. he making his car note now. He making rent now. He's doing it without the apps. Once you find out the plantation is all a facade, it's all to keep your ass there. They're going to throw fear tactics out. They're going to throw that, that sugar coated shit out there. Hey, if you drive, we're going to give you an extra bonus. If you bring on four people, I try to bring on three people. They made sure that I didn't get none of them bonuses for those three people. So I was like, so bringing on people is a scam because they're going to not get these people good rides to make sure they don't hit the number of rides they got to hit within so many days. So I don't get the bonus. They don't get the bonus. And I just put another driver into the mix. So I just stopped giving people like, no, nah, no, nah. man, what's your referral code? You don't want it. Trust me. You don't want it. Dude, give me your referral code. Trust me. You don't want it. <laughs> That's why I don't give all my referral code to people. You don't want it. What you want is to get on these motherfucking live streams to find out how you can get private clients. That's what you want. You don't want my referral code. I want you to have money in your bank. Fuck these people trying to sucker you to get on the plantation. I'm not helping you get on the plantation. I'm trying to help you stay off this motherfucker. Use it as a filler. If they got some good bonuses going, some good rides, knock yourself out. But for the most part, 
You need to be building your client base, building your, your own skills. Your prepare. We do the service, but we don't get no service fees. We out here honing our craft. We out here knowing how to talk to various people. We know how to stay up with the news and the media and what's going on in the world so we can chat with people in our car. We are the service. Them touching that ragged ass phone screen is not a service. That's not a, that's touching on the phone. You can play a video game for cheaper. These people are paying forty two dollars in service fees. It only costs you like a dollar to play a video game on your phone for hours on end. But yet 42 bucks to use Uber so somebody can come give you a ride. It's cost a $42 service fee. That shit don't make no sense to me. So I'm not trying to get you on a plantation. I'm trying to tell you if you're going to be on this motherfucker, be on it the smart way and always be working on getting yourself out of here. Because once you get locked in, a lot of people doing this full time. Uh, like I remember when I first started. I was doing it full. I had the Jeep. I was doing it full time. I didn't know what I was doing because, like I said, I was on YouTube. What no channels being real with it. Everybody was just kind of acting like, you know, they was like important. I'm a YouTuber and I drive. So watch my shit. But what are you doing? I'm just driving. Watch my shit. But are you teaching people some like about how these apps? I don't want to teach you none because I'm in competition with you. Just watch my shit. And that's basically how YouTube used to be. And I said, I'm not going to be that way because I think it's a piece of shit when people sit up there just gloating and bragging about what they do. They're not teaching people, teaching us how to be better at this, teaching us how to fight against these apps who are playing all of us. And so now that we got channels standing up, channels fighting, people talking, what the apps doing, apps are scared. Apps are fucking scared now. Oh, well, we're going to pull away. Well, we're not going to do this. Well, we're not going to because they know we're, because people are waking up. And we want to get the money that we used to earn, that we rightfully used to earn, being drivers in these fucking streets, having to repair these cars. And they were all, oh, we don't want to know what driver's costs are. Tell you what, price an engine to a 2019 BMW. Price that engine. Price the transmission. Price the brakes. Price the water pump. Price everything, alternator. Price everything on that fucking car because any of it can go out at any minute. And tell me if these little $2.28 fucking rides you paying me going to be able to pay that shit and for this house I live in. That's how you know what my costs are. Don't be, well, I, I know you're only paying, you know, $3 a gallon for gas and you're only going two miles and you average 25 miles. Motherfucker, I'm not, I'm not talking about pennies, dog. We talking about thousands of dollars. I'm not talking about no fucking pennies. My engine. It's going to run me five, six G's when it comes in. It's going to take me a few days to get that motherfucker. I get the other one in. So I'm already off three, four days, losing about $300 a day. So that right there is $1,200 plus that $5,500. i am sitting at $6,700 already. I'm sitting at $6,700. Ain't no $2.65 fucking cent rise going to cover that. So stop trying to give me that shit. We got to get this shit going. Set, exact set of tires every 18 months. Real shit. And especially in the desert. You burn through tires in the desert. These hot ass streets. We ain't going to make it. We ain't going to make it. Yeah, exactly. Don't mess with the accountant, God damn it. Because I'll, I'll run their ass up under the table with some fucking numbers. They ain't ready. <laughs> it's still like that. No education of what they're putting out. Real shit. Yeah, that time of phrase, a timing belt. Imagine that damn timing belt. Timing belt start off anywhere between 1,200 and 1,800. Timing belt. Because when you do timing belt, you do water pump, you do your cams, you do your tensioners, you do all that shit. That is not a $400 deal. That's 1,200 to 1,800, depending on what car you at. And I'm sitting there like, you want to talk about driver's expenses? These $2.62 rides ain't covering no shit like that. They're not. $3 rides ain't covering that shit. Trying to make people make $19 to $26 an hour ain't covering that shit. We have business expenses, but we have life expenses. We do this to live a life. We don't do this just to do this. We don't work just to work. That's broke mentality. I'm working for what? So I can work. I'm working for what? So I can have a job. No, I'm working for a living. I would like to make a living. I might want to eat some fucking ice cream later today. If I ain't got enough money for that, what am I working for? You're working to work. So if I keep ending up at fucking zero again, I'm working for nothing. And that's how these apps are doing. They're pushing us back to zero. We're working, working, working. End of the month, we're back at zero. We like, holy shit. I'm back at where I started. I just worked all month, gave away all... And I'm back at where I started, if not worse. If a damn repair happens, I'm worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Time to wake up. My mechanic only has one good eye, so he charges me half. <laughs> this motherfucker putting brakes on one side of your car and shit. Oh, your right side's good. <laughs> it's like, what about the left? I can't see the left. <laughs> this motherfucker stopping in a circle. <laughs> 
Man, the machine, thank you for the super chat, brother. I appreciate that. Man, thank you for the super chat, brother. Love it. I'm glad I can click like on them now at least, man. I want to move them over. But on, on StreamYard, I can move them over. This shit, I can't move them over, man. Say, Jeff, why do you have say why do you have the the on your new channel name? I just like it as Mike Drop Barbecue. That's just my preference. Well, because this is the Mike Drop Barbecue. This is where you're going. Shit, I'm going to the Mike Drop Barbecue, baby. Shit. It's like when you say I'm going to the store, you don't say I'm going to store. You don't go to store. You go to the store, T A G. I'm going to the store. I'm going to the mall. I'm going to the park. I'm going to the concert. I'm going to the Mike Drop Barbecue. That's what it is. This is the Mike Drop Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so, motherfuckers say, hey, what's that? What's the mic drop barbecue? Is what you said it is, motherfucker. It's a barbecue where we drop the mic on motherfuckers all the time is what we do. So it's kind of like, you know, if if I didn't want to <laughs> clear the cold. <laughs> I know. So, and, and a lot of times, like a lot of things that I do, I like to put the, because the is specific. The letter A is ambiguous. If I put a mic drop barbecue, that means there's more than one mic drop barbecue. I say, hey, this is a mic drop barbecue. What's a mic drop? It's more than one. If I put the mic drop barbecue, it's only one. You could put a Jeff or you could put the Jeff. Depends. I'm a, I'm a very specific person. I'm not that general. And I tell motherfuckers, even when I be making video shit, I say motherfuckers names. I do not like to be ambiguous. I'm an accountant. I'm very specific. I grew up specific. I always say I don't like ambiguous shit. I don't like general stuff. I like to talk about things so people don't leave with a question like, well, who in the fuck is he talking about? Motherfucker, he said his name. He said it was, talking about. oh, that's me. I'm that guy. I put the in front of shit because I'm very specific. That motherfucker, <laughs> I'm on it all the time, man. See, I'm showing the advertisements for Mike Drop Barbecue all over the place. Hey, thank you, Robert Reese, man. I appreciate that shit. Like I said, that's my man, Robert Reese, over there. And he's, like I said, he's got a good membership group and all that stuff going over here. So what I did, I support other channels, too. So when you guys support me, I turn around, I support Robert Reese. We're building a community of people who are willing to tell the truth, willing to stand up on YouTube, willing to keep shit, like, on the forefront. A lot of channels out there won't talk about the protests at all. They won't. Because they fear... They think there's something bigger and better out there than us little piddly fucking drivers. There's something bigger and better out there. You little rascally motherfuckers are nothing. It's something bigger and better. I don't want to talk about you guys. You guys are a bunch of little motherfuckers. I talk about us little motherfuckers because guess what? These apps are scared of us little motherfuckers. Why do you think every time we talk about cash rise, the, the first thing they do, every channel starts, well, you shouldn't be doing cash rise. And what the apps do, they say, no, you can't be doing cash because these motherfuckers are scared of us making money on our own. They're scared of us standing up. If they weren't scared, they wouldn't say shit. Nice boys win. Thank you for the super chat, brother. I like that. Wait a minute. Let me click. Boop. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> the month challenge. Oh, man. Don't get me started on that shit. And I tell everybody, man, about the whole Sergio thing. I mean, I get along with Sergio. I don't have a problem with him. But like I told somebody, we could all be on the same team. But if I think running the ball, if I, if I want to run motherfucking, you know, Marshawn Lynch, I would like to run Marshawn Lynch. We're on the three fucking yard line. I want to run Marshawn Lynch. And somebody says, I want to be Russell Wilson, and I just want to pass the fucking ball. And Butler intercepts that motherfucker. And I'm like, I told you we should have run Marshawn Lynch. That's kind of how the whole thing is with this whole shit that he was talking about. That, I just don't agree with that call. I think Marshawn Lynch is a better call. I think us being serious about the protest is a better call. That's all I'm saying. So... He's sitting there saying, the CEO, you should live like us for a month. You should do this. for That to me is, is Russell Wilson throwing and getting that motherfucker intercepted. That's that call. My call is I'm straight the fuck up. If y'all want to fuck with us, we're going to hit y'all bottom line. That's my call. We're going to make sure we still paying bills in our household. We're going to make sure riders still getting from point A to point B. We're going to make sure of that. That's what we're going to do. You need to lead a concert and get your ass home. I got you. 50 bucks. We just got that shit handled. You think Uber and Lyft is going to be mad? You goddamn right they're going to be mad because they don't like that call. They don't like Marshawn Lynch running the ball. They want Russell Wilson. They want him to throw so they can intercept that motherfucker and go the other way. They're not on our team. The, the apps are the Patriots. They're trying to run the other way. We are the Seahawks. We're trying to score. We're on a three-fucking-yard line. That's why I make the calls I make. I'll run Marshawn. I'm sorry. I'm going to run him every time. If you don't agree with me, you don't agree with me, Pete Carroll. Sorry. 
Russell Wilson, if you don't agree with me, you don't. But I think Marshawn's a better fucking deal for us. I think cash rides are a better deal for us. So even though me and Sergio may be on the same squad, he's Russell Wilson. I'm like, Marshawn, I'm like, hey, let's run this motherfucker. No, I want to throw. We both trying to get a touchdown. I just don't think one of the calls are going to work. Not right now. That call just won't work right now. So, I mean, if, if they want to play that game with, hey, we, we want to make their, even if their name did that shit, the motherfucker's a millionaire. He'll never feel the pain of what we feel. He'll never feel the pain of knowing that all of our shit end out on the street if we don't do well. If he don't do well, it's like, oh, fooey, I didn't do too well, drivers. Oh, fooey, I see what you guys mean now. I'm going to go back to my fucking mansion in my Maybach. Oh, my God, I'm going to eat a fucking steak. Fooey, I fucked up. No, we don't get that. We get our shit thrown out on the curb. There is no fooey. It's like, oh, fuck. Fooey's like for you. Fuck is for us. We get fucked. <laughs> So it's like, no, it's, it don't work out like that. The game don't work like that. This is real shit, real money, real lives on the line. Real people getting hurt, real people losing their cars, getting their shit total, not knowing what to do because they don't have a car to drive now. This is real. This ain't no, hey, man, you should just try to be like us for a couple of months. And then, no, fuck that. Don't be like me. Make me better. I don't want you to be like me. Make me better. Make my AR go up. Pay me more. Give me more money. Don't be like me. I don't want you to be like me. I want none of these motherfuckers to be like me. I want us to be better. That's what we aiming for. So this whole sympathy fucking shit, that's Russell Wilson throwing a fucking ball. I'm Marshawn. I'm running to this motherfucker and I'm taking money. And that's how we got to do it. And if they, they don't see us coming, you know what? We beast mode, motherfucker. We beast mode. We're going to be out here getting all this fucking money. We're going to be out here trying. Hey, you know what? They trying to give me $15 for this ride. It's, it's way up the fucking highway. They're only giving you 15. Holy shit. We paid $47 for this. I'm only getting $15 for this. Tell you what, I'll cancel it. And I'll charge you motherfuckers 35. How about that? 35? It's fair. See, because you ain't even got to get him a tip. Because you're going to have to pay 47. You're going to have to give me a $10 tip. You was going to be paying almost $60 for this ride. And now you're only paying 35 to me. We're going to have a good time, a good ride. I got Spotify. Well, let's talk about your flight. Let's have a good time. But these apps don't want to fucking pay us like that. So we got to march on this motherfucker. We got to run the ball. And if they don't like it, that's not my problem if you don't like how we do business. I don't like the fact that you're fucking us over and you don't seem to care about that. So why should I care about how you feel about us taking cash rides? You don't. Like Sergio and them don't agree with us taking cash rides. They don't agree with that. I don't get mad. I just go get more fucking money. You think I'm going to sit around? Why don't Sergio agree with me about cash rides? This is fucked up. He don't agree with me. I thought we were on the same side. I don't give a fuck if Sergio agrees or not. That's his opinion. But when this motherfucker see how much money I got in my hand after the day, he's going to be like, okay, you're doing well. You're goddamn right. So it ain't about me giving a fuck about what you say. I know you don't agree with me. It's cool. I may not agree with you. It's cool. But I'm going to get this fucking money. That's what I'm on. I'm not on trying to make you like me. I'm not on not trying to make these apps like me. Fuck them. I'm trying to keep this house paid over $200,000 on this motherfucker. And the apps is not even worried about that. I wonder what driver's expenses are. Motherfucker, I am in the hole right now. You ain't paying me like that. I'm in the hole right now. So I got to go out and get this money. And if I'm not out getting this money, I lose my shit. Well, you should have had a real job. No, nah, motherfucker. I should have went out and did what I said I was going to do. Walk out this house every day and get this money every day. That's what, not relying on you raggedy motherfuckers and me graveling. Can you please? Just, no, fucker, please. I'm out getting this money. If you don't like it, pay me more. You want me to do cash rides? Pay me more. That's how I operate. I ain't got to compete with you. We could both be driving partners again and not a fucking earner. Because if I'm an earner, I'm going to earn shit for me before I earn shit for you. This is my fucking car out there. That's not your car. That's my car. So when you ask me, hey, Jeff, go pick this person up. You selling me? You selling me like a slave, motherfucker? You pay, You charge these people $60 to ride in my car and gave me $22? You selling me like that? No. Because I'm going to talk to these motherfuckers. And I'm going to sell myself now. You cut out of the deal. I gave you a fucking chance by signing up on your fucking app. I gave you a chance. So don't have me go out and do this shit on my own. Now the people in Minneapolis, April the 1st, they got to go do this on their own. Man, man, do the right thing. You telling me the truth, my brother. Hey, man, that's how I am, man. This is real life out here. This is real life out here. And now they're going to pull out of Minneapolis on April the 1st telling them to fuck all them, fuck all the cars they bought. All, none of them got W-2s. They all been doing this shit. You know, they got daycares. They got to pay. They got a lot of stuff lined up. These apps are not caring about none of these drivers, even the ones with high AR. We don't give a shit about none of y'all. We pulling up. We out. Y'all can just fend for yourselves. Well, fend for yourself right now. Don't wait till these motherfuckers do that. 
fend for yourself now. You know what they're going to do because they told you we're going to pull Lux. They pulled Lux. They tell you we're going to leave Minneapolis. They're going to leave Minneapolis. Fuck them. Fend for yourself. They done told you already. Fend for yourself because we don't owe you shit. We can pull shop right now. So if you ain't smart enough to go out there and see yourself getting played, taking these $8 rides, $13, fuck that. Get up. Go. Go. Get your money. Oh, they only giving me 13. You deserve 30, and you know you deserve 30. Get the 30. Well, I don't want to be mean to the absent, on it, man. Fuck them. They being mean to you. They telling you they pulling up out of your city. They saying, fuck you. They're not even sitting down. They're not sending you a message saying, hey, man, before we pull up out of your city, you got everything together. You got money in the bank. You got Can you afford your car? You have a repo, bad credit, and a fucking eviction on your all on your shit within the first few fucking months. And you think they care? You think, you're, hey, man, I'm getting evicted, man. Can you guys come back? Sorry. Can't. You should have been doing cash, right? Should have figured some shit out for yourself. I'm figuring shit out for myself because I know these motherfuckers don't care about us. They tell y'all to y'all faces. They don't care about y'all. They, when they steal money and they tell you that they ain't stole it. And then you send them a screenshot showing that they stole it. And they go, oh, must have been a glitch. Ain't no fucking glitch. Stop playing stupid, y'all. Stop playing stupid. We already know the game already. We know the game. Man, Austin, what's good, brother? What's good, man? See, I'm doing $50 on hour on X in LA. Hey, Tesla ride, that's what you got to do. De decline all that shit. Decline it all. And if it, if it looks good, take it. If, if somebody's like, hey, man, I've been standing right here next to motherfucking Zip Sports Bar for the last 20 minutes getting declined. I'm just trying to go down the street. I'm like, how far down the street? Like McClintock, 20 bucks. 20 bucks is fine. Motherfucker, reach in their pocket. There you go. 20 bucks is fine to me. I'm just in that jack in the box any fucking ways. It's like, hey, man, I'm trying to go. To hey, here you go. This is on YouTube. Is it loving my delivery screen captures? <laughs> exactly. NGB, they, they all over that shit, man. They love it. That's what it is. And, and like I said, and it, it's telling people the truth. YouTube going to keep shooting that shit around because it's truth, man. Say like apps are looping out of asses. Fuck these apps. Exactly. Exactly. So he's nice, man. You killing the game. There's no surge in apps in the Bay Area, California. So I cancel a lot of Lyft rides when I receive better pay delivery from Grubhub. So Lyft now have to threaten me losing account. And, and streaming frames, this is what it is, man. They're going to sit up there and threaten us to force us to want to work for these fucking scraps. It's, it's reverse psychology. It's like, we're not going to pay you shit. And if you don't work for us, we're not going to pay you more shit. It's like, that don't make sense. You ain't, you're not making the job lucrative enough for us even to even give a shit about it at this point. People be like, hey, man, they're going to time you out for canceling. They're going to suspend you for canceling. I'm like, I don't give a shit. I know how to make cash rides. I've been doing this for a while now. I'm, I'm very well versed in that. Where do I can go to get cash rides? People have seen this orange ass BMW all over the fucking place. They see my shirts all the time because I'm always standing next to my car. I'm never just tucked in my shit, scared to get out like I'm some kind of motherfucking hermit crab, scared to get out of a shell. So oh, I step out of my shit. This is my car right here. You need a ride? What's good? Shirts blazing like a motherfucker. Bright ass yellow. Bright red, bright white. Motherfuckers, hey, man, I saw you out here last week. You're going to see me out here every week. Same shirt, same design, same shit. Cash rides, orange car, clean as a motherfucker. Every week, I'm here. You need a ride? You keep showing up to the same spots motherfuckers going to get used to seeing you. You can't just show up to strange ass spots all the time, especially me. Big ass black dude just showing up in the middle of nowhere. Else. No, no. Show up at the same spot. Start dapping people up. Hey, man, nice car. All good, dog. All oh, my cousin got an import. You chat with motherfuckers. You let people know, hey, man, here's one of my cards, man. People see you chatting with people. People get comfortable with you because they seen you before. Oh, you've been here before. You be by these clubs all the time. I see you a lot. I'm a driver. It's what I do, man. I'm out here getting these money, man. If the motherfuckers overcharging y'all, this is what I use this car for. All oh, like that, like that. You speak up. You let these motherfuckers know who you are. Being a little hermit tucked in your fucking car, you ain't going to get no money like that. That should look creepy as a motherfucker. You sitting in the dark. Hey, you need a ride over there? Get up out the fucking car. Speak to these people. Walk around. Shake a motherfucking hand. Be like, hey, what's good, man? Hey, I like them shoes. Hey, hey, you, you rocking them boots, girl. You rocking them boots, girl. I'll go, hey, here's my card if you ever need a ride or something like that. Fuck with people. Get out there. Network. This is what this is about. We ain't no creeps. We ain't sitting in the fucking car trying to creep on and come up on motherfucker like bone thugs. Creep on and come up. We out in this motherfucker really trying to talk to people. And it's like, if you if you tucked in a dark-ass alleyway, trying to people think you up to some sneaky shit. Like when, when my man Logan, when Logan Block came out here, what Logan do? Me and Logan walked down Mill Avenue. We both had the same shirts on. We had the cash ride shirt on. We walked straight down Mill Avenue. 
right past all the nightclubs, all the bars and everything, side by side, just chatting with motherfuckers, pointing that shit, talking about shit. People see us walking. They, they see the gear. They see what we about. And that's what I do. We go out there. We talk to people. We see people. We say, hey, man, I see motherfucker with a suitcase. I see somebody on their phone. Hey, if you're looking for a ride, dog, got a nice, clean ass beamer ready to rock and roll. Oh, man, I'm waiting on some people in the bar. I'm texting them right now. Okay, I'm just letting you know, man. Oh, no problem. But now that motherfucker knows you because you approach them. We're not on the app. We in your face. We right here. And I'm one of them cats. That I, I talk to anybody. Motherfuckers just tell me a long time ago, Jeff, I hate going to Walmart with you because every time you go to Walmart, you leave with like two best friends. <laughs> I'll be talking to motherfuckers in Walmart. I see you wasn't your motherfucking shopping cart. I'm like, dude, what, what aisle did you get that from? Because I need some shit like that. Oh, I got that from this aisle. Hey, man, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, appreciate that, bro. And you chat with motherfuckers and everything. See a motherfucking dog in the store, rub a dog and shit. Hey, what kind of dog is this? Playing with the dogs in the store? Motherfuckers say, you go to Walmart, you leave with like all kind of best friends and shit. Because I like people. I don't mind people. A lot of people irritate the shit out of me, but for the most part, I don't mind people. But if we going to go out and we going to make money, we need to let these motherfuckers know who we are. We here. like, And I love the fact that a lot of people, a lot of us right now, rocking the 300 fucking gear. So when people start being familiar with seeing that shit, they're going to say, what is the 300? What is that all about? That's when they're going to fucking start saying, we the 300. This is what we do. Oh, I've seen like two or three drivers with that on before. That's what we do. Big Kev, he ride around with his on all night. I ride around mine all night. Shit, Triple AZ, he got his. My girl, what? Cray Cray, she running hers down in Florida. A lot of us, we rocking this shit. I mean, Miss T, she got hers over in DC. Motherfuckers gonna start seeing that shit online. Because I, like I said, I'm on YouTube, Instagram, motherfucking TikTok. They gonna start seeing this shit everywhere. And when they see it, I want them to be familiar with who this is, who we are. And be like, hey, man, I saw a dude with that same fucking shirt on one day. Yeah, where where was he at? Oh, man, motherfuckers at the bus depot picking up some people. I was like, man, I've seen that shit before somewhere. A lot of people don't see it. You got to make that shit familiar. Get out there in public. Like I said, when I rock this shit and I'm, I'm marketing the shit out of it, I'm putting this shit all over the internet, I'm doing this for all of us, not just me. Because I could walk around with just a shirt on that says Jeff on the motherfucker and that's it. No, I want to rock something that when people see it, they're going to feel familiar with it. When they see the word Uber, they feel familiar with Uber. They see Lyft, they feel familiar with Lyft. I want these motherfuckers to see the 300 and be like, you know what? I kind of know what that's about. I heard about that shit. Talk about it in the car. Let motherfuckers know. Yeah, say Uber is the new cash ride finding service. <laughs> exactly. Man, I'm sure, hey, man. I got I to get them 300 shirts. I think I got uh, We the 300 Ride Share shirts on the site, but I need to get the 300 barbecue shirts. I got to get those shirts on the site. Because those shirts there, like I said, a lot of people in the membership group got them. But I need to get something for like the, the regular group too. So when we're out there doing our fucking thing, we letting people know, I'm the, we the 300, we the small group. We're here to save you money. We ain't here just to take money from you. We're here to save you some money. You walked out of this concert, you probably paid 120 to get there. All they're going to give me is 42. They're going to give me $42 to take your ass 46 miles down the highway. But they charge you like 120, 130 to go all the way to fucking Santan. Tell you what. Give me a hundred bucks. I'll take you right now. hundred bucks. Okay, shit. A hundred bucks. hundred bucks. Motherfucker right here. They're going to remember what that 300 is all about. They're going to be like, oh man, every time I see someone with that shirt on, I don't want to, I'm, I'm on a good driver. Why? Because I, I used one of these motherfuckers before and they'll fucking do a cash ride, which you save you a ton of fucking money. Group of four, group of five. Shit. They dropped the link. We'll, we'll say it. Say hi real quick. Uh, I'm on, I'm on, uh, what's the name today? I'm on YouTube today. So YouTube don't let me do the link. I got to be on StreamYard to do the link. Some's been acting funny. Like even right now, my YouTube is kind of glitchy and shit right now. So I'm like, man, it's like, I don't like, and, uh, StreamYard was doing it earlier. And now I see YouTube's doing it now. It's like, it's some with the internet, man. So if you take cash rides, be strapped advice from a tribe called Jeff. Shit. Hell yeah. Tell motherfuckers, Hey, this is America. And if you out there mainly doing cash rides anyway, I mean, you have the Second Amendment to support you. What the fuck are you worried about Uber and Lyft for? If you're doing if you leave your house right now and you say, I'm going to go do cash rides for a couple hours and you leave and you go start doing cash rides for a couple hours. And all of a sudden somebody's got the Uber app and some shit pop on. You can't just say, well, first, let me go home and drop off my my weapon and then I'll come back and pick it. No, motherfucker, this is America. You're you're protected by the Second Amendment. Fuck that. If somebody wants to test you and try you, good luck. Good. I hope these motherfuckers got life insurance. That's all I can say, I hope they got life insurance. But you can't say, because I have Uber and Lyft on my phone, 
I have to always leave my weapon at home. You don't know when you might turn that fucking that app on. You might be out all day at a barbecue, kicking in the shit, this and that. You got Second Amendment protection. You just having your fucking good time, this and that. You see a surgeon. Oh, shit, it's surgeon. Oh, shit. I can't drive. Why? Second Amendment. What the fuck that mean? I got something in my car, man. Second Amendment, man. I can't drive. Fuck. They got, they got a policy saying that if I got something in my car, I can't drive, man. Second Amendment. Well, just give it to him. Well, well he's a felon. I can't just hand it to him. He's a fucking felon. I'm going to have him go to prison. Well, hand it to her. She went to jail with him. They both felons together, motherfucker. They did the same crime. Well, shit, what you going to do? I guess I just, I, I can't drive, man. Second Amendment. I can't fucking drive. Shit. Well, go home and then drop it off and then come back and get the surge. Like, man, Uber and Lyft is on some other shit. Ain't nobody trying to do all that. Turn that motherfucking app on. Customers and riders, mind your fucking business. Enjoy your life. Cruise, get the ride. Cash ride if you want to do this and that. But you fuck up, find out. I'm telling you, fuck around, find out. I'm one of them people. And so enjoy the ride. Have fun. You know, talk. Get on Spotify. Request music. Get a business card. Do this and that. Live a good life. And nobody's got to ever worry about the Second Amendment. I don't want to worry about it. I don't want you to worry about it. Nobody have to worry about it. Everybody just enjoy your fucking life. But one thing I'm not going to do is let these ragged ass motherfucking apps tell me as an independent contractor in my life, living a private fucking life out here in the world, that the Constitution of the United States doesn't apply to me because I have their app on my phone. Fuck them. And I'll say that shit right to their fucking face. Fuck them. Because each one of those raggedy motherfuckers is walking around with armed security. Guaranteed. But yet you're going to tell me that I can't have it because I'm not important like you. Fuck you. Test me if you want to. Because I'm not one of them people. I have I live on, on American soil. And I'm telling you, everybody I cross don't have the Uber and Lyft app on their phone. So I'm not going to be like, hey, man, you can't fuck with me. I got the Uber and Lyft app on my phone. I'm not protected. I got the Uber and Lyft. So, so you probably don't. No, nah, motherfucker. These are real criminals and shit out there in the streets. And I'm glad the United States got the Constitution written the way they got the Constitution. Because there's real fucking criminals out in these streets. I can't tell these fucking criminals, hey, man, I got the Uber and Lyft app on my phone. Please. I, I can't, man. I, can't, I got the Uber and Lyft app on my phone. I, Fuck that. Try me if you want to. That's all I got to say. My best, your best bet is to go about your fucking business. Enjoy your day. Take care of your kids. Take care of your family. Do whatever it is. But don't fuck with no driver because that driver might not give a fuck about Uber and Lyft's policies. For real, they might not. Because life is more important than these goddamn ragged ass fucking apps. And I'm not going to let these motherfuckers tell me, hey, Jeff, uh, the Constitution doesn't apply to you. I know you're an independent contractor. You're doing your own thing, but it doesn't apply to you. I'll tell you. Fuck you, motherfucker. I'm a cash ride this motherfucking ride on my own private shit anyway. So I ain't worried about your rabbit ass anyways. Guess what? We're going to have to turn. I'll tell a fucking customer real quick. You know what? I'm going to have to cancel this ride and do this as cash because of the Second Amendment. <laughs> it's like, what? What does that mean? Trust me. Uber, I want to protect you and protect everybody else. I can't do this ride unless we cancel this motherfucker. Hundred bucks. Bet. Let's go. <laughs> I bet they all be like. I like this little Second Amendment shit. <laughs> it's like, we can keep canceling all rides all day. Yeah, let's do it. Man, man. I know it, man. Hey, like I said, hey, we the 300 up in this motherfucker, man. And these apps need to realize we're humans. We ain't they fucking tools to be played with. We not some toys and shit, right? They look like we remote control cars sitting on a computer. They just fucking with us all day, trying to make us do shit. Sorry, I'm an independent contractor. Independent, which means I'm not your employee. You don't own me. You don't own shit over me. We do business together. It's, it's a two-way street. I might not want to do business with you today, motherfucker. I might not. I may not want to do shit with your app today. I have a choice to do that. I might see some people and say, you know what? I want to get these people a ride for a real good fucking price. I'm an independent contractor. I'm not your fucking employee. You want to be mad at me about it? Be mad all you fucking want. Like I said, they're going to leave Minnesota any fucking ways. You want to be mad? Be mad. But we're going to get money. We're going to be paid. That's all I know. We about to go and get paid. And all these people out there, well, you can't, you can't. Tell you what, save your breath. Get off my fucking channel. Get away from the energy and space of motherfuckers trying to get money and stick to the pigeon fucking coop. That's where you belong. Hang in that motherfucker for those. That's your home. Those are your people. Because ain't nobody going to ever change my mind, ever change my mentality about how I'm going to pay for the shit I got, got around this house. Especially a bunch of motherfuckers that ain't paying a dime on this shit, trying to tell me how to do my shit. No, you can't do that, man. You can't tell me shit. That's what you can't do. Don't try to tell me what to do. You can't tell me shit. Because unless you put money in this bank account, I ain't hearing it. I'm not hearing it. Well, Lyft and Uber said, does it look like I give a fuck about what Lyft and Uber says? 
Because do you think they give a fuck about what I say when I say, hey, can you guys not steal my tips? They laughing at me. <laughs> he said, don't steal his tips. He said, don't reduce his fare when we give him surge. They said, don't steal his fucking surge. They said, don't, don't, you know, cancel his fuck. They taking my cancellation fees. They taking all my shit. And I'm telling them not to do it. And they're laughing at me. So don't you know I could return that fucking energy back to them? They could tell me, Jeff, don't do this. And I'm like, okay, ha <laughs> ha. All right, bet. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, I I'm an independent contractor. I could return that fucking energy. I live on planet Earth still. Just like all you motherfucking employees sitting at the computers at Uber and Lyft. All you motherfuckers live on planet Earth. I live here too, bitch. So guess what? I'm going to make money the way I make it. You're going to make money the way you make it. If you want to go in the same direction, let's go in the same direction. But if you're going to try to cross me, motherfucker, I'm sitting right next to the person that need to ride. Don't fuck with me. I'm sitting right next to these motherfuckers. I can talk. I'll get these motherfuckers to pay me straight up. So either you're going to fucking work with me and we're going to do this shit together, or you're going to be cut off a whole lot of motherfucking deals. And if you say, well, we're just going to leave the city, leave, bounce. That's just more open play field for us. Shit, please leave. Because when people say, well, how can we find a ride? Hey, we got a whole lot of motherfuckers walking around with ride share shirts on. These motherfuckers be at bus stops. They be at motherfucking Walmarts. They ass be at movie theaters, at malls. They at the goddamn, you know, the, the rental car shuttle pickup place. These motherfuckers at nightclubs and restaurants. They everywhere. They, they getting money. If you need a ride, these motherfuckers is getting money. And that's when you're going to see us out the house. When you start seeing a whole bunch of drivers making a whole bunch of good money, like, man, we make more money doing it this way than that way. Now we working now. Now we working. And let those motherfuckers say something now. Medical centers, we might tell you like this, real shit. Nick knows. Nick knows and my man Robbie knows because Robbie is the one who actually used me today. But I did a medical ride today. I did a medical ride today. I left my house at like 11.15. Left my house at 11.15. Went, picked the guy up, drove all the way to the eye center. I drove up to Surprise. To the eye. It was like a 30, 40 minute drive to him. Then about a 20, 30 minute drive to the eye center. Waited, went and had some tacos while he was at the eye center getting his eye surgery. Got his eye surgery and everything. Picked him back up. Drove back, all the way back to his house. Dropped him off. $250. And I probably drove maybe 30, like 50. Yeah, about 50 miles total. I drove about 50 miles total. That was it. About 50 miles total. Motherfucker broke me off $250. That's how you do private rides. Because he said, I'm going to buy half your day. I'll just buy. Because it was going to take a long time for him to go through the surgery. So I'm like, well, I'm going to go eat. I'm going to go sit. I had to park a lot. I'll try to get online. I was doing shit. That's what I did today. Nick knows. Like I said, my man, Robbie, he the one who actually did the ride. He hit, he the one who hit me up in the message and said, hey, man, I'm going to need a ride on March the 6th. I said, OK, what you need? I got to go get I got to get eye surgery. And he got me off the he got me off this channel. He got me off this channel. He said, I'm gonna need eye surgery. I said, okay. I said, Well, I kind of live far from you, man. He says, Yeah, I'll pay for your day. Don't worry about it. I got you. But the eye surgery place won't let you leave unless they can call your ride. The eye surgery place, they, they need a phone number that they can call because they called me and said, He's finished with his uh, laser surgery. He's finished with his surgery. You can now pick him up. You have to come into the front by the green canopy. Tell me your car making model, this and that. And doctors walk him out because his eyes are like just got all fucked up and everything. So it was like, that's how we do private rides in here. That was one ride I did today. That's it. One ride, 250 bucks. That's it. And I had fucking tacos at Torchy Tide. And, every, and he told me, he says, we was cruising by. He says, hey, because we was riding because that's that's his doctor. We he says, hey, you might want to try Torchy Tacos right there. It's a really nice place. I was like, cool, I'll try that while you get in the surgery. I'll go back. So I did. I dropped him off for the surgery. I went back to Torchy Tacos and got a taco. He said, fuck it, might as well. But that's how we do private rides. And there's a lot of people out there that need that type of service. They don't want to be fucking, you know, just dropped off and have to go through the app and find random strange motherfucker. No, some people, they really want somebody who's willing to chat with them, ride with them, have fun. I mean, we cruising like a motherfucker. We having a good time, man. And it's like this. That's the type of drivers we are. These apps for for something like that, they would have probably gave me probably to go from here to Sun City. They would have probably paid me like thirty five dollars. Then to take him from there to there, they probably pay me about probably twenty. Cause it was a longer ride, so I would probably got fifty five dollars all day with the apps. I would have got fifty five bucks. That's it. Ebony said, "Hey, is it what that that shirt?" DoorDash. This is my shirt right here. DoorDash. Rick. Straight out excuses, man. Is it? <laughs> man. Yeah, exactly. Say, so Jeff. More and more drivers need to operate more like wolves, not sheep. If you're not gonna pay me, just just gonna take my money. Exactly. E love. That's it, man. That's it. Yeah, it takes pigeons 12 hours straight on these apps to scratch 200 if they lucky. I'm telling you, Rob Flow, 
But the way you got to do it, medical centers, man, a lot of medical centers, people that got, you know, dialysis, stuff like that. We need to start being at these places because they selling us. These apps are selling us to do medical rides anyways. They got us going to hospitals, picking up people. They charge these medical places, you know, one hundred eleven dollars, eighty nine dollars. And we getting twenty two out of the shit. They charging these medical places because these are insurance rides. They're charging these people up the ass for these rides. So we could just go get the rides ourselves. It's like, sh let's go. Like, hey, you want to give me 50 bucks? I'll do it for 50 bucks. Like, all right, bet. 50 bucks sounds like a fair deal to me. But if you're going to do something all day and hang with people, I mean, you might want to kind of move the money up a little bit because you're going to kind of block out your whole day. You're going to be giving them a ride. You're going to be stopping. You're going to be helping them out, moving around, doing this and that. So you might want to mark it up a little bit. Yeah, insurance, double dipping and subcontracting. Yep, yep. And rides with multiple stops are easy pickups for cash rides. Yep, that's right. Nice boys win. And that's what it is. Grocery store people. Oh, man. Because this is what happens. Lyft is now fucking everybody up with grocery rides now. Grocery store rides used to be like $8 to get to the store. Those rides are now $18 to get to the store. Everybody tells me that. Man, why is Lyft so expensive? I'm like, what do you mean? I used to pay $8 to go to the store. I'm paying $18 now. So what you can tell somebody is like, you know what? I'd like this. You just go into the store, right? Yeah, just go into the store and back. That's all I'm doing. 30 bucks. 30 bucks, that's it. Just go to the store, do what you got to do. I'll go across the street, you know, fill up gas, give me something to drink, whatever, sit online. Then I'll just ride you back to the house. You might only drive like maybe seven miles total, six, seven miles, $30. That's it. And all you do is just take somebody to the grocery store. You do that shit 10 times a day. You don't went 60 to 70 miles and you've made $300 out of 60 and 70 miles. There is no 60 or 70 mile ride paying you $300 out there. There is none. So you've got to create that ride yourself. You've got to use your brains, your marketing techniques. You got to go to this place, go to the rental car place. They're like, hey, man, anybody here to rent a car I need to go to the airport? Me? All right, bet. $20 I get to the airport. $25 get to the airport. Because, you know, Uber and Lyft is going to pay you like six or seven. That's it. Because it's too close. They might even pay you three. 350. Oh, 350 to go down to there. So fuck that. Just tell us about 20 bucks. And you got to create the money for yourself because the apps are not going to pay you. The apps ain't paying nobody like they used to. They're, I read news articles all the time about Uber and Lyft. All Uber and Lyft keeps saying is, hey, we got a whole bunch of sucker ass drivers right now cashing us up. We ain't got to pay them shit. We're just making money, you know, hand over fist. So if you guys want to invest with Uber, you guys want to get some money with Uber, come fuck with us. Because right now we got a whole bunch of idiotic ass drivers taking bullshit rides all day and they cool with it. I ain't cool with it. So when they all look at my app, shit, I'll tell you like what I do on Uber. I'll open this motherfucker right now. You can be like, damn, dude, what do you do? Trust me. Uber, Uber got, they, I'm handing them these motherfuckers, they ass. Okay, this week so far, I've made this. Absolutely nothing with those motherfuckers, but I've made a lot of money this week. <laughs> Last week, I made, let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, it's, it's still circulating. Okay, 191. So I made 191 last week on like four, four and a half hours online. 191. Now, I already made $250 on one ride this week, just doing my own fucking thing. And it didn't, and it was like maybe two hours total driving. Not not even two hours because it took me like what 30 some minutes to get up there and maybe about close to 40 to get back. So about an hour and a half. What up, Ebony Grant? Thank you for the super chat, lady. Facts, you make way more doing cash rides anyway. Yeah, real. I'm telling you. And you can sit there and you can sit on these apps all day and let these people fuck with you and play with you and have you declining and canceling and doing all this crazy shit. Or you can say, I'm gonna help people get the places. I know the apps are playing games with these fucking people because the apps are like, hey, $28 is the ride for, you know, regular, $28 for regular, excuse me, $35 for comfort, but we're getting $11 out of that shit. No matter which one they use, we're only going to get $11, whether it's $25 or, or $28 or $35. So Cruise, I'm just telling a person, I'll do these rides all day, but it's like $25 though. Oh, $25, yeah. So that means you could pay $25 and you ain't got to tip me because if you pay $28, you got to tip me like $5, 10 bucks. So you're going to pay anywhere from $33 to $38. Or if you do the $35 ride, you're going to pay like $40 to $50. Or you can just say, guess what? I'm going to just pay you $25 straight up. That's it. Everybody's happy now. And the apps are going to start learning that we don't play that shit no more. All these threats. I mean, we don't have to threaten y'all. We sitting right next to the fucking people. We ain't got to threaten nobody. 
My car got gas and I could drive my ass to Tempe and make money all day without even turning these fucking apps on. I ain't got to work. I can market myself. Like if you go look at one of my latest IG posts, I marketed myself on IG. I had my Arizona fucking four hire permit shirt on. I'll put it on there. And it was just me wearing an Arizona four hire permit shirt. That's it. And I said, hey, man, if you guys need a private ride, you need something to dinner, to lunch, to blah, 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 to work or this and that. Hit me up. DM me this and that. I market myself. I don't need these ragged ass fucking apps. Anybody in Phoenix sees that and goes, hey, man, uh, my boy, he does four hire rides. You say you need a ride. Hey, this is his Instagram right here. DM him real quick. Tell him what days you need a ride and see what he say. Motherfucker say, hey, man, I. I, I'm going to be flying in from Tucson. I'm going to be flying in and I got to get a ride from Phoenix down to Tucson. Is there any way possible you could take me to Tucson, man? Because I know a lot of people don't do those rides to Tucson and, and Uber is trying to charge me, you know, this much and Lyft's trying to charge me this much. And I might say, this is how much I'll charge you, dog. And it'll be a sure ride. You ain't got to wait around for hours. No shit like that. This is a ride I can get you to Tucson. Bet. You got to market yourself because these apps ain't selling none of us for ourselves. They're selling us for them. So you got to go out and sell yourself. You got to figure a way out how to get that money out there because there is money to be made. What Rob will say, when someone needs to get home, they will pay good and usually they don't mind. Problem is we have too many weak-ass drivers out there who are scared to ask. Uh, Rob Flo, and this is the thing. These motherfuckers are taking 8 $9 rides from like club areas. Uh, Y'all see on my drive, on my ride throughs, it be rides going from Tempe Club area up to Scottsdale Club area and the apps be offering me $9. I'm like, I'm not going to Scottsdale for no fucking $9. These people paying like $27, $35 for them rides. You're trying to give me $9. If, if I wanted to, I could just cruise up and pick their ass up. But half the time, it's like a group of four. When you're leaving Tempe and you're going to Scottsdale, usually it's like four guys, four girls. I got a small car. If I can give me an SUV, oh, trust me. Every ride y'all motherfuckers don't see me decline, shit. I'm like, where are you going? From Tempe to Scottsdale? Let me go cruise up. <laughs> or cruise up to those motherfuckers. Hey, y'all need to get to Scottsdale? Yeah, but well, these motherfuckers are only trying to pay me eight, nine dollars. Well, damn, they charge us thirty-three dollars for that ride. Of course they did, because they know Scottsdale's a hopping, it's a popping ass spot. So, but th th this time every night, if you leave in Tempe, you going to Scottsdale, you paying thirty-five dollars to go up there, because it's a popping ass spot, and they know you want to get up there. So they gonna say, hey, we gonna pay. And drivers in Tempe is like, well, I'm not making a lot of money in Tempe. So the apps go, hey, for nine dollars, we'll send you to a popping ass spot. And these drivers go, well. At least I'll make money up there. I'll take the $9. I ain't taking shit. I can stay right where I'm at for $9. I can get $16 rides all day in Tempe just doing short hops all fucking day. So, no, I'm not taking $9 to no hopping ass spot. If I'm going to go up there, pay me $20, 25 I'll go up there. But yet, these drivers don't think like that. The apps know the psychology of these drivers. They, don't, they keep them starved in Tempe. They don't give them no ride in Tempe. So, they say, hey, for $9, we'll get you to a spot that's popping. Okay, I'll take the 9 because I'm not making shit over here. Well, you ain't making shit over here because you ain't talking right now. All these rides you kicking out is a bunch of college kids that need to get a point A to point B. They do this shit for $10, $15 all day. You ain't got to fucking worry about these ragged ass apps. That's why I say, you know what? I'm going to stop recording for a while because I'd rather go out and let people know how we really going to do this shit. My app is on zero. Uber says Jeff's not driving for us this week. I'm driving just not for you motherfuckers. I drive every morning. I get up every morning, do the same rides. If I see people... You know, need to go to the grocery store, this and that. Like I said, today, I did a big ride. Tomorrow, I know I got another couple of rides. I got a big ride coming up soon, going down to Tucson. Then I got a ride coming from Tucson, coming back. I mean, I got shit set up. Because people know, this little beamer, that motherfucker moved through traffic. If you want to use it, hit me up. Hit me up. Don't be scared. These apps are not the only things we do. We're all independent contractors. Every one of us on this motherfucker. It's just like my girl, Dim Dallas, said. We're not employees. She read the whole terms of service and I posted that shit. We ain't employees. We're independent contractors. Everybody in this chat, whether you're a pigeon or not, you are an independent contractor. It depends on if you want to fucking grow up and be an eagle one fucking day and really go get this fucking money. That's where the difference is. You can stay a pigeon. You can say, hey, man, that like Urban says, hey, we the 300. What up, AJ? This is we the 300. We the 300. Let's go out there and try to get this money. Y'all done did this for how many years have you done this? You know all the spots. You know where the people are. You know where the colleges are. You know where people are, are on their phones when they can't get rides. You know where all of the rental car places are when people sitting outside with all their fucking luggage getting declined all fucking day. You know where these places are. Roll up. Don't be scared. Roll up. And tell a motherfucker, hey, I had a ride up in this area, but somebody canceled. So I always come by the rental car place, see if anybody needs a ride to the airport or something like that. You guys need a ride? Actually, we do. 
shit. Okay, cool. Yeah, we, we only got these two suitcases. My daughter's in there taking, she's using the bathroom. When she comes out, it's just three of us. That's it. All right, bet. Let's go. Let's roll. Motherfucker, get in the airport. $35, $40 right there. And your ass was going to drive past that motherfucker because the apps didn't send you nothing. Don't drive past that shit. Go get it. Jojo. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse, my brother. This is my son, Jojo, said to send you this. Thank you, Jojo. See, Jojo's my dog. See, now me and Jojo, we're gonna we're gonna take a Jeep ride. I used to take my Jeep, I used to take my son all the time to Cold Stone. So tell Jojo we're gonna go to Cold Stone, man. When it heats up a little bit outside and, and Cold Stone is open, we're gonna take a Jeep ride, go get us some ice cream. <laughs> tell him be ready, be ready. <laughs> My son used to love that. I used to pick him up right after school. Be like, man, it's burning hot. It's like 110 degrees outside. I'm like, you want to go to Cold Stone? It's cold in there. So we'll go to Cold Stone and get some ice cream. Fuck that. Like, shit. So tell him. Tell JoJo, hey, we're going to take the Jeep. Go get us some ice cream. It's too hot. <laughs> tell him I appreciate that. This is one thing I've noticed with my friends and families that they are willing to pay a premium for the familiarity and a nicer vehicle that they know I have. $3 mile, no problem, some of them. And I'm going to tell you, time to wake up. That's really, and people don't realize that these people are so sick of paying these apps, these surge ass prices. $3 a mile is easy for them. These people used to paying six, $7 a mile for some of these fucking rides, man. $3 a mile is nothing to them. They're like, oh shit, you going to charge me how much? 30 bucks? That's it? Yeah, man, the Apple's trying to tell me fucking 61. Like what? Yeah, $61 for this fucking ride, man. It's like, all right, bet, shit. And I was going to probably give you like 23 out of it. <laughs> so it was like 30, 35. They'd be happy, man. But a lot of people were scared to speak up because the apps got their brain so wrapped up in the terms of service that they can't even snap out of that shit and, and believe you're an independent contractor. When you walk out the house in the morning, that's a private car sitting in your fucking driveway. That's your car. The apps don't own that car. You own that car. If your neighbor walk up and say, hey, are you are you busy right now? No. Nah. Can you do me a favor and go drop me off at the service center? I have my car there. Tell you what, I'll give you 50 bucks. Just take them to the service. I can't do that, man. You got to go through the apps, man. You got to call Uber or Lyft, man. I can't do that, man. That's how those motherfucking pigeons think. I don't got insurance for that. I can't do that, man. I'm like, shit, give me that fucking 50. Let's ride. You want to go get some Starbucks on the way? If you need to stop, let me know. That's how I get down. I ain't going to, well, let me go through the app first and make sure. I'm like, fuck that. Let's ride, man. We've been doing this shit for generations. And these apps come skipping along saying, oh, we own all you motherfuckers' brains. We own your cars. We own everything about you. If you want to go do anything, it has to go through our technology. I'm like, man, fuck your technology. It's a ripoff. You are a, you are a, a transportation service. That's all you are. They say they're a tech company, not a transportation company. That's clearly what they said. They're a tech company, not a transportation company. We're transportation. We're We're logistics. These fucking people will tell you right to your face. We are not a transportation. We're technology. You're using our technology to run your transportation business, Jeff. And I'm like, why am I using your expensive ass technology when I can use my free fucking mouth? I just paid two G's for this fucking tooth in my fucking mouth. So guess what? I'm going to use this $2,000 fucking tooth to fucking go give me a ride. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I got a fucking crown in the back of my mouth. I'm going to use that crown to speak up on some rides. Why the fuck am I using your expensive ass fucking tech? No. And that's how they act. Well, if you don't use our technology, then guess what? We can get livery insurance. We can get fucking commercial insurance. We can do it. You just got to talk. Go talk to your insurance agent. Hey, man, I'm wondering how much would it cost to have livery insurance? Tell me what like the, the limits are and all that stuff. This is my car. They'll give you a quote right there on the fucking spot. Give you a quote right on the spot. You tooth clan, we up. <laughs> exactly. These mother don't know about you tooth motherfucker shit. <laughs> like we speak on it. Motherfucker like you tooth, we speak on it. <laughs> Cause we ain't playing with these people, man. This is 2024. All these protests, everything we doing, getting the media attention and it's getting the writers attention. Writers need to realize what we doing. Why y'all doing this, man? Why y'all keep protesting? It's like, have you done cash rides lately? Yeah, then it's working. If you've done some cash rides lately, then the protest is fucking working. I'm not trying to challenge Dara to drive around and act like us for a fucking month. Fuck him. Let him do what he does. Hopefully his little stock shit work out. But I'll tell you what, it will work out. The fact that we're going to get this fucking money. We're going to work out. And if his stock crashes in the meantime, that's not my fucking problem. 
That's because he didn't figure shit out and how to how to roll with us the right way. But we're going to go out and get that money. We're going to make sure we got enough to put a new alternator in this fucking car. Make sure I got enough to put an alternator on. Also get groceries. Also not miss the mortgage on this motherfucker. I'm going to make enough to do that. I'm not going to be growling at these motherfucking feet. Can you please give me a higher surge? Can you please give me, you know, some more boost? Can you give me, you know, a quest? Man, fuck them. I'm going to go get this money. I ain't got to ask them for shit. When they find out I'm not driving for them, well, how come you ain't driving for it, Jeff? What's going on? Oh, I'm making money right now. I'll come fuck with y'all when I got shit else to do. Y'all are a filler app. I know what you motherfuckers is on. Y'all selling insurance. That's what you're doing. You're a tech company. You're selling insurance. You're a tech company selling insurance at increased fucking rates. You're overcharging all of these people, all these service fees and shit, and you ain't paying me nothing. So I don't really need you because I everything you motherfuckers is doing, I can go get done. I can go get my own permit. I'm going to get my own livery insurance way cheaper. Drive my car and I have to worry about you motherfuckers marking myself all day on Facebook. I ain't doing shit else. I can sit on Instagram and say, hey, man, currently I'm located in Tempe right now. Anybody know anybody that need in Tempe? I could just do a fucking live stream. Sit there and talk. Say, hey, man, I'm going to I'm gonna go sit on in Tempe and, and get rides. Anybody need a ride? People say, hey, man, I'm going to share your live, man. I know some people in Tempe right now. Like, cool, hit me up. They call Progressive Insurance. They offer ride share insurance all day. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, man, a machine. Progressive is different. Progressive fucked Dewado over. Dewado, he's the guy on our channel too, and they fucked him over. Excuse me, pretty bad. I did a whole video on uh, Dewado and Progressive. They fucked him over real bad. And like Tristan said, Progressive increased my insurance by 50%. I dropped him. See, there you go. There you go. Progressive fucked over Dewado and then tried to fuck over Tristan. I'm telling you, Progressive is not, not the play. They're not the play when it comes to ride share because they know that we make money and they're going to go and try to get all the money out of us that they can get. Progressive's not stupid. They're like, oh, these drivers need insurance. And I'm going to tell you about ride share insurance. The only time ride share insurance, I said this shit on the video, but a lot of people who didn't watch the video probably, I'm going to tell you straight up. The only time that ride share insurance covers you is when you drop off somebody, you're still online. Yeah, Duato, like I said, there you go. I, I did a whole video on you, man. They fuck you over pretty bad. And I tell everybody about that shit because it's real. I don't, I don't sugarcoat shit and I don't bullshit it for nobody. They fuck you over and I tell people exactly how it went. If they don't want to hear it, that's their fucking problem. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm telling you, man, Uber and, and Progressive fucked over Duato. Did a video on it. Let this motherfucker hang. So everybody who want to, I, I, I stay on the app. I do mine on the app. I'm on it. They fuck my man over. So you think it just because you're on an app, you, oh, I'm secure because I do it on the app. Only, okay. All right. Like you don't see the real. I put the real out there for people to see. A lot of shit that I talk about, other channels won't talk about. It's cool. They ain't got to talk about it. That's why I'm here. I am that one. They ain't got to talk about it. Motherfuckers won't see the real. Come over here. Listen to it. You want to see some shield shit? Knock yourself the fuck out. We got a lot of channels ready for that. But I'm going to come out here and tell motherfuckers right off the bat. With, with ride share insurance, if you drive and you drop somebody off and you leave the app turned on, you need ride share insurance until you get your next, until you accept your next request. So from the time that motherfucker get out your car and you hit end ride and your app is still running until you accept your next request, that entire time frame is ride share insurance. So how do you get around that time frame? Just put that motherfucker on last ride. So when they get out your car and you end the ride, you go to your private insurance now. You're not on ride share insurance. You're on private insurance. So drive on your private insurance with the apps turned off. You ain't got nobody in your car. It's just you. Motherfucker Spotify, you got private insurance, no apps turned on, drive your ass to a parking lot, park that shit in the parking lot, turn your apps on. You ain't going nowhere. You just sit in the parking lot now with the app turned on. You just sitting there. If you was in traffic and you had an accident, they would try to say, well, you didn't have ride share insurance. You had the apps turned on as you was driving out through the streets and shit. Put that shit on last ride. Let the app turn off. Go about a block away. Drop their ass off, drive about a block away, set up shop, turn that shit on, whoop, kick back and relax. Just sit there and just scout rides. Oh, you got a ride. As soon as you accept the request, guess who shit you on? You on Uber and Lyft shit now. Not saying that you want to be on that shit, but at least covers, if you hit somebody else, it covers all they shit and you kind of ass out unless you got 2500 Yeah. Yes, it's both private and ride share insurance included. Yeah. Yeah, 40, 50 states offer livery insurance. Unfortunately, California's not one of them. California's a, a racket, man. California's a hole. Because I swear to God, they do everything they can to make sure the people in California can't have a good life. 
can't stand fucking California government, man. The people are cool. The beaches are cool. The food is cool. But the fucking government sucks. California government, them all those motherfuckers. And I remember one time down in Southern Cal, all the government officials kept giving each other raises all the time and the city was going broke and they finally fucking got rid of all the government. They put them in jail and all that shit because they kept giving each other raises all the time, but the people were going broke. Can't stand Cal. California government is a whole bunch of fucking hacks. They just all need to... Anybody in government in California needs to immediately lose their motherfucking office today, not tomorrow, today, and start over fresh. All they ask need to be fucking done because they don't do shit for the people of California. They always fucking people over all the time. It's like people's in there, you know, working goddamn 80, 90 hours a week and still can't make fucking rent. I'm like, how expensive is this place? A fucking one bedroom studio and shit be like $1,800. I'm like, no, that's not right. It shouldn't be no 1800 for no fucking one bedroom studio. No, they fucking people over in California, man. And I, like I said, it's the government. It ain't the people because I guarantee the people didn't vote for none of that shit. It's the government doing that. Man. Yeah, it's much safer to go on last ride and post up somewhere and park and scout for your next ride. Ride flow. That's what I do, man. Like I said, if I got a if I got a surge on on fucking Paw Patrol, I'll sit somewhere and just fucking scout right there with the fucking shit on Paw Patrol. I'm like, fuck it, nope. If I got a ride on another app, cool. I'll throw a ride on Lyft on yeah on Lyft, and I'll kind of cruise, but I'll turn it on Paw Patrol on Uber so I can grab a surge as I'm driving. And once I end that ride on Lyft, I can turn it on Uber to see is it a surge trap. If it's a surge trap, I just sit where I'm at and just fucking wait till an Uber ride come through. If don't nothing come through, start scouting back on Lyft again. It's a it's a whole back and forth. And the whole time you're driving around, you do not have to use ride share insurance if you're just sitting in a fucking parking lot. You ain't going nowhere. If you're driving down the streets and you're cruising with both apps on, you might want to have ride share insurance. Because <laughs> if you was to hit somebody and your insurance is like, well, we're not covering you because you was doing ride share. That motherfucker, you, you better have ride. The way I drive, I don't need it. I pay for the shit for what reason? I don't even know. I can't get it off now because I already paid for the shit. But it's a simple fact that I'm not going to need it. My private insurance will cover everything I got to deal with. So I can just cruise and go park some fucking where it's not like I can call and say, hey, can you do me a favor and take ride share insurance off? Too late. This shit ain't that expensive anyways. It's too late for me to call. But it's a tactic that I do all the time. So I don't got to fuck with it. Like when people sit and they saw that my, my attorney handle all my cases and shit. Like when I got hit in the Jeep, they handled the whole case and everything. That's just, just regular insurance. That wasn't ride share insurance. That's regular insurance. But I did ride share that day in the Jeep. Yeah, I did ride share that day, but I wasn't on the apps. And so once you turn the apps off, you in your ride, you turn that shit off. You on your regular insurance again. They can say, well, you were doing ride share insurance early that day. That was early that day. I'm not, you know, a fucking 24 seven ride share driver. I do this shit when I feel like it. I'm not 24 seven. So when I turn the shit off, I'm not doing ride share. I'm just a citizen driving to go give me some fucking ice cream now. Don't bother me. So if you see me on the app, that's one thing. I might be doing ride share. If I'm off app and just driving, you can say, well, you're a ride share driver. Man, don't, don't fucking bother me with that shit. Don't. Don't even try me. And that's how you get, you know, shit done. You, you do it the smart way. You know how these apps are trying to always fuck us over, these insurance companies? Play that game back with them. Play it back with them. Know, know the parameters of how you got to get around, and they can't fuck with you. What, what Tula said, I just got two new private clients and doing my first private client riding this week, and she tips good 13 bucks every time. There you go. Hey, to hey Tula, what you're gonna end up doing that that ride right there that's gonna end up being about I say 60 70 dollars within those two rides. 60 70 when the, the app will probably pay you probably about 25. <laughs> so you're gonna make like an extra 50 bucks just doing that shit on your own. <laughs> it's like leave their ass alone, leave these apps alone. One bedroom in San Francisco is 4100 plus enough to run up for parking where I live. Damn, Steven, you crazy. $4,100 for a one bedroom, bruh, that's almost, and plus another 300, you know what? So you're paying 4,400, 4,400. My house, the mortgage is $1,500 a month. You could have three of my fucking houses. <laughs> you could have three of these fucking houses on the block, man. It's like, fuck that. That's a lot of money. You can have three whole fucking houses on the block. That's crazy, man. That's nuts. But that's why a lot of people like move down to my neighborhood because this shit's like, hey, man, these old ass houses from the 70s, man, they love these because it's a lot of land. They give us a lot of space. The houses just south of me, the older houses, dude, you could probably put five, six houses 
in the yard. That's how big their yards are. And they're all the same price. I'm like, how do you got this much land? It's like, there's no, I wouldn't even want to cut grass in there. This is the desert. They be having the biggest ass yards, 120 degrees outside. Ain't no way in hell I'm cutting this grass in 120. That shit will be dirt by the time the summer's over with. I ain't dealing with that. But yeah, these houses down here is crazy, man. It's like $4,300 or $4,400 for a one bedroom in San Francisco. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. I'd be up out of California real quick. Yes, that's what a 44 is a mortgage on a mansion. I'm telling you, Austin, man, I'd be out of San Fran so fast. Shit. I, I would hate to make that much money and to give it to somebody just to have walls around me. I'm like, I'm going to Walmart, buy me a motherfucking tent, and I'm going to live right where the rest of these other tent motherfuckers is living. And I'm going to pay one of them to watch my tent every day while I'm out doing rides here. I'd be like, hey, bro, I'm going to give you 50 bucks a day to watch my tent. Don't let nobody in my tent <laughs> drive around San Francisco doing ride share all fucking day. Come back to my tent. Paid like a motherfucker. Everybody be like, whoa, Jeff's back with the Beamer. What's up? I got an orange tent. Orange Beamer. What's up? <laughs> Bums all hanging around and shit. I'm giving them fucking popcorn and goddamn granola and shit. Like, yeah, Jeff's our buddy. Like, hey, man, I ain't paying no 4400 I'm kicking it with you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly tent life equals zero rent i'm telling you fucking zero rent give me a tent fuck that shit i am not paying no 4400 <laughs> hey man if she said an orange tent yeah exactly i got an orange beamer and an orange tent fuck that motherfucker like jeff live in san fran how do you know see that orange tent the only orange tent on the whole fucking block you see all these homeless people in like brown tents and fucking blue tent, gray tents, and one big ass orange tent at the end with a beamer parked in front of it. That's my spot. <laughs> Man. Was it the happiest city in America? Is Fremont, California. The happiest city in America is Fremont, California. Why is that? Why is that? Why are they the happiest city? What's the deal with that shit? Man, y'all gotta be crazy. Man. I was sleeping in my car if I had to do gig work in San Fran. Ain't no way. I'm telling you, man. Ain't no way. I'll I'd probably have one of those um those what they call it gladiators those gladiator trucks but i have the bed and it will have like the tent over the bed so i can sleep in the back of my truck every night and just drive around fuck that shit just drive around <laughs> say but it's orange exactly exactly yes buddy <laughs> two room tent renter positive income i know it <laughs> Hey, and that's the thing. I have somebody watching it and renting it at the same damn time. Like, hey, you want to rent my tent while I'm out working? I'm out doing some rides here. You can rent my tent. Fuck that shit. You can sleep. You can sleep in my tent while I'm doing rides here. You see, fuck with that. Well, my lady and I pay rent. I can live in 15 acres in Scottsdale with two horses and a gator in the in the moat. <laughs> Is that two horses and a gator in the moat? Fuck that shit. Well, like, where'd you get that alligator from? Shit, San Fran. I paid for it. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, tent life free lands on. Yeah, man. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I can't wait till we go out in the desert. Something's in my eye. Y'all got me. When we go out in the desert, when we go off-roading, y'all gonna see some crazy shit out there. There's people that live out there sometimes. They have huge like RVs, it'd be like parks and everything out there, and they live in the middle of the desert. You see like a little campfire, a lot of trash, a lot of trash because they don't have trash services. So you see a whole fucking bunch of trash next to some bushes. But like every year, well, like two or three times a year, the certain area I go to, there's this uh, agency called Clean Up Our Deserts. Now, I picked this guy up one time. He's actually on my Instagram. It's called Clean Up Our Deserts. And they drive around the desert to all the places where people live and they throw trash and tents and all that. And they clean the whole areas up. It'd be like 200 people. All trailers, trucks, everything, and they just get tons of tires, trash, scrap, whatever. They take whole fucking RVs out of there that have been abandoned and shit back there. But the dudes on my Instagram, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go find some of his shit and show it on there. And so when we go off-roading, I'm gonna go show us all the areas that where they be going. Crazy shit, man. And like I said, you can live out there for free. It's free out there in the desert. Ain't nothing, nothing out there. It's like park rangers might come by every once in a while, check on you, like, hey, you good? You just out there fishing and shit. We're just camping, just fishing. Then you just like pull up shop, go to another area the next day, do the same thing, man. You can live in the deserts in Arizona. And there's some pretty cool spots out there. You just got to find you some fucking shade. That's about it, man. Was it Jeff got to go get JoJo ice cream? Now it's all good. Now, <laughs> Jesse, I got to go get some, some ice cream now. It's all good, though. Hey, tell him, man. 
He gonna he gonna love the ice cream. I tell you, we gonna we gonna take a cruise. We gonna take a cruise, man. Tell Georgia we we coming up. So you you gonna live on federal land for two weeks at a time. You just got to move to a few miles after two weeks. Yeah, exactly. And that's what they do, man. The machine, they do that. They'll be set up shop somewhere like by the lake and they'll be fishing, camping, drinking, doing shit. They got a car. They'll go get like beer and shit down in the town or whatever. But then when you come back, you'll see the same people, but they'll be like on the other side of the lake, like way. And it's like miles to get there, miles. But they'll drive all the fuck away around and set up shop on the other side. Because you remember what people's campers look like. Because it'd be some cool-ass campers. They'd be like, oh, dude, I remember that forerunner. Oh, I remember that camper right there. They just living out there. That's it. And they just keep moving. They just move around. And it's like, man, this shit's crazy. And then there's some people up at Table Mesa when you first drive in. Same shit. You'll drive in. You'll see like a camper here. All these people, trash everywhere. So they'll go and clean up all the trash. But then they'll move that camper deeper down a trail, like deep into the trail, like in a couple of weeks. But man, you're right. You can you can live on federal land. You got to move. You got to keep moving your shit around. So you can't like if your shit breaks down, they probably tow it out of there. That's what they got. Uh, clean up our deserts. They'll go out there and tow all that shit out of there. They'll tow up. You, they'll get your camper, broken down cars, burn cars, whatever. They'll take all that out of there. So they kind of help us out, especially when we out four wheeling. You don't want to be four wheeling some car broken out in the middle of the damn trail. Can't nobody move it. So they clean up our desert goes out there and they get those cars. Tulis is driving and listening. You guys, hey, let us know when you got some riders in the car so we can be like, yeah, let's mess with them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I ain't going to mess with <laughs> Say, Tula says she likes you and she want to take you to dinner. <laughs> It'd be some big old fat dude. He'd be like, for real? <laughs> Like, no, I'm just joking with you, man. one 800 YouTube. Exactly. What up, Don Dre? My man, what's good? What's good? Hey, hey, I heard you guys been coming down to Scottsdale every once in a while, making some bank, man. You and Matt. Yeah, I've been ripping and running. Like, I haven't been to Scottsdale, man, in like over two months, probably. I, well, I went there doing waste management. So I take that back. I was up there in waste management. And that was the last time I was up there. I don't get up there that often. Yeah. So they want other people to enjoy the land as well. They don't want people camping for too long. Exactly. Exactly. And once people get comfortable there, oh man, it'd be so much trash and glass. And just, I'll be, when I first cruise in, sometimes I'm like, damn, how long these motherfuckers been here? Cause it's, like I said, there's no trash services. So you got tons of trash bags and the raccoons and the fucking coyotes and shit just tear up all the trash, man. So it'd be trash strewn everywhere. Cause them night animals come and they just tear that shit up. <laughs> Tula said, fuck these apps. I know. Say all day, baby, making that puke money. <laughs> I heard man, that shit was funny as hell. Hey, but you hey, you made a killing on that because you got money from the app and from the rider. You like double dipped on that shit. I was like, damn, that's a hit right there, man. Jonah said, I was listening to you while I was doing wild ride here. Had a lady filming me while listening to you. Uh uh, that's funny. That's funny. What was she saying? Well, she's like, hey, man, who is this guy right here? Oh, man, he's this guy's nuts, man. He hates the apps, but he still drives. <laughs> I don't hate the apps. I hate what the apps do. I like the way the, te the technology works. I just don't like the fees that we get paid for using that technology. We shouldn't be paying that much in fees to use fucking find a ride services. Because if I'm going to be paying that much to find a ride when I know where all the rides are because I live in this city and I know where all the people are. So I just drive to the fucking people. That's it. Exactly. $300 ride, 4.2 miles, man. And then you got to take the day off. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Shit, that's an easy day right there. How many? I made $300 a day. Damn, how far you drive? 4.2 miles and call it a day. <laughs> that's a good day right there. You ain't use, you use probably a cap full of gasoline. You didn't even use like a, a gallon. You just do a cap full. I use like a cap full of gas. Just put it in the tank. Shit. They driving and listening with the rider as we speak. Nice boys win. Hey, he's always cruising, man. Hey, you stay busy working. And that's why sometimes I know I get kind of passionate and I get kind of heated. But I'll be thinking if somebody's like listening to this, why they got a rider in the car? I don't want to freak these people out. I don't want to be like, man, drivers are mean. They're assholes. They're no, we love riders. We talk directly to the riders. We want to work with the rider. We just don't like what the apps do. Apps are overcharging like. All the money that the riders are paying are not coming to drivers. It's cool if the app needs to take a little bit. It's cool. But the egregious taking, the overcharging, the lying, the stealing the tips. Hey, man, I'm going to leave you 10 bucks. 
then all of a sudden you get a one dollar tip. Like, wait a minute, a one dollar. Like the one girl said, I'm gonna leave you a tip, ten dollar tip. I saw her put the ten dollars in. She was sitting in my back seat. She put the ten dollars in. It gave me a ten cent tip. I didn't even know you could tip ten cents on Uber. This was Uber X. This wasn't Uber Eats. I ain't never seen a ten cent tip. So of course I hit the app up. And I was like, hey, that was $10, not 10 cents. Well, according to our records, this shows she put in 10 cents. No, you motherfucker stole $9.90 out of that damn tip. I saw her put 10 in right on the screen sitting in my back seat. And it said 10 cent. Man. So the next ride, I got the ass. I got my money back the next ride. I didn't, like I said, they pissed me off with that one, but I got my money back on the next one. Because I said, I'm not going to go back and forth with these people because I know they don't give a fuck about me. So I just cruise up to the next ride and just told these motherfuckers, hey, man, I got fucked over my last ride. This is how we're going to make it right. And they was cool with it. It was like, I'm cool with that because I told them the truth. I said, they fucked me over, man. Lady tipped me 10 bucks. They gave me 10 cents. I want to get my money back. They get my money back. So this is what we're going to do to make it right. Dude was like, that's fine. It saves me some money. I'm like, cool. Let's do it then. Cancel. <laughs> Fuck these people. It's like, if you want to play the game, let's play the game. But I, I will play that game, though. And I won't give a shit about it because I'm going to get my money. If you fuck me over, I'm going to take you out of the next deal because I don't trust you now. Because you done screwed me over on my last deal, so you ain't in this deal. You give me another deal on my plate, guaranteed that's my deal now. I'm kicking you out of the deal. You fucked me over already. So I'll bring you back in on the deal after that to see how you do. So these apps think they fuck, they, they interviewing me? No, motherfucker, I'm interviewing you. This is my car, my time, my gas, my risk on these fucking streets. I'm interviewing you, motherfucker. You can work with me. I'm out here doing the work already. Fuck you and your app. I'm doing the work. So if you're going to sit there and be like, well, we want to see if Jeff wants to work with us. No, motherfucker. I'm going to see if you want to work with me. I'm doing the work. All you doing is finding out where the rides are. I know where all the rides are because I live in this bitch. I've been doing this for a while. So I'm letting you work with me because I'll cut your ass out of every fucking deal I do. And if you want to work with me, then work with me then. But you want to try to play me? No, nah, fuck that. I'll play you back and not give a shit about it and still make money on top of that because I've been doing this for a while. I'm not brand new. I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, and these motherfuckers need to know, man. Like I said, they're going to pull up shopping in Minnesota. I wish they would try that shit in Phoenix. Please do that shit in Phoenix. Lift, leave Phoenix. Guarantee you leave Phoenix. We're going to have some of the richest motherfucking drivers on the planet driving around this motherfucker. Leave Phoenix if you want to. Because all these riders are going to be like, how are we going to get around? Oh, we got you. The cars ain't gone. The cars are still here. Motherfucker, we know where y'all at. We'll wear the shirts. We wear the shirts. We got the cars. Y'all got the money. We'll get y'all to and from. Fuck lift. Let them go. Because that's just more money for us now. We ain't got to worry about these ragged ass apps stealing our fucking people, our citizens. These are our neighbors, our friends, our family, our kids going to school. So therefore, get the fuck out of here and let us make this money. Because I ain't scared of you motherfuckers leaving. I applaud you motherfuckers leaving because I know when y'all leave, oh, we finna eat. Because all these people want to get shit. We need to go. I can't get to Scottsdale. Ain't no ride. It ain't enough Uber drivers out here. Oh, it's enough drivers, not Uber drivers. We got enough drivers, which is not Uber. Motherfucker, we are drivers. We will show the fuck up in droves and get all y'all from that concert. We will get all y'all to and from events, the symphony, orchestra, downtown, first Friday. We'll get all you motherfuckers moved around for the right amount of money. These apps can go about their fucking business. You ain't got to call them. Just look for a car. Says four hire, cash rides, shirt, cash rides, weedy 300, whatever the fuck. Let's go. Let's roll. And I guarantee the apps will be like, damn, well, we thought we was going to hurt them. You ain't hurt us. You just open and went up for more opportunity. Get the fuck up out of here. It's these weak ass drivers. Oh, I need an app. I need a motherfucker. You don't need an app. You got a mouth. Go fucking talk to these people. What the fuck is wrong with you? Go talk to these people. If they need a ride, say, hey, man, I got my car right here. If they don't believe it's your shit, pull up your motherfucking app. Go through your phone. Show like, look, I'm a driver. This is me, motherfucker. Here's my business card. If you don't want to use me tonight, use me another night. Here's my card. Don't ever get stuck again. Hit me up. Motherfucker, I'm legit. And then after a while, when people start seeing we really got drivers out here making this money and we ain't using no apps, these apps, they're going to fade the fuck out because they can't keep up with the expenses they got, the corporate expenses they got, all the lawsuits and all the bullshit they got to deal with. They ain't going to be able to keep up if drivers ain't driving for their ass. They feeding off of us. We not feeding off of them. We going broke fucking with them. So they feeding off of us. When we start feeding off of us, now we start raising up. Now these motherfuckers know who we are. Now they're going to be, hey, can you please come back? I'll tell you what. i give you $200 for the next uh, 30 rides you do. i give you $200 instead of this fucking $15 for 35 rides shit. No, that's an insult to me. That's an insult. 
That's why you see straight zeros on my Uber app for the week. You've insulted me enough. I need to go make my fucking money. You've insulted me enough. I'll do this on my own. I've been doing this shit. Fuck, I'm looking at $15 for 20 rides. Who the fuck you think I am? I ain't no fucking pigeon. I can go out and make this money. I got internet. I got fucking navigation in my car. I got a mouth. I know where all the fucking people are. The fuck you gonna give me $15 for 35 rides? You insult me now, motherfucker. I don't play that shit. So that's why that shit says straight zeros on my phone. I don't fuck around. And they know I don't. How the hell is he still paying for that car? Motherfucker, I'm an entrepreneur. If I do break jobs all fucking day, I'll do break jobs. But one thing I won't do is let you motherfuckers eat off my back. That's what I won't do. I'm not going to sit around acting like, oh, man, I need to go out and drive. Oh, shit, it's surging. Give a fuck about your surge. That surge don't even exist anyways. That shit's fake. Because as soon as you put the surge out there, you're going to drop my fare down to 30 cents a fucking mile. I'm not stupid. I'm pretty sharp with this shit. So, no, my screen will say straight zeros across. And everybody want to sit up there. Oh, man, you're not really a driver. You're not. Motherfucker. I'm an entrepreneur before I'm a driver. I was an entrepreneur before I was a driver. I became a driver to add to my entrepreneurial skills. But now we're dealing with some fuckheads. So now I got to go back to my old ways of entrepreneurial skills. Don't deal with the fuckheads. You can be a driver all you want to be. I'll be a driver if I have to be. But if I'm going to be a driver, I'm going to make some money doing this shit. I could drive for myself. I don't need no app telling me where to go. I got navigation in my car. I know where to go. You give me an address, I'll punch that shit in my car. I'll punch that shit in my phone. You give me 50 bucks, I'll take it where that shit say on my... All right, well, navigation says go here. Okay, cool. I'm going to follow my map on my, on my car. Because it tells me exactly... I got Wi-Fi in my fucking car. It tells me where to go. So if you give me an address, I'll go there. Give me the 50 bucks, we'll go there. Motherfucker, I'm not trying to kidnap you. What the fuck I want to kidnap you for? You're wasting my time. I don't got time to feed no fucking people. I got to kidnap a motherfucker, put them in the basement, feed their ass, give them clothes and water and shit like that. Waste my fucking time kidnapping you. I got three dogs. I got to feed them motherfuckers. I ain't got time to kidnap people and dogs. Fuck that. I got dogs. I ain't worried about y'all. So just pay me. Y'all get your ass to your house, drop you the fuck off. You ain't got to worry about being kidnapped. You're wasting my fucking time. Just pay me and I'll go about my business. That's it. That's how I do business. Motherfuckers, well, I don't want to be kidnapped. Motherfucker, do I look like I want to be buying you hamburgers and water and shit? I'm not trying to kidnap no fucking people. People cost money to fucking feed. I got dogs, motherfucker. I got to buy dog food and shit. Clean up dog shit. Kidnap a motherfucker. You got to clean up dog shit. You got to clean up people shit now. Because you can't just let a kidnap motherfucker walk around your house for free. You got to chain them to something. So I, I, I got to go buy chains and shit now. I got to do all this crazy shit to kidnap these raggedy motherfuckers. No, it's not worth Just give me the 50 bucks and I'll drop you up at home. You're better off going to your own house. I don't want to kidnap you. You're not worth my fucking time. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Motherfucker, be the mom me kidnapping. Motherfucker, I ain't got time to kidnap your ragged ass. I got to work on my car. I got to wash my car and shit later. I got to fucking get on a live stream. I got shit I got to do. I got to make t-shirts later on. These motherfuckers, the mom's kidnapping. Man, if you don't get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, the dogs is good. The dogs is good. Serious, man. People be cracking me up. They, they be saying that on the news channel. Oh, yeah, Uber drivers be kidnapping people and this and that. And I'm just like, what? I'm like, since when do we have time to fuck with you people? It's like, you motherfuckers are a pain in our ass anyway. Half you motherfuckers going to eat in our car. Why well, do I want to kidnap a motherfucker going to end up eating in my car? It's like, no. Get out my fucking, give me the 50 bucks. Get out my fucking car. You want to kidnap me? I don't want shit to do with you. Get the fuck out of my car. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm worth something. You ain't worth shit to me. Get out of my car. Give me the 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Daytona, you right. You right. <laughs> yeah, man, you stupid. Man, say you too damn funny. No, be be fuck me up with that shit. They all worried and shit. Oh, I don't know. I'm like they important. Like they really worth something. I don't want to be kidnapped. Huh? Like, motherfucker, nobody want to fuck with you. Like, I'm trying to get rid of your motherfucking ass. My kids are old enough to be out of the house now. Why well, don't want to kidnap a new motherfucker? I just got rid of my son's 21, but 16 year old, he lives with his mom now, got a free house, I got dogs and shit. And now you tell me some, I want to bring you to my house? Like, I'm just trying to give you a ride, you raggedy motherfucker. I'm not trying to bring you to my house. Get the fuck up out of my car. <laughs> like, I don't want to fucking deal with these people. Like, fuck that. Like, pay me, go about your business. Well, well, you acting like, you know, you're more important than us if you don't want to kidnap us. You know, we are fucking cool people. You could kidnap us and really have a great life as a kidnapper. Like, man, fuck you. I'm not a kidnapper. I don't want y'all raggedy motherfuckers in my car. Just get out. <laughs> well, you acting all high and stuck up. I mean, you acting like kidnappers are bad or something. You should just want to at least kidnap one of us. I want to kidnap zero of you motherfuckers. None of y'all. 
<laughs> so I heard the ground the trumpet. Help! <laughs> Shit's funny as hell, man. Man, no, no, man, these people, man, they be fucking me up, man. It's like, anybody got time for all that shit? I'm like, dude, we legitimate drivers. We out here trying to make enough money to live a good life, go on vacation, pay some bills, buy a set of fucking tires to have when we know these tires are going to go bad, get a fucking alternator, maybe take a day off when we get sick, go to the dentist, get a fucking tooth, put a crown on a new fucking tooth, do basic shit. Everybody out here, oh, man. These Uber drivers are going to do something. You know, you fucking passengers probably want to do shit to us. We the ones that are sitting there. We got good jobs that are making decent money. We got really nice fucking cars. Most of us have somewhere to park the car, so we do have a house. We're more valuable than you motherfuckers. And y'all talking about we want to kidnap? Why do I want to kidnap a broke motherfucker? It's like, I'm good. I'm good. Because you motherfuckers want to fuck with us. That's what it is. You're going to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff is that cast like an 80s dealer. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm gonna have a cash counting machine counting all my dollar bills. <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? Going to a strip club later? These are all tips from these old broke motherfuckers giving me two and three dollars at a time. Like, damn dog, you got nine thousand eight hundred and forty-one dollars in crinkled dollar bills. <laughs> Should have <laughs> like oh, the mother of half of them smell like weed. The other half smell like Cheerios because the kids play with them and shit. And it was like, dude, why's your why's your money smell like cereal? I don't know. Some lady I dropped her off at a fucking daycare. I don't fucking know. I don't even ask. I just take the money. <laughs> it's like, man, this fucking shit stinks. This money, like, yeah, exactly. But no, man, that's just crazy, man, crazy. But no, I tell my fuckers, man, if we gonna go out there and get this money, let's go do it. Let's go do it. Because I feel sorry for a lot of people out there who who. You know, they just don't have that that heart to stand for themselves. And it's almost like you got to make a motherfucker super desperate. Like when I look at homeless people, dead serious, homeless people are some of the best salesmen out there. These motherfuckers are some of the best marketers out there because somehow they've been homeless for how long and they still come up with money. No fucking jobs, no, no but they always got money. Average home motherfucker probably walk around with like thirty, forty dollars on them right now. At all times, any given, this moment walking by a hamburger right now, they felt like they always on a money grind because they don't know when the next money is going to come. So they approach everybody. The homeless people are the most rejected fucking people ever. They get rejected, I bet, probably 90% of the time, 90% of the time. But that 10% of the time they don't get rejected, they're getting five, 10, 15, maybe a 20, getting a handful of change. So they always looking for that 10% of the time when they're not getting rejected. That one out of 10 people they're going to ask, that one out of 10 going to say, okay, man, here's five. That's their day. They ain't spend no money. They done made 50, 60 bucks. Just walking around the same gas. I ain't going to try that shit again somewhere else. Then I made 100 bucks a day. So when you look at people being scared of rejection, but yet you got homeless people who get rejected every day, all day, every day, and they still on their grind, still doing that shit somehow. I mean, we got nice ass cars. You gonna reject this ride? Motherfucker, my car smell nice. I'm dressed clean. You gonna reject this ride? You need to ride at home. You gonna reject this fucking ride? It's like you can, but I guarantee the more times you keep throwing that out there, that all of a sudden you're gonna start catching private rides. Like, damn, dude, I was so scared to do private rides. I was so scared. And all of a sudden it's like, I done hit two in a row. What? Most motherfuckers, I done did four out of my last five rides was private rides, man. I converted them. Sometimes you got to do that. You're going to have rejection. Everybody's going to have rejection. But you got to be cool with that shit. Like I said, even on my channel, I know everybody don't like me, but I don't give a fuck, though. I've been rejected so much in my life, I'm actually okay with the shit. It's the people who don't like rejection. The people who are the fear of rejection. I don't want somebody to say no. I want everybody to like me. I don't want everybody to like me because I don't like everybody. I just don't. I'm one of them people. I mean, I wish I liked everybody, but I'm not Jesus. I don't like everybody. I just don't. I'm just a natural, every, average, everyday fucking human. Some people I don't like. It don't Skin color don't make a difference. It's all about attitude and personality. I just don't give a shit about a lot of people. But some people I do like. And for those people, cool. They, they don't reject me. It's cool. But for the people that reject me, I don't give a shit. Go to another channel. Go look at another fucking TikTok channel. Go look at another YouTube channel. Go look at another fucking Instagram channel. I don't give a shit. It's a lot of stuff to look at out there. So when somebody's like, oh, I'm going to unsub your channel, the fuck am I supposed to say? I'm going to cry. No, fuck you, man. There's 7 billion people on this planet. You're one. 
you're not making that big of a deal today. You're really not. And if you think like me, if I unsub somebody's channel where I do something, I don't tell them I'm doing. I just do it. They won't know the difference. And if I say, man, I'm tired of this dude always talking about the same shit. You know what? I'm just going to sub him. I don't get on the channel and say, hey, man, I'm tired of you talking about the same shit. I'm going to unsub. Why? It He's not going to notice if I leave. So just leave. He don't notice. And he keep his own fucking thing going now. Because I'm not one of those people trying to destroy somebody's shit. If that's what you're doing, then that's what you're doing. Knock yourself the fuck out. I ain't got to be a part of it. But just like what we do over here, we out here trying to, you know, get cash rides. We trying to get money. We trying to make, exactly, he says, it's a numbers game. That's right, nice boy. It's a numbers game. We trying to get people's bank accounts up. I'm trying to make sure when a motherfucker say, damn, I got a flat tire. You know what? I got an extra 300 fucking dollars sitting there. All I need is 110 for this tire. I'm, I did cash rides all day yesterday. I got an extra $300. I need 110 for a tire. I don't want somebody to need 110 for the tire and be like, man, I got like $60 in my name because of fucking Uber. I remember back when I was driving the Jeep, I was still driving the Jeep. And that's before, like I said, it wasn't a lot of YouTube channels teaching people how to drive. It was just te teaching people the shit about the app. If you turn on the Uber app, it will say U-B-E-R on your screen, letting you know it was dumb shit like that. Like you couldn't figure it out if you just turn the app on. Of course you can. But motherfuckers talk to you like you slow. And I don't like channels like that. Don't talk to me like I'm fucking slow. Tell me the real. How do we make this fucking money? And that's why back when I used to drive the Jeep, it was a lot of, bro man, can you loan me like $40, man? I need gas, man. I want to drive today. How do you not have $40 for gas? How do you not? I mean, we're doing rides here. How do you not have $40 for gas? But that's how Uber was playing fucking people. Driving people shit, having motherfuckers take nature hikes all day, every day, and they don't gas their car up. They don't drove 250 miles to make 200 and fucking 30 dollars. And it's like, what the hell, man? It's like everybody's run out of gas all the fucking time. And I'm like, now that we got a lot of channels out there telling people, don't take nature hikes unless it's worth it, or you cash that motherfucker, cash convert it. Don't do that. But I'm not one of them people that's going to sit up there and be like, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to drive, you know, 30 miles up the highway and it's $18 because all my rides are like, dude, I would rather take six rides, six dollar. I'll take three six dollar rides and each one of them be like probably two or three miles. So I'll go maybe, you know, six miles to make $18. I'll go six miles to make $18 versus that person taking an $18 ride to go 30 fucking miles. So they went 24 miles more than me. For the same exact amount of money I got. They drove 24 more miles. And I'm in the same neighborhood. I don't have to come all the way back. They got to come all the way back. So you got to kind of like make this shit make sense. And a lot of times people didn't make it make sense when we first started. So I'm glad we got, you know, channels now. And we got drivers, actual drivers out there willing to stand up. Willing to stand up and go, hey, this shit's stupid, y'all. This is how we should be doing it. And a, like you said, Tula, I'm like you. Six dollar rides, motherfuckers. Y'all see my shit? I, they be giving me a ride two dollar and thirty three cent, but then I have a four dollar surge on it. Be like, hey, six dollars, <laughs> and be like a mile and a half. But that's me all day. I do that shit all day. I'm a six dollar person, like motherfucker, the six dollar man, not the six million dollar man, the six dollar man, motherfucker. I'm standing in front with a with a big ass thing of fucking cotton candy, the six dollar man. <laughs> like what kind of motherfucker? He ain't the six million dollar man. No, this is the six dollar man of cotton candy and a pickle in one hand, like. I'm going to give you a ride, motherfucker, to the circus. But <laughs> exactly the 2.5 mile man. That's it. <laughs> motherfucker, you ain't a marathon. You're a tenth of a marathon. Instead of 26 miles, you are 2.6 miles. <laughs> motherfucker, you are not a marathon man, motherfucker. Like shit. But see, and that's what I do, though. And that's why I'm glad we got drivers out there all over in comments all the time. Telling drivers, you know, you could do it smarter, man. You could do this, man. And uh, and these people on like YouTube and shit or on uh, Facebook, they be putting they, you know, in some of these drive. Like I'm not on Facebook, but people message me the shit all the time because it's pure comedy. And it'd be like, there'd be some guy like, oh yeah, I just did this ride right now. It'd be like thirteen dollars for like nineteen miles. And I'm like, and people be in the chat like, oh yeah, man, this was so slow today, man. I'm glad you took that. At least you got. You. And I'm just like. If y'all keep taking that shit, they're going to keep sending that shit. What are y'all doing? It's like, that's not some, but it's a bunch of fucking pigeons, man, chasing popcorn. And they all on Facebook fucking clapping at each other and shit like, yeah, that's a great ride. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, man, I just worked 10 hours a day, man. I can't believe I, I covered 180 today. And I'm like, we shouldn't be celebrating that. Like my man, Nick. Nick went out either today or yesterday. I think he went out yesterday. This motherfucker drove about an hour and a half. 
about an hour and a half he drove yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Motherfucker cranked out about 130, 140 in like an hour and a half. On UberX is all he got, UberX. But he drives how we drive. That's how he does it. In an hour and a half, driving regular, you probably make like 40 bucks, 50 bucks in about an hour and a half. This motherfucker made like 140 on UberX because he don't fucking play no games. He takes all high rides, high surge, high mile or high money. He don't fuck around with no shit like that. Of course, they're going to send him a bunch of, because he's lives by Scottsdale. They're going to send him a bunch of rides, you know, $8 for like, you know, 14 miles. He's not taking that. Nah, nah, I'm cool. He's waiting to see the bangers. And he'll just keep declining, declining, declining. There he is. Nick's right there. There he is. He'll keep declining. And the motherfucker made about 140, about an hour and a half of driving. Uber X only. There's a way to make this money out there. We ain't got to drive no 10 hours to make no 180 bucks. Oh, 160. Oh, 160. There you go. 160. I, I was close, motherfucker. I was close. <laughs> but that's the thing, though. When you drive smarter like that, that is a good feeling in your soul to know you only invested an hour and a half of your day to bang out 160 bucks. And you can go home, sit back, chill, relax, eat for a second, and go back out and add to that later. You didn't have to be out for 10 hours doing that because you weren't taking a whole bunch of pigeon ass rides, wasting your time, wasting opportunity because those rides were sitting on your deck because you didn't waste your opportunity taking shit rides. You was declining stuff, getting all the shit out the way, letting the pigeons take all that. Well, Jeff, say, Jeff, you remember that ride on Friday? I sent you a screenshot for 27. Yeah, yeah, I remember that 27. But this dude went like a mile and a half. I was like, what the hell? And it's like, that's what it is, man. You find them little short rides like that. I think it was Jesse did a straight shot down or something like that. And I'm sitting there like, where the hell are these rides coming from out of nowhere? Like I said, I didn't drive this week. So for me to see everybody's getting good rides, banging ass rides and stuff like that, these apps are waking up to the protests we're doing. These apps are waking up to the bullshit because you don't see banging rides like this for no reason at all. There is no events, nothing crazy going on. The apps just know we got to pay these drivers to move these people because they're not doing it. They're not doing it. And so I, I love when they send me screenshots of shit like that. Say, I'm bringing breadcrumbs with the pictures at the strike. <laughs> Dude, you stupid. She going to bring some breadcrumbs. Just throw that shit out the window. You're going to see them just come out of the woodwork. <laughs> Let's hear the Jeff at the barbecue. He said, I tell pastors all the time. I retired from long trips. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The zero dollar rides on Uber. I saw that on Professor Channel. Zero dollar rides. I'm like, see, now some shit like that. If I was like right around the corner from them, I would go over there and I would be like, listen, this is what they're doing. They're sending a zero dollar ride. That means they're paying me nothing. I don't know how much you pay for this ride, but this is what I'm willing to do it for. And call that shit good. Call it good. And they're like, no, we want to leave it on the app. OK, you want to leave it on the app knowing that I'm getting paid zero dollars. Well, we, we just want to go through the app. We don't want to go off the app. We just want to do it on. So you cool with me making zero dollars. You're going to hop your raggedy ass in my motherfucking car knowing I'm getting paid zero dollars and you just gave all this money to the app knowing I ain't getting shit out of it and you cool with that? Yeah, we cool with that, man. Fuck you, cancel. Block band. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't care about them people like that. If you don't want to cancel some shit like that knowing I'm getting played, if you don't want to cancel that and say, damn, well, I didn't know that was happening to you. Well, shit, that's not fair. You should get something. I mean, it's your car, your gas, your time. You're a nice guy. We'll pay you. But if you don't care, no, we just want to leave it on the app. We're just rather just leave it on the app. And fuck you, motherfucker, cancel. Get out of my car. Nope, not happening. So, oh, no, that was a block man. I knew it. Later, nice boys. Be safe. <laughs> time to wake up. Yep, exactly. See, I've been snap shorting my fares all day, sending them to rides here United. So they can snap uh, snapshots right now. Yeah. And that's what it is, though. When, when people start seeing what these drivers are actually getting offers on, this is why all these articles about Uber is like, yeah, Uber's a cash cow now. All investors run to Uber. If you got money, invest in Uber. Go straight to Uber. Why? Because Uber's a cat. Why? Because we got a bunch of pigeons taking these bullshit rides. Look at all this money we're getting from these riders. We're getting all this money from riders. So where's the BBC shirt? <laughs> I'm going to have to make one. The BBC. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you got to have get the fuck out on my car in the back of your T-shirt and, and move up when it show your uh, time. Like, just scoot up something. Like, hey, can you read that shirt? 
Well, it says get the fuck out of my car. Yeah, that's what you got to start doing. <laughs> man. And that's what it is, man. Motherfuckers got to understand. These apps are using all these pigeons as, as cash cows. Knowing that they're taking these shit rides. Knowing they're charging fees out the ass for all these rides. And these people are taking it. And we're like, dude, the more you do that, the more articles are going to come out saying Uber is now a cash cow for investors now. They're throwing money at investors pretty. Seven billion stock buybacks. Hey, if you invest with us, you're guaranteed to make your money back because we got idiots out here driving. We got them renting cars, pushing them instead of 30 rides a week. Now we got them doing 50 rides a week minimum. They're taking all the shit they can take to clear that 50 because they don't want to lose that car. They're paying all this money for personal miles on some of these rental cars they got. I'm like, this is Uber is like one of the, the biggest idiot businesses out there. And that's what I have in so many issues getting Uber figured out. It was an idiot business when it started. It was basically guys like Travis or whoever. They were saying, well, it's like a taxi, but it's like a taxi that, you know, everybody can be a taxi. And the person just finds them on the phone. It was uncharted territory, completely uncharted territory for a lot of people who didn't know how this shit worked. It was an idiot business. And money was flowing left and right. Everybody was making money. People who were driving was wasting money. People were wasting. The drivers were wasting more money than even the app was wasting money. And now the app came in and the app is tightening up the fucking purse strings and not paying shit. Now drivers got to be smarter now. Because if I would have known what I know now, back when I first started driving, oh, shit, I'd be balling with the. I mean, we was getting like seven hundred dollar bonus quest bonuses and shit. $500 quest bonuses every fucking week. We was making bank back then. And guess what I was doing back then? Because I was stupid back then. I wasn't taking no short rides back then because I was stupid back then. I wouldn't take no $4 ride, $3. No, I was waiting on the $25 for fucking 40 miles. Yeah, let's do that. I was like, I went to Tucson like two or three fucking times for like 70, 80 bucks. Yeah, let's do that. I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I would, I saw a four or five dollar ride. I was like, what the fuck? I want to go like a mile for for four bucks a mile. No, give me a banger. I want like $19, $22. I didn't know. Had I known back then what I know now, I would have been hitting them fucking bonuses in like a day or two. <laughs> they would be like, I did 40. I remember when I, because the way I drive now, I remember I did a lift bonus and lift didn't know what I was going to do. I got they motherfucking. I did 42 rides in one day. It took me 11 hours to do 42 fucking rides, 11 hours to do 42 rides. And I hit that fucking bonus. I fuck live up. Lip was probably like, how the hell does motherfucker just do 42 rides in one day? All short rides. That's all. And I got that big ass fucking lips bonus. They was like, this motherfucker played us. <laughs> and that was back when everybody was still tripping off a motherfucker. Oh, you can't decline rides. I was declining like crazy, man. Decline like crazy shit. I, I hit that 42 rides. Yeah, hey, Larry, you know it. You know it, man. It was crazy. Yep, Jeff, same here. I could have been making three three grand a week back instead of fifteen to eighteen hundred. Man, if we would have known back then what we know now, none of us would have been putting miles on our car. We would have all been hitting every bonus that was every out there. We would have all been just like, man, man. It was no educational channels out there. It was all just braggy channels out there. Hey, I made, and it was crazy because back then it was something. To make a thousand dollars a week. Oh, I made a thousand dollars, motherfucker. I made a thousand dollars this week. And we didn't know because we was burning out clock doing all these long distance ass fucking trips for low pay. We sitting there doing, you know, 30, 40 miles for like 22, 27 dollars, not realizing we was driving for less than a dollar a mile and shit. Because we were getting paid by the, by the rate cards and shit like that, not really getting paid a lot. So I'm sitting there like, man, we had the rate card back then. Plus, we had the bonuses, the quests. Then we had the, the streaks back then. We know how to hold streaks now. We know how to fucking, you know, do Harriet Tubman shit now. If we knew all the shit we know now and we knew it back then, like you said, a thousand week was a goal, young boy. People now doing thousand dollars in two days now. They doing a grand in two days now. But yet a thousand a week was what, what was the, the, oh, man, if you can get a thousand a week, man, whoa, thousand a week. Motherfuckers do that shit in two days now. And it, and it in eight hours you can make it's so many times I've made fucking 500 bucks driving like six seven hours 500 bucks because we know how to do it now we're smarter now and the apps have seen that these motherfuckers are not driving a lot of trips y'all and they making a lot of money now thousand a week psh, man it was the hard people be like oh man I made eight hundred eighty dollars this week man how many hours you drive forty seven. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I thought I was hot at 300. I know it, Larry. Back then, we was like, oh, man, $200 a day. And the people used to say that shit. Man, I'm going to make $200 a day, man. I can't wait to make $200 a day. Nick, hour and a half yesterday, Nick made 160 That's the kind of shit we talk about now because we're smarter drivers now. But we used to be like, ooh, I can't make $200 a day. I'm going to do this shit, 200 bucks a day. And the apps heard us saying that. The apps heard us saying that our goal is $200 a day. So they stretching these motherfuckers out all the way out to 11 hours now to make 200 bucks, 12 hours to make 200 bucks because they think 200 bucks is what we going for now. They've seen all these YouTube channels, $200 a day, make $200 a day, do what you can do to make $200 a day. And we sitting there like, no, that's, that don't sound right. There's like, some just don't sound right with that. Cause that means if, if I'm driving for three, $4 a mile at $4 a mile to make 200, all I need to drive is 50 fucking miles. That's it. So I just need to find 50, I need to find 50 miles worth of trips at around about $4 a mile, somewhere close to that, $3 a mile. Maybe throw me a tip or something like that. A couple of trips in there could be $12 for like two miles, you know, $15 for like three miles. Throw a few of those in there. I could drive 50, 60 miles and make $200 now. Our whole schematic changed about how to make 200 bucks. Because now I'm like, I can make 200 sitting in this fucking parking lot. I ain't got to go nowhere. I just sit here and just scout rides all fucking day. <laughs> it's like shit. Turbo bonus ten dollar ride is a twelve dollar ride. It needs to be fifteen. Yeah, yeah. It's like what that one time I needed one trip to get five hundred dollars from Uber after completing one hundred and twenty rides for the week. Uber never sent me that trip. I was online from eleven p.m. to four a.m. the next day, and Uber never sent that last trip. Oh yeah, streaming. They got me one time. I had I needed like four more trips. I needed four more trips, and they wouldn't send me a trip. So I jumped on Uber Eats. And Uber Eats sent me some fucking jack-in-the-box orders in the middle of the night that took forever. They sent me two jack-in-the-box orders. Took forever. I ended up missing that motherfucking bonus by two rides because I needed four. They sent me those two jack-in-the-box orders that took forever. They know what they're doing, man. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And I'm like, once we get to hip to that shit, that's why you see all of these bonuses and all these shit they got now. None of them are over a hundred bucks. They were like eighty dollars, seventy bucks, seventy rides, seventy bucks, like whatever. Because they know ain't none of us doing that shit no more. They don't have the money to pay big bonuses no more because we got smarter with driving now. If they could say, "Hey, if we can somehow get these riders to take all these stupid ass trips, we can have enough money to offer bonuses again." We don't need bonuses. If you just pay me three, four dollars a mile, I don't need no bonus. It's like if you give me three, four dollars a mile, let's say four dollars a mile. I can drive 500 miles that week to make two Gs because all I got to do is 100 miles a day for five days, 100 miles on Monday, 100 on Tuesday, 100 on Wednesday, 100 on Thursday, 100 on Friday, weekend off. You just paid me $4 a fucking mile. I went 500 miles. That's two Gs, weekends off. I could do that. I ain't got to work the fucking weekend. Leave the weekends for people who can't work during the week because if I can work during the week, Shit, give me, I'll do 100 miles every fucking day. 100 miles every day at $4 a fucking mile. Two Gs. That's it. I don't work Saturday, Sunday. I'm off. People say, well, it's a lot of money out there. I don't need it. I just made two Gs during fucking money through Friday. Let me just be off. Let people who want to work weekends and need to work weekends go out and work. Why do I need to be greedy? Go for three. No, I don't need to go for three. I got two. I don't even need to go for two. Let's go for one and call it good. I mean, a $1,000 a week job. If you give me $4 a mile and I got to make $1,000, all I got to drive is 250 miles, 250 miles. My tank is almost 400 miles to a full tank, 400 miles to a full tank. If I only got to drive 250 miles and you give me $4 a mile, that's $1,000 I can make with less than a tank of gas. And I'm cool for the week. Why do I need more than that? <laughs> it's like, I don't. What up, Eric? <laughs> I just saw her name pop up. That's my girl, Erica. I love you and your crazy math. Pastor Jeff always will. Erica, that's my girl. That's Erica and Alex. Hey, Erica, did you get a package? I had a package shipped to your house the other day. Did you actually get it? <laughs> I don't know if I didn't message you to tell you if I was going to send it or not. I just sent it. I was cruising by the post office. So I just threw it in there. I love you and Alex. I'm telling you, I'm supposed to come out there. It's March. I'm coming out there anyway. So. I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to drive out to Vegas in a couple of weeks. I'm going to come out there. We're going to party like it's 1999. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was probably like it's 1998. 
<laughs> Since I'm looking at a nine dollar ride for 20 minutes. So lame. I'm not going for that. Yeah, to nine dollars for 20 minutes. Doubt it. Doubt it. I tell you what, tell them to give you twenty dollars for that ride. When you roll up, say, hey, give me 20 bucks for this. It's 20 minutes. Give me 20 bucks. See what they say. They're like, that's fair because we paid 28 for it. <laughs> They'd be like, see, and you ain't got to tip me. Just give me 20 bucks and you ain't even got to tip me. You can save $8. So if you was going to, you're probably going to tip me like $3 any fucking ways to pay 31 total, but you're only going to pay 20 and you ain't got a tip. So I just saved you $11. Do this shit 10 times. You just saved 110 bucks. He's like, yeah, those were the days. Those were the days, man, man. I'm telling you, man, there's a way we can go out here and make this money, but we got to do it the smart way. And when the app see that we're driving smarter, when we sit up there and, and we show them we're banging out the three dollar a mile, four dollar a mile. And, and sometimes you're going to find like like my man, Jesse, fine. You're going to find that twenty seven dollars to go that mile. You're going to find that those little sweet bangers in there where somebody tipped you extra. Somebody got a surge in there. You got a thirteen dollar surge. You grab a trip that's going around the corner. So those are only going to pull your average up. So when your average is being pulled up, excuse me, don't water it down. Don't start going for 50 cent a mile, 70 cent a mile thing. Well, I just did that one for 13, so I could take a cheap one. No, keep that shit high because you've got 12 months. If you can drive for $4 a mile for 12 months, all you got to do is find 25,000 miles worth of trips and you made $100,000. You just got to find 25,000 miles worth of trips that are at least $4 a mile or more so they can pull your average up. Some may be a little less than $4 a mile, but if you get those good bangers to pull that average up, you can make $100,000 off of driving 25,000 miles. 25,000 miles, 12 months, you're only driving like 2,000 miles a month. 2,000 miles a month, four weeks. I mean, that's 500 miles a week. That's 100 miles a day for five days, and you got weekends off. You could do that shit. You do 100 miles a day, weekends off, do that shit all year. Guess what? You just made $100,000, and you don't even fucking work weekends, and you don't even work full-time. You're only doing 100 miles a day. You ain't working full-time. And you're like, dude, how the fuck are you making $100,000 a year? Only driving 25,000 miles. 25,000 miles is all I need to drive. I don't got to work weekends. I ain't got to like push myself hard or crazy, whatever. I just got to be smart enough to know that's a dollar dollar a mile trip. I don't want that. Kick that shit out. Oh, that's a 50 cent a mile trip. Kick that shit out. Oh, shit. Here's a $3.70 a mile trip. I'll take that. It's close enough. Take that. And, was, and all of a sudden, as you're driving, you realize you grab another trip. That happens to be a real short trip, $6 a mile, really short trips. So you got a $6 mile trip and a $3.70 a mile trip. You average those two together, you're over $4 a mile. So guess what? You're eating into that 25,000 mile thing you want to deal with. You only want to make $100,000. So you're like, hey, dude, I just need 25,000 miles of this. Some days you might not find it. It's cool. Take that day off. Because one day you're going to fuck around and have a really good day. And you're going to bang out, you know, oh shit, man, I got, you know, I made $800 a day. It was an event. It was a concert. Something crazy happened. I made 800 bucks. So that killed the, the dollars you were supposed to make that day. So you're good. You're good. And just keep doing it all the time, man. So that's right, Dayton. I remember when I was averaging 75% take on both apps. Yeah, exactly. And so if you're underappreciated, Dad's an appreciated Jeff. <laughs> well, let's be real. Jay Larry Cheek, my brother, my brother. FYI, I give the driver a great tip. You know why? Why, Erica? Why do you give them a great tip? Because you know a driver who cusses people the fuck out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's like, I'm only giving you a tip so Jeff doesn't cuss me out when you get on this channel. Man, this motherfucker, I picked this lady up in, in goddamn Las Vegas from the airport. Her name was Erica. Man, the bitch didn't even give me a fucking tip. See, that's why you give me, because you know. I was like, wait a minute. This is Erica M. Show me that picture on that app. You fucking blow that app up. Woo. I was like, that's Erica. I know her. Man, she didn't give me no motherfucking... <laughs> See? <laughs> and that's why you tip, because you know your picture's going to end up on my channel, Erica. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She said, great. Do you know why? Says, much cheaper than a DUI, and nobody gets hurt. Exactly. See, Erica, you get it. You get it. See, that's my homegirl right there. We've been friends for a long time, and that's one of those things. I tell people, you're paying for the consideration of who we are. When I tip somebody or when I give money, it's paying for the consideration of who they are. I don't look at the, the price of the service. Well, you know, I'm going to give you the price of the service. Like the other day, I went and ate somewhere. I left like a $14 tip. The shit wasn't worth the $14 tip, but I just wanted to come out with a nice round number. And I'm like, the closest round number I could come up with was like $14. So I, it was like 13 something and some change, almost $14 tip. But it was a nice round number. 
it ended up, I was like, see, there you go. And I know the person probably got this shit like, holy shit. I'm like, because we're paying for the, the mood, the environment, the energy. That's what we pay for. We don't got to go around being, well, you know, this ride was only $5. So why should I tip you more than $1? Man, you might want to tip a motherfucker a 20 spot. It's like, shit, you know what here, man? Fucking, it was a $5 ride. But you know what? The fact you took this little short ass fucking ride, and I know you probably wanted a good banging ride. You want something? You know, I'm going to make this a fucking banger. Here's 20, dog. Here you go. Oh, damn, straight up, straight up, man, because you didn't have to take this shit. You could let me stand about fucking Walgreens all day because nobody want to pick me up because it's a short ride, but you took it. Here, man, I appreciate that shit. It's energy. That's all it is, is passing energy back and forth, and a lot of people just don't got good energy. They just don't. The motherfuckers is born like that. Some people are just shitty, and this is how. that's why I don't like everybody, and it's cool not to not like everybody. I don't think anybody has to wake up every day going, today is the day that I like everybody. Not fucking happening. Not happening. A lot of people you ain't going to fucking like, but for the people you do like, they should appreciate it because you don't have to like them either, but you do. So everybody's, hey, you know what? I respect the fact and I appreciate the fact that you like me because I know you don't like everybody. <laughs> I'm still going to ask the pastor what they paid. Exactly. Exactly. Used to be you couldn't make less than $35 an hour if you tried. Steven, man, I remember them days back then, man. You be out there driving and just like, you be getting streaks, $18 streaks, and you double up on the $18 streak. So you're like, damn, I just doubled up. So you made $36 on that little streak because you got this one. Now you got another one attached to it. Each little ride you hit is like $9, $10, $15. You're like, damn. I mean, they was throwing money at us, throwing money at us. So <laughs> Eric said, everyone should be so lucky to ride with you and your positive vibes. <laughs> Eric, I love you. <laughs> You know, a lot of Eric, this is what's funny about riding with me a lot of times. Like people really ask me am I a real driver because I'd be driving. And say, are you a real driver? Or are we like on some kind of like camera show? I'm like, why you say that? Say, because most drivers don't act like you. I'm like, why? It's like, they're like, you're trying to get a reaction out of us. I'm like, I'm not trying to get no reaction out of y'all. We're just cruising. She said, are we on camera? I'm like, no. <laughs> they always fuck with me all the time in the car. They'd be like, OK. And like one girl, I met her last week. She's actually a model out here. So she was like, we were right. I picked her up over a meal and she ain't hit me. I cannot remember her name for my life, but I gave her my card. But she was like, I'm going to text you because I want to use your car in a modeling shoot. I like your car. I'm going to use it in a model shoot. I was like, OK, cool. That's what's up. So we just chatting in the car, whatever, riding. And I dropped her off like just south of Scottsdale. She's like, no, I'm going to text you and don't be a stranger, please. I want to use your car like in, a, in my modeling shoot. And we, she was standing outside of the car. We just chatting the whole time about just life, everything else in general, shit like that. She was like, oh, this is, do you mind if like during the model shoot, like if you want to be in the, the shoot with me? I was like, no, I, was like, I probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> she was funny. She was funny. She, that girl's way too gorgeous. I'd fuck her pictures up. Like, no, nah, I'll fuck your pictures up, lady. You don't want to do it. You have a calendar like burning in the fucking trash, lady. You don't want to do that. Like, shit. Hey, Jeff's taxi cab's confession. Yeah, exactly. Man. Say, hey, streaks on lift was bullshit. That third ride to complete the streak was... <laughs> <laughs> they told her you stupid it'd be 38 miles for 21 dollars you know it you know it hey but i i told motherfuckers how to save your streak i harriet tubman motherfuckers because they used to do me like that all the time they would they would just straggle straggle on that third ride not give you that third ride for nothing and i knew i said they're taking forever because they're looking through the system for the most fucked up ride they could find because i guarantee there's somebody in my area that needs a ride but they're not giving me that ride they're not giving it to me sure enough 38 miles, fucking $21. It'd be, I'm like, are you fucking, I knew it. So Harriet Tubman comes into play when that shit happens. And they was like, how in the hell is this motherfucker still riding around with this streak on? We done try to fuck him over like three times and he still got the streak going. It was like, cause I told you motherfuckers, y'all playing with the wrong one. <laughs> so they stopped doing streaks. We figured out how to fucking save them. They was like, damn it. Cause that was their whole, they, they whole trick. Look, watch that. She wanted to create content with you. I don't know, watch man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she was cool as hell. Hopefully she gives me a call because I swear she was funny as a motherfucker. And I, I really want to see her like do some because she's not a photographer and everything like that. So they want to, you know, do it. She said, oh, I love the color of your car. This is like crazy. So we was like just talking about it. I, said, I want to do a photo shoot with your car. I'm like, all right, man, man, we'll do something. But no, but no, Daytona. And I was saying about those lift streaks. They, they used to use those streaks as bait, carrot in the stick. So they used to carrot and stick us with these with these streaks all the damn time. Now that they can't carry it and stick with us because we figured out a Harriet Tubman method to not be, they don't know how to use streaks no more. Streaks was a weapon. It was a weapon against drivers who were desperate at the very end to go, 
Oh man, I gotta finish this streak. Oh shit, I gotta finish this streak. Man, I gotta take this ride. And they would charge somebody 60, 70, 80 dollars for that long ass ride and give you 21 dollars. And they'd make 50, 60 dollars on that last ride. So the streak that you made money on it, they 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 could pay the streak. Your last ride was your streak. You made the money back, or they made the money back on that streak with that very last ride. Because every ride you was on was like a short ride, you know, six miles, nine dollars. Okay. I'll do that. Then the next ride, seven miles, nine dollars. Okay, that was cool. Last ride, 38 miles, 21 dollars. You'd be like, oh, you're serious. Are you? And that's how they make their money back for the whole streak. <laughs> they would get you every time with that shit. What up, Robin? What's good? What's good, lady? I see you in the building. What's up? What's up? Like she's out in West Arizona doing her thing. Say streaks was what groomed people in the pigeons. Some got woke and didn't. Yeah, exactly. Pigeons, they the streaks was they would do it no matter what. And I think Lyft was hip to that shit because, like you said, it was green. It was grooming people into the pigeons. Just take whatever we throw at you because if you don't take whatever we throw at you, you're gonna lose this money you've been building. It was pigeon money. That's all it was. Was fucking pigeon money. They were slowly getting people to say, hey, you know what? If I don't take this nature hike or I don't take this crap ride right here for dirt cheap, I'm going to lose this $14 or $18, whatever. And that last ride would always pay for everything you just did. Because if you're like, oh, man, I'm going to get an extra $6 on this ride, extra 6 on this ride, extra 6 on this ride, it's $18. But the last ride you took would pay them $50 extra. So even if they took 18 out of the 50, they'd still be sitting on $32 profit for all the shit they did. So that's 32 profit on that. Plus they made profit on the first two anyways. So even if they made $3, $3, that's your 32 and three and three. I mean, you sitting at $38, almost $40 they just made from all these rides you did. They made $40 off of you for three rides. They made 40 bucks off of you. And you just made seven, nine, 15. So you're sitting at what? 31. And after that 31, you get the 18 add to that. So you made what? 49. So you made 49. They made 40 plus whatever the hell's that. And you're walking around like, oh yeah, I'm get you're, you're barely over 50 fucking percent and you swearing you're killing. And it took you, especially with that last ride added in there, it took you about an hour and a half total to do all that shit. So you made $49 in an hour and a half. 49 in an hour and a half. Remember, Nick just made 160 in an hour and a half. No streaks involved. Streaks were pigeon food. That's all it was. It was it was to trap you into doing shit to keep you limited when you can do 160 with no streak involved versus doing 49 in an hour and a half. So they trap you. And just like I said, you're around about 30 something dollars an hour, because if it takes you 49 for an hour and a half, that's that's 90 minutes. You're running 90 minutes to make $49, almost 50 bucks. That means you're only making like 30 something dollars an hour. And that's how they get you trapped into that shit. So I was like, man, uh-oh, got a new puppy today, named her Daisy. She'll be the 301. <laughs> we got the puppy clan around here. Yeah, exactly. So what kind of pup is it? What kind of pup is it? Daisy, she's probably a retriever or something like that. Named Daisy, she's probably a retriever, huh? What is she? Let's, let's hear what she is. She's a retriever. She'd probably say, oh, she's a St. Bernard. <laughs> she's going to grow to be 250 pounds. It's like, you don't have a 250-pound dog named Daisy. <laughs> you come to the house, yeah, let's walk Daisy. Okay, cool, let's walk Daisy. Daisy come around the corner, roll, roll, roll. Like, what the fuck? That's not Daisy, that big-ass dog. It's like, who the hell names a 250-pound dog Daisy? Well, she was a puppy when I got her. <laughs> you got to name a dog. That, that ends up like growing into their name. My dog Dash didn't grow into his name. I, I named him Dash because he had like a little white Dash and his little pit bull. I named him Dash. This is the slowest fucking dog I've ever had in my life. He is the slowest pit bull. He, we go to the dog park all the time. He is always in last place. He always just gallops like a horse. He don't run. He is not a dasher. This motherfucker, I named his ass Dash and this motherfucker does not run. He is the exact opposite of his fucking name. I ain't never had a dog like that. <laughs> is it Jeff said you ever had a four bird come out to meet you? Yeah, exactly, man. Like, rah, rah, come run out the house and shit, jump on your four footer, come out to meet you on a second. 
<laughs> Just got here, so I don't know if you mentioned it, but Uber and Lyft were threatening to leave Minneapolis if a bill that wouldn't increase driver pay gets approved. Darn it. Bullshit. You serious? Bullshit. They gonna leave me in that man. You lying? No, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, we talking about it. <laughs> and we are. I went off on those motherfuckers, man. But let them. And I tell every. That's why every driver in Minneapolis, y'all need to find any driver in Minneapolis. Find they motherfucking ass. Find them. Send them to this fucking channel and be like, y'all need to listen to this dude. Get your motherfucking business cards made. All y'all in Minneapolis need to be on Vista Print today. Be prepared for these motherfuckers. Get on Vista Print today. Go to Office Max, motherfucking Kinko's, goddamn, you know, store supply plate. Go wherever you gotta go. Get a printer at your house and use some Walmart shit. Make some cards just with your phone number and say, I do rides. That's it. And be prepared for these motherfuckers. The last thing you wanna do is be reactive, be proactive. Don't be reactive. Fuck them. Get your shit all set up. Because when riders need rides, yeah, the Uber and Lyft app don't work for some reason. Just like when Facebook didn't work yesterday. Instagram and shit didn't work yesterday. You know, they might turn on Uber and Lyft. Hey, it don't work in Minneapolis. What's wrong? Uber and Lyft don't work, man. What the fuck? Uber and Lyft don't work. Be ready. Be like, you know what? I don't need Uber and Lyft to fucking work. I got like six different driver's cards in my purse right now. Fuck Uber and Lyft. Hey, James. Hey, man, my Uber, Lyft don't, my Uber app don't work. Are you near downtown right now? Yeah, I'm downtown. Bet. Hey, come pick me up, man. I'm just trying to go home. Hey, I got you. Don't worry about it. So if all of these fucking companies leave and all of these drivers in Minneapolis start handing out business cards, you are now going to get phone calls like fucking crazy. Don't let these people threaten you. Fuck them. Let them leave. Get your cards out there and every put motherfucking posters up at bus stops. Do I do cash rides. Put that motherfucker up at a bus stop. Go to all goddamn laundromats. Cash rides, laundry. I do. I pick up people need and do laundry. Do put that shit at at all like rental car places. Do whatever you can do to get your information out there. Because when these apps don't work, a motherfucker gonna raise their head up out of that phone and see your shit right on the bus stop. I do cash rides. Oh shit, this dude do cash rides. Yeah, because right now these motherfuckers, everybody looking at their phone right now, because they think they can find rides in that phone right now. Let Uber and Lyft leave. Let them leave. Let motherfuckers raise their heads up out of that phone. Guess what? They're going to see who's all doing right. They got business cards in their hand. Oh, man, dude gave me a car from the club. Motherfucker get on Facebook. Hey, does anybody know any Uber drivers out here in, in the Minneapolis area? Man, you probably have a whole motherfucking a Facebook feed of, of just cards taking pictures of, hey, this is the driver I use. This is the driver I use. This is the driver I use. My driver cool as a motherfucker. My driver got an SUV. My driver got a sports car. My driver that, man, you're going to have all motherfucking, just that. I need a driver in Minneapolis. Guaranteed cards all and guess what uber left gonna say we just gave these motherfuckers the war zone we gave them the battle zone yeah we own that motherfucker now everybody on facebook everybody on instagram put your motherfucking business card up there call me for cash rides hit me up if you need a ride let these apps leave fuck them bet people still get around i bet they still get around because if they really want to ride make that shit happen and you think a lot of these apps going to be, well, well, we we want to leave, but we want to make sure that we get every driver out there who's doing cash rides. We want to get them charged. I hope the police be like, no, you ain't going to fucking leave this place. Leave all these people high and dry and then try to have us arrest our own fucking people, you raggedy ass corporations. We ain't going to play that game with y'all. We ain't going to do that to our people in Minnesota. We ain't going to arrest our people because you raggedy motherfuckers want to sit up and put everybody in the hot seat because y'all not getting y'all way. Pay these fucking people or get out of here. That's your choice. And if you don't want to be here, get the fuck on. Let these people advertise, market by themselves. Let them get money, feed their families. Motherfucker want to take him to work, go to work. You should give him a, a ticket because he's not, I don't get, I ain't giving him shit. That's his next door neighbor. How do you know? How do I not know, motherfucker? It could be. I'm not asking. This is your neighbor. Go. That, that could be his brother. Motherfucker, how do I not know? I don't give a fuck. That's his brother now. That's his sister. I don't give a fuck. That could be his kid. Well, he's older than him. I don't give a fuck. He probably adopted him. I don't give a shit. We ain't arresting our own people. Take, go make money. Go drive people around. Get shit going. Let these corporations know we done playing this game with these motherfuckers. We done with them. They think they're going to run our society with technology. Fuck them. This is not a technocracy. We still a diplomacy. We still going to go over here and say, hey, this is what we think our country should be run like. And if you don't want to run our country like that, fuck it. We run it. Now we run it. That's why they don't want to let motherfuckers run for office. You ain't got to let them run for office. We going to run this country. How are we going to do it any fucking ways, whether he wins or not? I guarantee he wins, though. But if he don't, we still going to do what the fuck we going to do to make this money, to live this life we going to live. We're done letting government run us the fuck over. We done letting corporations run us the fuck over. 
The day you stand up is the day you do this shit. What happened to Budweiser? Yeah, we're done. What happened to fucking Budweiser? You saw those motherfuckers try some. What's happening to Doritos right now? Doritos tried the same shit just now. What happened to Doritos in the past two or two or three days? Motherfuckers about to cancel Doritos now because they pulled some funny shit. And the person who put those motherfuckers in that Doritos commercial, that person about to get fired. And they whole marketing team finna get fired because they pulled the same shit Budweiser pulled. We don't play that shit. This is the way people stand up. You fuck with us? Oh, we're going we gonna to affect your bottom line. We're going to affect your bottom line. Tries. Tries if you want to. And there's a lot of people out there, they don't understand, man. They, they're so indoctrinated to think that just because somebody got a name senator or a name Republican or a name, you know, House of Rep or in front of their fucking name. These are fucking people we hired to represent us. We didn't hire them to run us. We hired them to run that shit. Like we say, this is what we want done. Can you do it? Oh, I could do it. Hire me for the job. Elect me. Vote me in for the job. Then we vote these motherfuckers in. Oh, guess what? I'm not going to do the job. Actually, I'm going to run your ass. Actually, you're not because we're going to run your ass out of town. We're going to recall this motherfucker in a heartbeat. And that's how we do it. Jeff, I need some business cards. I'm out. Need some t-shirts too. Check email from me and Daisy. The Daisy, <laughs> I'm going to have to check that email, Robin. Daisy's going to be like. <laughs> so I'm telling you, Jeff, we need to get a, you a sponsor with Vistaprint, man. Me and Vistaprint be going, we go way back, motherfucker. I'm old school. Shit. I'm, I'm Vistaprint, AOL.com level. <laughs> Motherfucker.com. Yeah, exactly, man. And and I'm hey Tula, you know how I am. I'm I'm just a, a true believer in the power of country. We got too many motherfuckers that tucked their motherfucking tail, sat their ass down, and started eating fucking bonbons and goddamn Brussels sprouts. Like we out in the fucking streets really doing shit. And this country's gotta fight. We gotta fight for what we believe in on this fucking soil. We let motherfuckers just walk all over us and shit like that because everybody's so scared and timid. I don't wanna. Oh, fuck that. We need to stand up. This country was founded on people standing up. This country was not founded on people laying down. It wasn't. And we got a lot of motherfuckers right now laying down. Thinking, well, we got to let them. We got to let. No, no, that's not how we did this. This is not how this country got so far. That's not how this country became a world leader in all we do. We didn't become a leader by laying down. We didn't sleep our way to the fucking top, motherfucker. We didn't lay down to get this far. We fought to get this fucking far. So when people stop fighting and thinking, oh, we just got to like lay down and let them do what they do. And, and then once they do what they do, they'll be nice and they'll give us and giving you shit. They take. When you lay, they take. You got to stand the fuck up at some point, develop a spine, let these motherfuckers know it's more of us than it is of you. Way more of us than it is of you. We got mayors in cities right now being indicted by the FBI, investigated shit like that. We got DAs being invested. You know why? Because people are tired of the fucking bullshit. Just because you got a title in front of your name or behind your name don't give you a right to do this shit how you want to. We'll come for you. We will fucking come for you. That whole Tiffany fucking lady down in Dalton or whatever the fuck that mayor in Dalton. Oh, she's a bitch. She know it too. I think the bitch look like Lil Wayne. I see her. Every time I look at her motherfucking head, I think she's like Lil Wayne. She irritates the fuck out of me. Because of how she did them people in that city. That shit wasn't cool how she did them people. She came in, little young ass fucking kid, thinking she was doing the shit on. I'm the first black mayor, youngest mayor, man. And then try to run shit. She got all these dudes behind her telling all these people what, oh, you got to pay these, you got to do it. Trying to run businesses that have been there way before her ass was probably even fucking born. Trying to strong arm businesses. I don't like government like that. I don't like government like that. I've never, if I lived in that fucking city, I ought to knock that bitch out and every fucking bodyguard she got. I guarantee, because I know me. I know me. Let you shut my shit down. Send some people to my house. Fuck that. Try me. And I'm one of them people, man. If I'm going to go down, fuck it. I'm going down. You taking me down anyways. So if I'm going down and you taking me down, I'm fucking going down swinging. I'm not going down with my fucking tail tucked. Fuck that. I'm going down swinging. You taking me down anyways. So I might as well swing. I can't do no more right. I can't do no more wrong. You might as well swing. You going down anyways. So let motherfuckers try to take you down. Go down swinging. Just like with Uber and Lyft. They going to go take us broke anyways. So I'm going, I'm cash riding. Duh. Oh, they going to be mad at you for doing cash rides. I don't give a fuck. They not mad at me for going broke. So I'm going down swinging. I'm not going to go broke with these motherfuckers. All these people, like I said, even with Duato, all these people did everything the right way and they still ended up broke. They all did shit the right way, the app way, the terms of service way, and they still went broke. Go down swinging. Fuck these people. If you ain't going to go get your money, somebody else is going to get it. They're going to take it from you. These people don't care about you, man. <laughs> Young boy said she do look like Wheezy. Man, I, I sat there. I looked at her. When I saw her picture one, I was like, 
She looked like Lil Wayne's sister or some fucking shit. She looked just like fucking Lil Wayne. I was like, how the fuck? <laughs> yeah, she did the Nino Brown shit, man. Fucking, I'm like, this lady, it's, it's the circle around her, man. The circle around the, all them people, man. Everybody around her, all of them need to be indicted. All of them. It ain't just her by herself. All of them. So, but that's, like I said, we ain't gotta, we ain't gotta just say that shit. It's really happening. Because when she goes down, everybody involved with that shit's going down. All of them. So I ain't got, we ain't got shit to worry about. It's just a matter of time. That's all. The proof is out there. The city's going to get their fucking city back. The All the little counties and shit she's trying to run and all this shit, they all going to get their city back. So it's like, it's just a matter of time before she's sitting in jail, crying, whining about how, you know, all these people did her dirty and how everybody put her up. She going to drag everybody down with her because she just seems like one of those snaky ass fucking people. She going to drag everybody down with her. Every guy that claimed to be a bodyguard of hers is getting $13,000 working 300 fucking hours in a pay period. Who the fuck works $300 in a pay period for $13,000? That's the most raggediest shit I ever heard, man. And I'm sitting there like, they taking money from old retired people and dope. These people ain't rich in Dalton. These ain't Beverly Hill fucking people. These motherfuckers ain't in a goddamn in Martha's Vineyard. This is Dalton. These people don't got money like that. And this is how you do them fucking people? Come on, man. I hope I hope they put the cell. They built the cell around your motherfucking ass. I hope you never get out of jail. I hope you and everybody who you fuck with never get out of jail. That, and that's real because you did people fucking dirty. You deserve to be done dirtier. Fuck that. Old people retire thinking they got their life going on and shit like that. They, they're like, oh, man, I'm good. And now they stressing. She going to take my house. I'm going to go to jail. Motherfucker, 65 years old, worried about going to jail because some shit some mayor fucking did. I'm like. You ain't do no crime, though. This lady made up a crime. Can't run a fucking business because this lady, oh, if you don't pay for my this and that, we're going to shut your business down. And I'm like, who is this fucking lady anyways? Who does she think she is? And, and, and that's not just not, you know, anybody in Dalton, like calling them weak people or nothing like that. But I'm sorry. This is real fucking life. This is real life. Motherfuckers like that, she wouldn't try that shit anywhere else except in the town that small. This is real life. And I'm not trying to be mean about no shit and nothing like that, but it's motherfucking judges. They be finding judges in the Hudson River. I mean, there's judges in the Hudson River. Judges. This is real fucking life. You fuck with some people, game over. The shit she was pulling, that wouldn't work everywhere. It just wouldn't. And that's not me making up shit. You can Google that shit, YouTube that shit, do whatever you want to do. I'm not making that up. That's real. And as sad as it is, it's still real. They got judges and prosecutors there. Cars shot up right in parking lots. Killed in their Mercedes. One lady got killed right in their Mercedes. Shit happens for real. I don't make this shit up. So the shit that happened for her to be able to get along, get away with this shit, that's a small town. These people are weak. These people ain't, they ain't strong enough to fucking stand up to no shit like this. They see a, a little lady jumping out of a fucking thing and they see these big old black dudes walking around this and that. They strong arm in this whole fucking town like they Nino Brown for real and shit like that. They don't do that in no other city. She wouldn't do that shit in no other city. Don't's the only place she can get away with that shit from. So I'm glad everybody is standing up and handling this shit like they should. And I hope they build the jail around her motherfucking ass. Because any other city, like, it wouldn't work like that. It would. She would need that protection. She would need, and they would need protection on top of the protection they was providing her ass with in a real fucking city. Dalton, them people ain't like that. They're more mellow. That's the Midwest. They're more kicked back. They they used to they, they just want to barbecue. They just want to work on a couple of cars and shit, put a transmission in and shit. That's all they want to do. And this lady comes in doing this shit to these people. Now, I don't even talk about that shit on my channel for real because that shit pisses me off. Y'all know how I am about people, man. That shit pisses me off. And it's like I'm not one of them people that's going to sit up there and just watch somebody do that to somebody. And like I vocalize my opinion on other channels that talk about that. I don't talk about that shit on my channel, though. I just don't. Because I know me. I, this motherfucking channel will go away from right here real fucking quick. And I'll be going off on a bunch of motherfuckers. I keep my cool. <laughs> See, how do we cure the Tiffany's? I don't know, shrug. <laughs> it's like, exactly. Send the email to Jeff so everyone can see it. Uh-oh, what happened? What happened? They don't. Yeah, that New Jack City reference. Man, Zach, that shit was crazy, man. That was crazy. She came walking in trying to look like straight up Nino Brown. I'm like, they have to be actors. These people have to be actors. They've got to be like out of their fucking mind to do that. You've got to be. I'm like, who? This is real life. 
This is not a fucking game. This is real life. Like there's a reality out there that exists. And you walk in that motherfucker every day you walk out that door. And this is how you do these people. You walk in playing Rihanna, bitch, better have my money, wearing a fucking Nino Brown suit and all this shit. I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are? Because we're in a real fucking motherfucker. Tupac got shot up in Vegas with Suge Knight. Suge Knight's the worst motherfucker on the West Coast. Suge Knight is the worst motherfucker on the West Coast. Not just one little Dalton city. Suge Knight ran the whole fucking West Coast and they shot his motherfucking car up. You know what they would do to you? You ain't no fucking body. <laughs> it's like, shit, they fucked with Suge. Who are you? You little fake wig wearing motherfucker. Who are you? You ain't nobody to do them people like that. You not nobody like that. So trust me, this is a real world out here. It's a real world. And where are you at? You made that your world. You did them people fucking dirty. You did them people wrong. But that's the only place you will ever do anybody wrong. Because I guarantee anybody in any other city ever see your motherfucking face. If you don't go to jail, I feel sorry for you. I'm just saying I feel sorry for you because a lot of people feel for them people. Because them people look like our grandparents, our aunts, our uncles, look like our sons. They look like our moms and shit. Them people look just like us. And your motherfucking ass, you ain't allowed nowhere. Not with the way you did them people. You ain't allowed nowhere. Like I said, these motherfuckers got popped. They got shook. Who are you? Nobody. Trust me. You will never be nobody. Yeah, exactly, man. So they brain damage, man. For real. For real. They say, you the real Jeff or is it Jeff? <laughs> you funny shit. They, if I was talking about the email that they, they sent me trying to scare me not to do cash rides. Oh, psh, please. These motherfuckers. I'll send an email back saying, can y'all stop stealing my fucking tips? Can we agree on that? Say, if I get a tip, on every one of my rides that's supposed to be the tip that I get, I will promise to stop doing cash rides because I know I do some really good fucking rides. And for me to get a 10 cent fucking tip, a $1 tip, shit like that, nah, y'all stealing my money. Y'all stealing my money on that shit. So we, we need to make an agreement. Otherwise, I'm going to keep going out and get my fucking money. Pay me right or else I'm out. See, Jeff, I can't get that guy, Kevin Mango's voice out of my head. The dude with the shave head, the high-pitched voice from the Pedro Zoom. <laughs> Oh, Kevin, yeah, that's my guy, man. He was fucking killing me. That mm -hmm. was like, yeah, those motherfuckers know me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, let me show you something. <laughs> I said, motherfucker, he was looking like that. That was Kevin. I can't believe he told me that. Let me show you something. <laughs> That motherfucker, Fire Marshal Kev, that dude, man, he was fucking killing me, though. That Kev, he was the dog. He was the dog on that live stream. We was all rolling. He was like, yeah, I can't believe they didn't pay me my tip. Let me show you that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his real voice. I, at first, when he first started, I thought he was fucking with us. Like, dude, this is funny. He was like, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. And I was like. Is he fucking with us for real? Like then after a while, I was like, oh shit, this dude's that. And I mean, after that, we all were rolling laughing. I was like, this dude should just talk the rest of the fucking live stream. He had us fucking rolling. And that's the thing. I think somebody like him, honestly, he could have his own fucking YouTube channel, his own TikTok. The dude could be a fucking millionaire. He sounds and looks just like Fire Marshal Bill. The dude should be a, what the fuck is he doing on our live streams? The dude has a natural ability to make people fucking laugh just by being himself. He should be a fucking millionaire. And he's sitting on some YouTubers fucking live stream. Fuck me and Pedro. We ain't nobody. This motherfucker can have his own fucking shit. He could be on YouTube and TikTok. Call it Kevin's World. Man, call it Fire Marshal Kevin and wear a fucking fire hat. Man, I'm telling you right now, dude could be a fucking. And look at the dude that looked like Peter Griffin on The Family Guy. The dude that looked like Peter Griffin on The Family Guy is like, Fucking, he got his all his own channel, all his own shit. Kevin, I'm telling you, man, he needs a manager. The motherfucker need a manager. Look at the dude Beetlejuice, the one dude Beetlejuice that looked funny as hell. The little black dude named Beetlejuice. He became a fucking millionaire out of the shit he was doing. Because some people are just naturally funny. They were born a certain way and they look like characters, but they're not characters. These motherfuckers are real. And it's like, and they're funny. The, the way they say shit, the way they look when they say shit, it's fucking funny. So I'm sitting there like, this dude could just have the rest of the live stream and just let us laugh. But it's almost like pointless. He needs his own shit so he can run his own live streams and his own stuff. People can make memes out of this dude. They can fucking have his shit. Man, 
And I'm sitting there like, this dude should be a fucking millionaire. What is he doing sitting on this fucking podcast, man? He don't got a good manager. Dude, you do not have a good manager, Kev. If you need a manager, holla at time to wake up. <laughs> time to wake up. Give me a 5% fee. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> no, but for real though, man, Kevin, he could, I'm guaranteeing if Kevin got his own TikTok or got his own YouTube, he wouldn't have to fuck with none of us no more. Why is he doing delivery? The dude, he's like, <laughs> what do you say? Naturally funny looking. They told him real shit though, real shit. Why is he even doing delivery? He he looks like a character. He sounds like Fire Marshal Bill. This dude is a millionaire sitting in front of our fucking faces right now, and he don't even know he's a millionaire. And I'm like, if somebody don't fucking get this dude off these goddamn live streams, <laughs> he is he's a fucking riot, man. And imagine he would have over a million followers in his first year i guarantee because he is just that funny he sounds funny he looks funny the shit he says is funny and he's not even trying it's just his life he is just naturally fucking funny and i'm like we're just laughing at him but this dude he could be doing so much more with his life right now i i don't know man maybe it's just the entrepreneur in me the entrepreneur in me look at somebody like him and i'm like dude you're you're a legend and you don't even realize you're a fucking legend. Like his hair was all wild and shit. It, it looked like he was Fire Marshal Bill. He got caught in a fucking fire. Motherfucker looked just like Fire Marshal Bill. And I'm sitting there like, dude, you're a fucking legend. You're a legend. He's like, Dems Dallas in the building. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Donald Wake up said, You're right. He, he was like, he was like, Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> he kept saying that, yeah, get him, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, hey, let me tell you something. <laughs> I put a little gasoline on a little fire. I light it like this and completely. <laughs> That's fucking Kevin all day. <laughs> and I was like, man, this motherfucking Kev could be. A, and he he could just like have his own shit. He, and there would be people asking to get on his shit. People are like, hey, Kev, can I get on your live stream with you, man? Hey, Kev. Because he is like, he he would be the draw. He would just be his own attraction. He don't need no fucking body around, man. And it's like, and it's rare that you run into somebody like that in life. I I thought he was joking. I'm dead serious, man, because I've never seen a dude before. I get on Pedro shit every once in a while. But when Kev was there, I saw him in the lower corner. And I was like, okay. It's like, this dude, he must, you know, he probably going to get on there. You know, probably sound like one of us. Be like, yeah, man, I was out driving yesterday and I can't believe that these motherfuckers didn't give me my tip. I thought it was going to sound like that. This motherfucker got on. He was like, yeah, Pedro, get him. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> we fell out laughing. He was like, and all of a sudden, I told him that I wasn't going to drive ever again. Their cars was just the worst the hamburger <laughs> and i was like this dude really sounds like that and then i just busted out i said man you know you remind me of that was like, let me show you something <laughs> <laughs> i was like he really sounds like that i'm like why are we not like trying to get this dude his own shit help this dude out somebody help this dude out. set him up set him the fuck up get him a, a camera laptop little studio area man He's out there, man. He's some dude named Kevin. Kevin Mangold. Yeah, he's out there, man. He said, Kevin, like, fuck all you pigeon ass motherfuckers. <laughs> That's exactly what he be sounding like, too, man. He's like, yeah, Pedro. <laughs> that motherfucker love to say Pedro. But guess what, Pedro? Guess what? <laughs> you don't even know the half, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make me a fucking shirt with Kevin's face on his hands. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> man, fucking Kev. Tell you, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, that motherfucker boy, his ass. Somebody need to fucking get him. Somebody has to get him his own shit because with with the way he is. I'm telling you, the world, the world would appreciate it. The world would appreciate Imagine waking up and fucking going through some of Kevin's videos. You would start your fucking day off the work dying, laughing. You'd get to work like, dude, you got to look at Kevin's latest video. Check this shit out. 
<laughs> it's like, man, it is like, hey, I saw Kev on that shit, man. That shit was funny as hell. No, Kevin ain't a little kid, man. Kevin ain't, he ain't a little kid. He's a grown ass man. The motherfucker do delivery and shit like that. <laughs> it's like, he was one of them dudes, man. He says, how are you keeping it? Because our, man, we laughed hard that night. We laughed hard that night. I was in fucking tears. Everybody on the panel was just dying. We were fucking crying like <laughs> He was nuts. He was, <laughs> he says, man, I was watching your face. Yeah, that shit was funny as hell. I was, <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> and every time I was saying, let me show you something. <laughs> Because that's what he said. And he wouldn't even respond to it. He knew what we were doing, probably, but he wouldn't respond to it. And I'm sitting there like this dude, man. He is a, I'm telling you, we're witnessing some dude who's like, you know, an internet sensation that don't even realize he's an internet sensation. I could see this motherfucker on like Jimmy Kimmel. They'd be like, now, Kevin, you used to be a driver. You were driving DoorDash. You're on Pedro's channel. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> That's all he would fucking say. It's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, Pedro. Yeah, that, that's whose channel you were on. And all of a sudden, you know, we got a few people talking about you. So we wanted to bring you on the channel. So, you know, how'd you get started with this comedy act? Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, we get that part. Pedro, that's how you started. All right. <laughs> that dude, man. <laughs> I said, I don't see any Kevin. I can't remember what day it was, man. <laughs> Time to wake up. He did say that. He did say that. He says, Pedro, all these drivers go around taking fucking shit on my ride. Fuck up. <laughs> Let them pick it. Keep taking a shit ride. <laughs> we cherry pick our way to victory. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what he was saying. He was like, fuck up. It was like, yeah, Kevin, yeah. I was like, egging them all, like, yeah, 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 fuck them. <laughs> we all need them. <laughs> he said, just posted the clip. He <laughs> said, I had to pull over, bro. <laughs> but that's what he was saying. <laughs> I totally forgot about that part. He was like, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> we all need them. They taking a shit ride. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they all crash their cars. Yeah. <laughs> he was fucking people up. Man, Kev, I'm telling you, dude, he's the next millionaire fucking driver. He's going to leave us the fuck alone. He's going to be like, you guys are making fun of me. <laughs> no, he wasn't, Kev. No, he. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you fuck him. <laughs> 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 that's just stupid man man that shit is nuts he said <clears throat> so, so you know if jeff is on the ground he's gonna have bang on his head <laughs> that shit's stupid man that shit is stupid man i forgot about Kev. i totally forgot i'm trying to wake up it's fucked up for bringing that shit up <laughs> i forgot all about Kev, man <laughs> wait till y'all see him though wait till y'all see Kev. jeez but we need to get it. We need to say, let's pay the twenty five hundred deductible, Pedro. <laughs> Let him pay the twenty five hundred deductible, Pedro. Yeah, that's what they deserve. Fuck them. <laughs> he was saying that shit. We were dying laughing, <laughs> dude. Well, I gotta, I gotta do stream yard. When I get stream yard, we gotta find Kev. We gotta bring Kev on. But we got to see I'm on YouTube right now. I'm not on StreamYard. I got to do the YouTube. But what I got to do is we got to get Kev somehow. Somebody has to help him, man. Somebody's got to get this dude some TikTok shit going. Get him a channel going. He's I'm going to tell you right now, this man could take care of himself and a lot of families involved in business. He is. I think he's that funny. I really think. And it's like he doesn't have to try. He's just naturally like that. He doesn't. And so when you got somebody who's naturally like that. And and he's just he's just one of those anomalies. You run into that shit in life. Some people have to go work on material. Oh, I got to go work on my com comedy material. He, everything he says is gonna be fucking funny because he's just got that look. He's and I mean you could he could be dead fucking serious and you would be crying laughing because it's like he's one of them people, man. He's just that he's that anomaly. And I think you know 
a lot of people may not recognize that about him. But when I it's just us talking about him you know, on that live stream, I'm sitting there thinking, is this dude got his own TikTok or his own fucking channel or something? What, like who I know I discovered this fucking dude It's like, man, this dude is funny as shit and he's dead serious. <laughs> I'm like, man, he needs to show us how he makes his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He'd be like, yeah, fuck him, Pedro. Let him pay the 2500 <laughs> They don't got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be fucking killing me, man. That's fucking Kev, though. And I'm going to tell y'all, motherfuckers, if we can find a way out how to get his shit up and running, like, we ain't even got to be in, We just got to point him in the right direction. We ain't got to be in this fucking way. to say, Kev, start your YouTube channel. Kev, start you a TikTok. Do this, do that. Post every day. Just give them good direction and say, don't worry about shit, Kev. Just do you. Just talk. Talk about the world. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. And next thing you know, this motherfucker's like, in a year from now, we find out Kev's on some talk show one day. <laughs> and it's like, like, wait a minute, that's the Kev we was talking about? Yeah, like, dude, this motherfucker rich. He got a fucking mansion in Malibu and shit now. Like, what? Yeah, that's Kev, man. Dude, he's... It, it could happen. It could If anybody, I think if it can happen to anybody, it could happen to somebody that fucking funny. Because like he's he's already like a character already. He's already like, he's like a built-in fucking character in the game. And nobody's discovering his fucking character. Let him just be himself. He don't have to fake it. He ain't got to fucking front for nobody. Just let him be himself. And people will come to shows to see this motherfucker. Just ask him questions in the crowd. Just like, just have a whole, a whole comedy routine just called Ask Kev. That's it. Just asking questions. Like, no material. Just ask Kev. Hey, Kev, what do you think about that $2,500 deductible? Yeah! Fuck him! <laughs> Everybody die laugh like a motherfucker. <laughs> fuck that $2,500! <laughs> I'd be like, see? Kev's a sellout. He sold out the whole fucking show. <laughs> it's not like when he said, we're coming after you. <laughs> you don't know. We're coming for you, Pedro. <laughs> He's going to have all shirts of Kevin's face on his shirt. We're coming after you. Next shirt. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> that dude doesn't need a script. It's already written. I'm telling you, man. Kev is fucking a riot. He is a riot. <laughs> That's all we got to do, man. If somebody just need to set him up right. The motherfucker, he, he'll be done doing delivery. He will never have to do another in his life. And I mean, I, he can secure himself just being himself. And I'm, I, it's no better way to put it, man. No better way to put it. Somebody just got to fucking find him and just say, and I know a lot of people are like, dude, y'all like laughing at him. I'm like, no, dude, he's he's enjoyment. He is like a circus act. This dude is like, it's like me. I got to try to be funny. Like I'll come online. I'll say some funny stories, talk about funny shit. That's my circus act. I'm in this fucking ring. This dude is center fucking ring circus. Me, I'm like side ring. We're like way over here. This dude is like center fucking ring with the lions in it. And this dude, is he's funny as shit naturally. Just naturally. Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Larry, man, I'm telling you, some of us brilliant motherfuckers need to move together. Hey, Larry, man. Dude, we could, we go on tour. Just go on Kev tour. Tour with Kev. That's you drive the tour bus. And as you're driving a tour bus, wake up, you have the cameras in the bus and all the fans is talking to him on the bus. So he's doing content on the bus as we drive around. Me, I don't know what the fuck I'll be doing. I'm just like laughing at you motherfuckers. I'll be on my live stream at home like, so hey, let me chime in with you motherfuckers. What are y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, Jeff, <laughs> we're doing better than you. <laughs> what are you doing, Jeffrey, in your bedroom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like shut up Kev don't fucking bother me <laughs> oh, man 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 that shit's funny as hell but I'm somebody's got to find him find find Kev and just ask him you know what ask say hey what do you want to really do man what do you want to do with your life Daisy rides shotgun Daisy's on the bus that's it Daisy's on the bus we're going to get T-shirts that says Daisy's on the bus. Think about who's Daisy? Big ass St. Bernard come running around the corner. Can <laughs> be on the bus who are like, Tiny, wake up. Those are more hot dogs.
<laughs> Those are more hot dogs. <laughs> I can't even say that shit. You are, so <laughs> you are fucking stupid. <laughs> Just throw the fucking hot dogs on the grill. Oh man, you stupid. You fucking stupid, man. You're a nut. <laughs> Time to wake up. Don't make no fucking sense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <My way. laughs> yeah. Oh man, you fucking killing me, dog. You killing me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you were fucking nuts, dog. You were the fucking hot dogs, man. You were the fucking hot dogs. <laughs> man, y'all are fucking stupid, dude. This this whole live stream done went off the fucking rails, man. We done went nuts again. This shit done went AWOL. We gotta find Kev. We gotta find Kev, man. Oh man, my throat is dry as a motherfucker, man. Hey, Etherman, man, thanks for coming, man. Thanks, man. thanks for rolling through. Hey, you came through at the right time. You came through at the right time. Hey, go out there and get that money, brother. Get that money, man. DB is in the building. DB and Matt. Time to wake up, man. I'm dead. I'm dead, man. My eyes are fucking burning now. My eyes are on fucking fire. Man, this is almost 11 o'clock at night. I'm over here, like, crying and shit, man. I got to give you something to eat. Y'all fucking killing me, man. Y'all are fucking killing me. Man, man, man. But yeah, that's our, that's gonna be our channel mission, man. Our channel mission is gonna be make Kev a millionaire. That's gonna be a content. We're gonna <laughs> get the green relish ready, Pedro. <laughs> now I'm reading all this shit in Kevin's fucking voice now. <laughs> get Kev. We got to That's our fucking shit. Make Kev a millionaire. That's our fucking next. Our next goal. Make Kev a millionaire. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man, y'all are nuts. Hey, Larry, man. These people are nuts, man. This is the best chance ever. Oh, life. So I'm going to go find Kevin. I'll be ready. So I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, thank you, Etherman. I appreciate the super chat, brother. Thank you, thank you. First live, first super on the live stream. Appreciate that super. Hey, man, Etherman. Ah, you know how we get down over here, man. I truly appreciate that, brother. You know it, man. We get on here, we have a great time. We try to laugh together and everything like that, man. I appreciate that. Real talk, real talk. Because I don't make a lot of money out in these streets, y'all. See, I'm like, psh, I ain't drove all week, man. I'm trying to do my own thing for a minute. These apps is killing me, so. I appreciate you guys helping me out, supporting the channel and all of that real talk. Our next big endeavor, our next big endeavor. We got to, I'm telling you, man, it's a way to do it. There's got to be a way to do it. Like Logan, Logan is like, uh, he's like a TikTok genius. All right. Good night, Etherman. Good night, brother. We're going to see you next time. So it's like, yeah, we got to get Logan. We got to get Logan involved in this shit, man. Cause he's like a TikTok fucking genius. If he can sit down with Kev, build him a channel and shit like that. Get Kev to put all of his information in so he can become like a TikTok star, whatever the fuck it takes, and just run with it. Run with it. Kev, like I said, we might not talk to fucking Kev for another fucking two, three months. This motherfucker probably get like a million subs instantly. Dude is fucking hilarious, man. Hilarious. Logan knows. Like I said, I got TikTok. I don't know how to work it, though. I got like 7,000 subs and all this shit. I don't know how to set it up to get paid for nothing. It's just like a, it's an account. And I'm doing stuff. But I don't know, like, it's never asked me for to be a partner. It's never asked. So I got to sit down with Logan and say, dude, what the fuck is wrong with my TikTok account? Like, why isn't it asking me the same shit like everybody else gets? Maybe I'm just, like, in the wrong genre. I don't fucking know. But he keeps saying, just keep posting, keep posting. You want to get into the TikTok algorithm. I don't understand how it works, though. So it's like, I try. I'll try to post some shit over there every once in a while. But it's just like, is to me, it's, it's too hard to understand. And once I figure out what tiktok like how people get paid on tiktok what they're looking for and i know I, it was something that they sent me one time that said uh do something to tiktok shop and i was and it said have five thousand subs five thousand followers it had a check mark because i had five thousand followers then it said be at least 18 years old had a check mark because i was at least 18 years old 
Then it says, follows community guidelines, and it was a dash. <laughs> I was like, the fuck does that mean? I don't follow community guidelines? I don't know what the community guidelines are. It was just a dash right there. Like, they're not giving me a green check on following community guidelines. I'm like, what the fuck are the guidelines? As much shit as I've seen on the internet, what are the guidelines? Why am I not following? Out of all the shit that I do on TikTok, what do I not do that follows guidelines? There's some raunchy shit on this motherfucker, but I don't follow guidelines? I'm like, okay. So I don't even fuck with TikTok. They don't they don't give me all the check marks and shit. It was like, whatever, I'm done, man. I don't Logan's gotta look over that shit. I'm I'm over it already. But it, it like I said, it's a channel sitting there and it's trying to build, but I'm like, eh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I said, hey Jeff, take the wheel for me. I gotta go fresh and put my makeup on for this next book sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> man, that shit's fucking hilarious. That shit's fucking shit. Man, Kev, we gonna fucking make Kev a millionaire. That's gonna be our fucking goal for 2024. Make Kev a millionaire. Fuck the dumb shit. If he ain't gonna thank anybody for nothing, he's gonna say, hey, the 300 did some shit for you, Kev. The 300 made you a fucking millionaire. We don't give a fuck what you do with the money. The 300 is gonna say, we would like to just take credit for making sure you motherfuckers at Uber and Lyft didn't get all of us. You motherfuckers at DoorDash didn't get all of us. One of us made it out. <laughs> Say, we're going to make it off this plantation, motherfucker. One at a time, we're going to figure some shit out. And we're going to get the fuck up out of here. And they're going to say, oh, shit. And, and once Kev do his own fucking thing, he'd be like, hey, you know what? I need a team of people to hire. Shit. 300 got a lot of motherfuckers that are specialists in something. Like, hell, man. Kev be like, you know what? I need a booking manager. I need this. I need that. Hey, fucking 300 got a lot of motherfuckers that's contract people people in business whatever he can hire people on page who gives a shit i mean when you're a millionaire you're gonna need some people around you that that actually trust you and you can do business with so so hopefully i don't know we'll see what we can do for him we're gonna see what we can do for him because definitely i think logan you know logan is a good person with tiktok i'm horrible with tiktok i'm not even that fucking good with youtube i think i just enjoy being on youtube because i can talk for a while and shit like that but as far as creating content and another thing about my YouTube videos lately, like YouTube pulled me out the algorithm because I kind of had an issue with them. Like me and YouTube kind of had an argument over some shit. So now they, they haven't been putting my videos in the algorithm. It's totally cool because I told them, you know, my videos used to get like 2000 views, 4000 views, stuff like that. Now they're like, you know, barely getting a thousand. It's cool because I tell people I'm busy doing other shit, too. Like I'm doing breaks. I'm doing cars. I'm doing a whole bunch of shit. And I'm answering comments, too. I don't get really paid for a lot of shit that I do on YouTube. You guys help me with the super chats. You help me with the memberships. But YouTube's not really trying to pay me. YouTube is trying to force me to do other things to get paid. So they're not putting me into their algorithm, which is cool. Just means I got to just do more breaks and I got to go out and do more private rides. Because YouTube, those motherfuckers pay you like a dollar an hour, two dollars an hour. And I'm like, dude, I'm not sitting here for the rest of my fucking life doing this. You guys, YouTube, you got to help me out, man. YouTube, you got to push my shit out there. You got to do something. If y'all not going to do it, let me know ahead of time so I can go out and make this fucking money some way. But I'm not going to sit here busting my ass on YouTube every fucking day for YouTube to get YouTube advertisers to pay for shit. And I'm getting a dollar to two dollars an hour. That, that shit don't work out too well. Especially with the amount of hours we put into these channels. We put a lot of time and effort. When I know there's money out in these fucking streets that can pay me 50, 60, 70 dollars an hour, which is way more than two dollars an hour. So I can go out and do the 50, 60, 70, or I can keep trying to build this channel. So you guys are the ones that are really helping me keep this fucking channel going. I can't all put it on YouTube. YouTube's doing what they do, and they're not doing much right now. You guys, to me, are doing more than what YouTube is doing. Dead serious. I tell motherfuckers like that. Y'all can look at the video counts and see that shit. You be like, damn, because they're, they're not really putting my shit out there. And I think it's because I'm very opinionated on other things outside of ride share, which is cool. I don't give a fuck. I'm still going to be opinionated on things outside of ride share. I'm not going to change for extra couple of fucking bucks. I'm who I am. If I want to make money, I get my ass on this fucking street and I make money. But I'm not going to change my channel, change my viewpoint so you can give me an extra five fucking dollars. I'm not a five dollar motherfucker. I'm going to go out in the street and make some money and come back and I just have a weak ass YouTube channel. I'm cool with that. I never wanted a big ass YouTube channel, but if they think I'm going to sit here, you know, for the rest of my fucking life, making $2 a fucking hour on them, they got me fucked up with somebody else. I could do other fucking shit. And YouTube be like, damn, this motherfucker ain't doing no content. Not really. <laughs> it's like, the fuck is he doing? Not a lot of content. You motherfuckers ain't paying. I'm out making money. Because sitting around, because like I'm seeing a lot of YouTubers going through the same issues. You know, they're not making as much as they used to make. They're not getting put into the algorithms. Cool. No problem. Only thing about me is I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm an entrepreneur. 
So if I got to go fucking make money, my my neighbor's truck directly across the street, this motherfucker needs wheel cylinders on a big ass work truck. That right there is our $175 sitting right across the street from me. All I got to do is go knock on this fucking door. YouTube is not going to pay me no $175 in no fucking day. They're not doing it. I can knock on this door and be done with that shit in a couple hours. So YouTube has to compete with that. They got YouTubers out here that can make more money out in these fucking streets. So either I'm going to sit at this and I'm going to answer comments and I'm going to do a whole bunch of shit or I'm going to go outside and make my fucking money. That's who YouTube's competing with. Uber's the same way. Lyft's the same way. Yeah, they just like Lyft and Uber. Just like it, man. And it's like, you got to compete with people being able to go out and make fucking money. If you're not willing to pay us for our time and our effort and our energy on this platform, we're not going to be here. I'm not going to lose my fucking car trying to make fucking videos. I'm not going to lose my house trying to make fucking videos. I'll chat with my people on live streams. I'll, you know, rip and run in the streets, see my people in the streets, this and that. But I'm not going to be sitting there acting no fucking. I'll see some people on, on YouTube dropping five, six, seven, eight fucking videos a day on you. That's cool. You got time for that. I hope you they paying you well for that. But I'd rather knock on that fucking door across the street and make that $175. I just did his son's fucking front rotors on his truck. He's got a big ass Chevy Colorado. Did the whole fucking front end on his shit. They paid me pretty well for that. Knocked all that shit out right in my driveway. Hooked that up. Did the F-150, all the fucking tie rod shit. I got to work on the other big truck they got coming in with the hood and shit coming in. It needs new fucking motor mounts and all that. I'm going to end up doing that. So YouTube's going to have to pay me or I'm going to be sitting there working on fucking big ass work trucks all fucking day. And I know YouTube want creators to come out here and create content. I'm cool with you, but I know most of these motherfucking YouTube employees are sitting their computers trying to force us to work more. They want to force us to go out and work harder and harder and harder. It's like, no. So here, Kev's link to his vids. YouTube, Bighorn, Kev, 17. All right. Thanks, Rob. Cool, cool, Robin. Yeah. This is, I pay good money for my last and y'all got me in tears going to fuck up my last <laughs> Dems Dallas. No, no, that's funny shit. Hey, we be out there getting it in. Yeah, we real human, man. Larry, man, love you, brother. You know how we get, man. Love you, brother. And I tell motherfuckers, man, I, I'm one of those people that just, I'm, I'm, when I wake up in the morning, I just want to be valuable to the world around me, but also the world have to show value back. If the world is not appreciating you and not showing love for you, maybe it's the world you shouldn't be in. If you're around a bunch of people that are fucking haters and shit like that, that's the wrong fucking room you in. You got to get around people who appreciate you being there and stuff like that. That's why I don't have a lot of haters around me because haters don't appreciate me any fucking ways. So I don't want to be around them. I just don't. Some people love to be around their haters because they, oh yeah, it creates content when you have haters on your channel. Fuck them. I don't like their energy. I just don't. So I move on. I'm not about that shit. It's a lot of people. What Tucker Carlson just, you can always move to your own interactive website. Remember, Google owns YouTube. CIA government set up Google. Charles Tucker Carlson just had a guy who recently revealed it. Yeah, I know that. I saw that shit. Yep, I saw it. Must plug in, said every Will Sperm. Love you too. Says, uh, Jeff, man, I know I tell you all the time, dude, your live streams and your videos are such a huge part of my day, man. We're not involved in my days. are not the same, brother. You are the best. Thank you, time to wake up, man. Much love, brother. Much love, man. And like I said, I know when I had my issue, when I when my nerves were showing in my tooth and I couldn't like speak too well without it hurting, and I couldn't drink juice without it hurting and shit like that. I mean, I was down, man. I was like, man, I'm not putting out a lot of content. In February, I kind of dropped off and I was like, shit, man, I got to get this tooth fixed so I can start putting out more content. Now that I'm back again, this is how we going to be. We we back in the mix now. We got, you know, a big ass protest coming up on April the 1st. So it's going to be a lot of content leading up to that. And it's not just content about the protest. My content is going to be about why we should be protesting, why we should be valuing who we are as each other, as drivers, as humans on this fucking planet. Been trying to be controlled by technology and corporations. That's what my content is about. It's about fuck them. Let's celebrate us. And a lot of people might not want to talk about that. And it's cool. Fuck them. Let's celebrate us. And they might say, well, I'll come over here for the ride share shit. I can't. I don't want to talk about this and talk. I don't give a fuck what you want to talk about. I didn't ask you what you want to talk about. This channel is not about what you want to talk about. It's what we talk about. So I didn't ask you what do you want to talk about. It's just what we talk about. So if this is not something you want to talk about, just log off and go to the next shit. I don't like when people tell me what somebody said that shit in one of my comments earlier. Hey, man, I don't think you should be talking about this. I don't think I don't give a fuck about what you think. I told him that shit right on the comment because I don't hold back. I don't think you should be talking about this, Jeff. I said, I don't give a fuck what you think. I really typed that to him because I really feel that way. I really feel like I don't give a fuck what he thinks when I make my content. And when I'm sitting there doing my thing, I don't think, well, what does this guy think? I don't even know who the fuck he is. So I don't give a fuck what he thinks. So if you jump on my comments and Jeff, I don't think you should be doing this and doing that. I don't give a fuck what you think. And it's not I'm being mean about it. I'm being serious about it. I really don't give a fuck what he thinks. And so people see my contents. They see my comments and they say, Jeff's mean. 
No, I'm real. I really said that because I really feel that. I really feel like I don't give a fuck what you think. When I'm on my channel, I talk about things I want to talk about. We discuss things that we want to talk about. We have conversation. If you don't want to be a part of it, just fucking bounce. Nobody asking you to be here. I'm not forcing nobody to be hostage on my fucking channel. I'm really not. You don't have to be here. But if you are here, then I appreciate you for being here, listening in, chatting in. We all fucking, you know, bounce back and forth off each other, the energy. We talk about shit in life, stuff like that. That's what we about. I'm not about no bullshit. I'm a grown man and I don't ever jump on another grown person channel and I don't tell people, hey, I don't think you should be. It's not my place. In the fucking universe, we got Jupiter, Neptune, motherfucking the goddamn Capricorn solar system. It's not my place in the universe to tell you as an entity in this fucking universe what you should be thinking and what you should be doing. It's not my place. I don't think it's my. So you will never see a comment of me on anybody's channel on any fucking social media platform telling me, you know what? I don't think you should be talking about this. That's that doesn't come out of my mouth because I know my place in this universe. My place in this universe is controlling my fucking mouth, my brain. That's my place. And I stay in my fucking lane. So when a motherfucker get on my channel and they get off, no, you stay in your fucking lane. You don't come on my channel telling me what, what I should be thinking and what I should be saying. That's not a lane you should be in. Because you get in that lane, some motherfucking bulldozer in that lane, I'll run your motherfucking ass over. So I don't give a fuck what you think. Fuck off my channel. And I just, I'm just like that. And a lot of people know who I am like that. And it's not a mean way to be. I'm just real. And I hope these motherfuckers check themselves and realize they place in the universe and say, you know what? I don't even know this dude. Why am I going to get in his channel and tell him what he should or shouldn't be saying? I don't even know him like that. It's not your place in the universe, man. It's just not. It's just, I, and that's like I said, I'm just like that, man. I'm just like that. I believe everybody knows their position. Everybody knows their place in the universe. They're going to get in where they fit in. I don't have to tell nobody shit. I don't hold nobody hostage. Ain't nobody got me held hostage. If you feel comfortable, you feel at home, make yourself at home. If you don't feel at home, your home is out there. It's cool. But I don't tell nobody their position and their place in this universe. You know where you belong. You know how you feel. You know what you should thinking. You know what you should be saying. That's on you. Ain't got shit to do with me. But these raggedy motherfuckers come on my channel right then because I'm a YouTuber. I say some shit on YouTube. I don't know who the fuck you are. I'm real. I'm a hundred. It's like, just like I walk at this house every fucking day, I scoop dog shit in the fucking morning so I got to deal with flies in the fucking afternoon. I'm real. So if you jump on my channel, you might hear some real shit coming back at you. You say some shit to me. I might say some shit back to you. Oh, damn. This, this YouTuber snapped back. It's not that I snapped back, motherfucker. You snapped at me. I've been normal. I've been cruising. You got on my shit. You got in my lane. You got run the fuck over. That's all that is. I ain't snap back at you. You just stepped in the lane of a fucking bulldozer. You don't do that. That's not that's not what we do around because I wouldn't do that. If I see somebody that operates a certain way, I wouldn't fuck with them like that. Because maybe that's the way they operate. Like you would never see me jump on any YouTuber's channel, whether Sergio or anybody else. Hey, man, you shouldn't be thinking like this. If I got some shit to say, I'm going to go say it on my channel. If I think my opinion about, I'm going to go say it on my channel. I'm not going to tell them on their channel what to do on their channel. I might say, hey, you know what? I disagree with what they say on their channel. That's cool. You know, I disagree. This. But I'm never going to tell them not to say that shit on their channel. I'm never going to tell them, hey, you should say this on your channel. You shouldn't say that on your channel. You should think this. And th no, they ain't my fucking position. What's the gentleman from? Yeah, Pedro the Demon Time. Man, fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> I think, he, see, I think he said about the conspiracy. I died laughing the response. Yeah, Fortune, that, that dude, that dude. Yes, that's what it was. And this motherfucker's brand new to my channel. I, I have so many conspiracy theories channel all, all back from 2021, all over my fucking channel. Those videos are old. So I was posting all those videos a long time ago. This motherfucker pops up in 2024 saying, I don't think you should be talking about that. I'm like, motherfucker, I've been talking about this. You late. I'm telling you, it's a lot of short bus motherfuckers out there. And what they should do is probably type some shit in my search box to make sure that I haven't already talked about shit like this before. He's at the tail end of the fucking candle. We've been burning this motherfucker for a long time. You're on the wrong end of the fucking candle. So if you're talking about, you shouldn't be talking about conspiracy. I was talking about conspiracy shit on my channel before I even had a thousand subs. It's like, oh, it's, it's going to stunt your growth. If I was talking about this shit before I had a thousand subs and I'm at almost 9,000, how's it going to stunt my growth? I'm like, that, that part loses me right there. That part fucking loses me. Because people would jump on my channel and immediately say, wait a minute, there's conspiracy theories and shit on this fucking channel. I don't want to sub this channel. No, people see that shit and they go, you know what? You're probably right. This dude speaks his fucking mind. He don't give a fuck. He just speaks his mind. If you don't like how my mind works, cool. It's not how your mind works. So what are you worried about it for? Just go about your fucking business. I mean, it don't bother me that you don't think like me. Just like it shouldn't bother you that I don't think like you. Just go about your fucking business. It's not that hard to do. And I'm, and I'm one of them people, man, that just... I believe everybody's an independent individual in this fucking universe. 
and I'm not here to change nobody. You get in where you fit in. When you feel like a like-minded person, you kind of gravitate to those people. You do that shit. It's like magnetic. When you don't feel like you drive with somebody, then you just don't fuck with them. It's cool. I tell people, a lot of people don't fuck with me. It's cool because I know I'm pretty abrupt. I mean, I was like this in corporate. How do you think I made it so far? If I was a fucking pushover, I wouldn't have made it that far. They would have probably walked all over my ass. But when people saw me fight back, I mean, I talk shit back to my bosses and everybody else. If they didn't like it, that's cool. You ain't got to like it. I'm the one who's got to be here tomorrow to do all the wire transfers. And I got to do all the fucking codes for this. And I got to do the whole download for that. I got to do the whole balance sheet in like in four fucking days. If you want to fire me right now and do all that shit yourself, knock yourself the fuck out. Fire me. But you got a lot of work you got to do because it's all the shit that I used to do. So fire me today if you feel fucking froggy. Fire me. Who going to do all this fucking work? Thank you. So you need to plot. Fire me at a time that's more convenient for you. So you need to fucking have people come in, train first. And when I know this motherfucker's training, I'll probably leave the fucking building. But somebody's got to train for the job that I do for this company. Otherwise, you can't fucking fire me. I'm the only one that's doing it. So you feel fucking froggy, knock yourself the fuck out. You might not like my mouth. You might like the fact that I got an opinion. Then I'm not like a pushover. But there's nothing you can really do about it. You can say we're going to fire Jeff. You're going to have hell for the next few fucking months figuring out all this shit. Knock yourself the fuck out. <laughs> And I'll have another job that I'm going to be getting trained at real fucking easy. Getting paid the same amount of money to sit back and get trained. It's like, damn, Jeff, what are you doing? Eating some fucking donuts, getting trained. <laughs> like, man, man. <laughs> Thanks, Uber Lyft Ride. I appreciate that. Jeff is the best. Samuel L. Jackson can't say motherfucker better than Jeff. Keep it real. <laughs> yeah, forever right to police your channel. Haters need to roll out. <laughs> Samuel Jackson, my dog. That's my dog right there, man. Shit, if I had to be anybody in a... In the next lifetime, it will be Samuel Jackson. I'll be like, listen, you mother. <laughs> this is pretty remarkable how YouTube has content created self-censor because they're more concerned about their channel growing than they're about their own integrity and speaking the truth. Yeah. And that's what I say. I don't really censor myself a lot on this channel. I really don't. And people say, hey, you know what? Jeff, it's a bad thing. You should probably censor yourself. I'm like, no, because most of YouTubers. They're on YouTube because they want to make a lot of money. I don't mind making the money I make on YouTube. It's not a whole lot, but I think I still make more in life than I make on YouTube. When shit gets imbalanced and I'm making more on YouTube than I'm making in life, then I might have to say, you know what? YouTube can really fuck me up. But that's only if I live above my fucking means. A lot of YouTubers, they get a lot of fucking money. They start buying M4, fucking BMWs, nice big ass houses and shit, condos, a lot of fucking furniture shit. I would never do that. I'm like, because I've never been that way. Why would I start buying shit that I could never buy anyways? Never buy shit that you can't afford. Because when you start living on fucking loans and living on when I get the money, that's credit. Oh, when YouTube gives me the money, I'm going to go buy this. When I No, that's credit. Don't do that. When I get money from YouTube, I go fix my motherfucking teeth. I was like, you know what? My tooth has hurt me. I don't go and say, oh, man, I'm going to go buy this and buy that. I'm going to go balling out of control. No, I take care of the important shit because all I need is me. I don't need an M4. I don't need a big ass fucking house. I don't, all I need is me. And if I can walk out this house every fucking day and make some money, I can knock on people's doors, ask them if they need this truck fixed finally. How much they, hey, if you go get the parts for it, I could do it today. Just pull it up to my driveway. All I need is me. And if I can have the ability to fucking talk without my fucking tooth hurting, I can make it. I can do okay. But a lot of people, you know, they surround themselves with things that make them look more valuable than what they really are. I say, if you can't walk out the house with a $5 fucking t-shirt on and $10 pair of fucking sweats and people realize how important you are, you're probably not that important. I could go stand in my fucking driveway with flip-flops on and somebody would come up to me. Hey, man, Saturday, is there any way I could bring my car over? Because I got kind of somewhere on with trend. They know how valuable I am. I ain't even got to wear no good clothes. I could just wear regular fucking clothes. My neighbors like me. They know how valuable I am to this community. They say, you know what? Jeff could save you a ton of fucking money from taking your shit to a shop. Just go parking in this fucking driveway, leave the keys in it, send him a text message. This is his phone number. He'll give you a real good price. I don't have to wear expensive clothes for that. I could wear like $5 clothes and people know who I am. But it's the people that go out and they try to spend, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars in fucking clothes and say, hey, look how important I am. Look at all the expensive clothes I got. You still a cheap piece of shit, though, because if you didn't have all those clothes on, who would you be? I mean, think about it. You'd have to be something without all that in order to be something at all. So strip yourself from all of the fucking weird shit that this world is trying to throw at you. Strip yourself from all that shit. Like motherfuckers know me. I've been riding around with a fucking $200 telephone since 2018. So I've had a $200 telephone since 2018. That telephone has made me a lot of fucking money. 
because it's not about how expensive my phone is. It's just a two hundred dollar phone. All I did was get a hundred gig chip and put a hundred gig chip in it because I think it's on like a sixteen or twenty eight gig phone, so it's a little phone. But I put a hundred gig chip in it, so now I got hundred and twenty gigs, something like that, and I use it pretty well. But I'm one of those people that I'm okay with a cheap fucking phone to do business with because I don't want to have to relearn a whole new device all over again. I'm comfortable with that device. I know that phone inside and out to get a new phone would throw me the fuck off, especially with a new one of today. It would throw me off. I'd spend more time trying to figure out how to get shit done than actually using that phone. Now I was like, he said, why don't you get a new phone? Eh, That's good. I just keep all the videos down. That's it, man. That's it. I don't do that shit, man. This is hopefully YouTube is paying more. You have a lot of subs. Uber live right. And I tell a lot of people, YouTube doesn't pay based on subs. They just, they've never paid based on subs. Subs only indicate how far of a reach you have. But the actual video views and the length of the videos that you put out, that's what really pays you. Subs, you can have, you can have a hundred thousand subs and not have any videos on your channel and you will never get paid because you don't have any videos on your channel. Once you start putting the videos on there, now you're going to get paid per thousand views. Every thousand views you have, you get a certain dollar amount. Some videos get more dollar amounts because they call it RPM revenue per milli. Per milli is per thousand. Some videos get more per thousand than other videos get per thousand based on length, based on content of that video. Advertisers may want to be on it. Advertisers may not want to be on it. So sub count, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. It's just like, how far of a reach you potentially have with the video you'll meet. And a lot of times I put out videos, YouTube don't even tell people I put out a video. So their notification shit is not even like right. For me, it's not right. Because if they don't like you, if YouTube doesn't like you or YouTube doesn't want to promote you this month, you'll put out a video and a lot of people won't even know you put one out. You'll put out a live stream. A lot of people won't even know you went live. It's, It's how YouTube works. So luckily me, I have a car and I can go out my house and I can make money out there. A lot of people rely on YouTube for their main source of income, which is cool if you're making a ton of money. But if you're not making a ton of money, nah, I wouldn't dream about YouTube being everything for me right now. Not at this fucking level of the fucking game. Nope, nope. Because they could easily, you know, freeze my whole fucking account and I don't even make enough to live off of. Even in savings and shit, I don't make enough to live off of. So it would be like, it would be stupid. For me to bank my whole life on YouTube, even with this many subs, you need like, you know, 2.4 million fucking subs. Each video you put out got to have like 100 and 300,000 views on each single one of them. You need it needs to go like that for you to say, I'm a YouTuber right now. Just make videos. I make YouTube videos. Yeah. (laughs) The first conspiracy theorist was Noah until it rained. (laughs) Exactly. Thank you, Robin, for the like button. Hey, Jeff, commercial insurance and no commercial insurance. I am doing private rides because I want and because I can. Hey, Nicholas. Hey, depending on where you are, I did a video about livery insurance. So if you want to look up livery insurance instead of commercial insurance, look at livery, L-I-V-E-R-Y, and ask your, you can Google it and see what livery insurance is and then see if your insurance carrier actually has livery insurance. That way, you don't have to deal with commercial. You can deal with livery insurance. If you're just transporting people, that's all it is, is livery insurance. Now, if you're transporting products, people, if you want to carry a trailer every fucking once in a while, something like that, you might need commercial insurance because you got a trailer on back full of fucking, you know, tile, floor, tile and shit like that. Livery insurance is not for that. Livery insurance is mainly for people. But once you want to start actually moving things, people and things, yeah, you might want to get commercial. But that's me. The professor showed a great clip with protest clip and marketing the drivers part owner fair coop app coming to L.A. Yeah, that's what I'm, we got to start getting these, like I said, we got to let, let the apps know that drivers have alternative means of making money. If the apps know that drivers have an alternative way of making money, even on the app, cash rides with another app, that's what's going to change the system. The system is not going to change by making them feel sorry for us. These motherfuckers don't feel sorry for us. They've been fucking us over a long time and not feeling sorry for us. They're not going to feel sorry for us. They're going to keep saying, well, the, the weaker they get, the more we keep pushing them down, the more they're going to keep working for us because we keep pushing them down even further. We got people right now working 80 hours of what, what we make used to make like in 40. So they don't like us. They don't care about us. We've got to show the apps. We can find other ways to make money other than use your apps. And once we show them that and we show that riders are using other ways other than their apps, that's when they get fucking scared. That's when they start saying, 
if this shit goes viral, if people start doing more cash rides, people start doing more private rides, people start getting their livery insurance together, getting their business cards, getting their permits their, for hire permits together. If they start doing all of that shit, what do we need the apps for? Think about it. They're only marketing tools at that point. They only tell us where the people are. We don't need them to do the actual ride. Because we have all the payment merchant accounts. We got Cash App, Venmo, and Zill. We've got our own insurance, livery insurance or commercial insurance. We've got navigation in our fucking cars. We've got the car. What do we need the apps for? The only people that need the apps are the people who are so chicken shit that they think the plantation is going to fucking swallow them up if they don't do it on the app. I got to do it on the app. Like, ah, I can't leave the app. I'm on the plantation to stay, motherfucker. I'm here for good. No, fuck that. If I got everything, what do I need the app for? The app is only telling me where the person is. So I'll tell you what, I'll do with the app. I'll send you five bucks for telling me where this person was. But I'm on my own insurance, my own car. I'm using my own navigation in my fucking car. And I'm doing my own customer service about talking to this per fucking person, giving them my, all my merchant accounts and everything else like that. So what do I need you for as the app? I don't fucking need you. So you're taking way too much of the money of a deal that I don't even need your ass involved in. You need me involved in as a driver because without me being involved as a driver, this person going to find a driver that will take them for cash. So you need me on your app. I don't need to be on your app. That's where people got it fucking twisted. And we trying to untwist this shit and the apps don't want that because once we untwist it and we show motherfuckers how we can get business done, all these apps are going to be scared because how are you going to get all these investors to believe? How you gonna get all these investors to believe that you got all these drivers that's gonna stay on the plantation when they starting to see everybody walk out the plantation making rent? Dr riders trusting them. Riders like, oh, we trust the cash ride system. This is amazing. We know exactly who we use. I got business cards. I talk to these guys. I set up rides with them. I see them on the internet. I, whatever this and that. A lot of cool people. And next thing you know, the apps are like, well, shit, we just lost that fucking region. That region is doing nothing but fucking cash rides mainly because everybody's like not wanting to pay our high ass rates at two o'clock in the fucking morning. So we got a bunch of drivers flooding the area doing cash rides now. We're only getting a fraction of the traffic coming out of there. And that's what we're trying to do. Hit their ass in their fucking pockets. I don't want them to feel sorry for me. No, just watch us grow. Watch us go out there and make fucking money. Watch us sit on YouTube, stay in the same fucking car that you used to be on your app that ain't on your app no more. And you see dollars, zeros across my screen, but yet I'm still here with the same shit a year. Say, like, well, who the fuck is he working for? He's got all the same shit. Who's he's working for now? Cause he ain't working for us. Oh, he's working for himself now. Damn, for real? Yeah. A lot of motherfuckers just like him working for themselves now. They left us alone, man. Cause at some point in time, you gotta be strong to realize you can do this shit on your own. Like DB says, damn it, I fucking love cash rides. Hey, DB, you know how Scottsdale cash rides is. Those motherfuckers. And I'm going to tell you right now, up in Scottsdale, when a dude wants to impress a woman in Scottsdale, he's going to flip out a $100 fucking bill. He's going to try to make a driver with a nice ass car. He's going to try to make me a driver with a nice ass car feel little. He's going to say, ah, oh, bruh, I got you. $100. Yeah, babe. This is how we roll. Yeah. Fucking hundred dollar, uh, Kevin. Yeah, Pedro, <laughs> motherfucker. He gonna try to make me feel little. I got a nice ass fucking orange beamer. I roll up clean, motherfucker. Smelling nice and shit. And this dude gonna jump in my car and be like, "Oh, honey, yeah, he ain't shit. You know me, babe. I got a forerunner at the house. You know me. Hundred dollars here, motherfucker. I got you. Don't worry. We balling like that. You know, I'm I'm taking care of him, babe. Look at that. Hundred dollars, motherfucker. Want to make me feel little." And I take that $100, I'll be like, hell yeah, let's roll, motherfucker, let's go. We riding, we kicking it. Of course, he got to do that. These motherfuckers want to throw money around because these girls done seen him at the table all night. These girls done seen him tip bartenders all night. Girls done seen him tip the fucking bouncer. Hey, let us in, let us in, motherfucker. Is he looking at me? I'm taking care of him, girl. I got the money. I got the... This dude, he keep throwing $100 bills around because he's trying to get them draws. So he throwing all these motherfucking hundreds around, and this girl is impressed. How he going to get in the fucking car, a nice ass car, and try to throw me five, try to throw me three dollars. He been throwing hundreds all night. He trying to impress her. So, of course, what is he going to do? He going to get in the car and throw a hundred because he, he she's she going to be like, damn, girl, I was with him. I don't think this motherfucker had nothing less than a hundred. He was throwing hundreds. He gave a hundred to the driver, hundred to the bouncer, hundred to the bartender, hundred to his boys, hundred to the. 
this motherfucker was 100, 100, 100. I think I'm fucking with him. But let him get in the car and be like, hey, here's $5. It's like, what, you running on E, motherfucker? Five? Like, you you don't been getting 100s all night. You ain't getting these draws, motherfucker. You you handing out fives now. You you running out. No. That's why you want to fuck with people. You see a dude with a girl on it. Trust me. Do want to, he want to make these motherfucking girls think he got money. Hey, here you go, honey. I give them the tablet. They play with their party music. We have fun. I get paid. Fuck these apps, man. He said, I'm going to give them a tablet, motherfucker. Give me the tablet. It's like Moses gave the tablet to the people at the bottom of the hill. These are the Ten Commandments, bitch. DB's Ten Commandments. Take my tablet. <laughs> It's like, D, what are you giving them, DB? This is the Ten Commandments of Raj here. Thou shalt not puke in my shit. <laughs> Man, yeah. They do need to do a strip club of VIP. He's not very economical. Man, hey, Zig, I'm going to tell you right now, man. I remember back in the day, we used to go to casinos. Boy, we'd walk out that motherfucker every day. 1300 cash. Easy. Because we played craps a lot. We walk out that motherfucker. We walk in, walk out within 30, 40 minutes, 800 up, already 800 up, just quick. So it's just sometimes when the money you're giving away is not even your money, it's house money. You play in Vegas with house money now. You going all over, the, you buy a motherfucker, hey, all you can eat shrimp for everybody, all you can eat shrimp for everybody, cool. Motherfucker bill come, $365, you just throw 400 on the table. It ain't even your money. It's like you throw 400 on the table. You just won that shit at the casino any fucking ways. It's like you could have just gave it back to the casino. You just bought everybody fucking all you can eat shrimp. All you can eat fucking stir fry rice and all kind of crazy shit. We do that shit all the fucking time. So I understand how some guys feel, man, because I was young like that, too. I used to throw money around everybody. Man, having fun. But now, now that we on this end, we on the service end, we not on the kick it in, we on the service. Oh, I love picking up people that got money. To, they be like, hey, man. I'm like, dude. We'll roll. This is going to be the best experience you ever fucking have, man. If you want to fucking make this motherfucker go like 80, let's go 80. Shit, fuck it. Let's go. Let's have a good time, man. Because all they're doing is just throwing out money. Hey, man, 50 bucks if you take us over here. 50 bucks? Yeah, man. It's only like five miles on the road. Let's go. Let's roll, man. Let's roll. <laughs> so, hey, I think you're on something. The Ten Commandments of Ride Share shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so all you can eat shrimp. Yeah. Hey, let's do that. The Ten Commandments of Rod Share. Motherfucker, thou shall not puke in my shit. <laughs> thou shall not slam my door, motherfucker. <laughs> but you got to put motherfucker with all R's. Urgh. Thou shall not sit in my front seat without an extra tip. <laughs> thou shall be at the pickup spot and not two fucking blocks away. <laughs> <laughs> like all oh, motherfucking Ten Commandments. These are DB's Ten Commandments of Rideshare. I'm going to give you my tablet. Thou shall not touch the ox cord. <laughs> I'll read the ticket in Kevin's voice. <laughs> Thou shall not touch my radio, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch my radio. <laughs> <laughs> like, thou should not tip on the app yeah <laughs> exactly well but don't tip on the app goddamn give me that shit in my hand <clears throat> man i used to take chicks to a casino hit the nickel slides go to a free seafood buffet and still hit if she likes you she likes you <laughs> like man I was like, yo, I just got back on. What the fuck is happening? Nick's back in the house. Nick's in the house. My first ride yesterday was a $50 cash tip. She appreciated education on the app theft. Hey, there you go, T. Hey, you got to get them. Get them, T. Get them. You already know. Educate. Educate these riders. That's how the money's going to come. And they're going to they gonna appreciate the education because the next rider that she gets, the next driver she gets, she's going to be able to educate him. Hey, so I heard you guys tips her, you know, be the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, and he already don't know right now. All right, she cool. She with it. She with it. And that's how we're going to be infectious and spread the whole fucking ride share community. We're going to be on that shit. <laughs> See, don't be touching my air, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thou shall not add it. Add it. Addition stops doing the ride. That shit. That's a commandment for your ass right there. Man. Thou shall not add an additional stop doing a ride. Damn, man, that's what I'm saying, man. You got to rewind, man. You just had to like 40 minutes ago. Yeah. I just had the time to wake up. Nick, my boy, your new C covers and fights look, look sick. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, them C covers is on point, man. They on point. Them red seats look nice. Nice. But yeah, man, we gonna, we have to do some more. We got to do some commandment shirts. I'm going to have to wear one like every, at least like 
have have the top five commandments and have two shirts with five commandments on it. Like the thou shall not shit. <laughs> Anyone else notice how complimentary support is getting lately when you're questioning any writer information? I'm just now getting first and last names of writers and support texts. What? They were like, hello, Robin. This is Jack Savatas. <laughs> Like, what? Jack's fat ass? Yeah, this is Jack's fat ass. It's better than my partner next to me, Seymour Butts. <laughs> He's like, okay, you're very complimentary. I know your first and last name now. What's the deal with you guys? What's going on? Just trying to be extra nice to you. Let me let you talk to my manager. Yeah, Robin, I fucking see you. Fuck you, Robin. <laughs> like, Kevin, what are you doing working at Uber? <laughs> Yeah, I got a new job, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jeff. Why the one dollar tips piss you off so much, man? Because I know these motherfuckers ain't tip me no one dollar. I know they ain't, man. They are not tip me no fucking one dollar. Oh, Nick, you don't know about Kev. Nick's don't know about Kev yet. Oh, you got some catching up to do. Say, like, man, you right, you treat others as you wish to be treated. I'm telling you. Because, man, them $1 tips, these motherfuckers are tipping us, I'm telling you, $5, $6. The apps are retaining those monies. And I think what they're doing is they're using those $1 as markers. Like, they'll give us a $1 tip, but I know they didn't tip a book. It's 5 Now, they can always go back into the system, but, oh, yeah, it's an adjustment right now. It just has to wait for approval. That's what they're waiting to say. Because the moment we sit up and we go, hey, that tip was a $9 tip. Ain't it funny how it changes like the next day? It ain't a dollar no more. Because we don't send them a screenshot of something crazy. And, oh, okay, they'll change it real quick. Man, these motherfuckers, they not slick. We know what they're doing, man. They want to see if, oh, do you got a screenshot of that? Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to be getting screenshots of all my tips from you, raggedy motherfucker. Yeah, you need a screenshot of that. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Thanks. I'll start getting screenshots. But see, what I do is I send passengers fucking text me. I say, hey, you know what? The tipping system is messed up, so please tip me in Cash App, Venmo, or Zelle, or Cash because the tips aren't coming through on the Lyft app, the Uber app, I'll put that shit right on the fucking message and send it to them. <clears throat> it says, yeah, we have pastors raving. Yeah, fuck these apps. I'll pay you direct. And that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. Steven J. Steven. <clears throat> and that's what we got to do, man. I'll fight you in the comments, man. What's good? What's good? What is 2024 BMW 330 at 44K, BMW 330, 45 not bad name start 23 3 36 jeff you have an x drive yep i got an x drive i got the x drive but i got the 2019 x drive the 2019 but it's like it's always in the com name of technical errors yeah yeah and that's when they let you keep a good tip and they, they want us to bow exactly and that's the thing when we actually get our tip they want us to act like you know, we owe them something because they gave us our money. But when the terms of service says 100% of the tips are ours, I don't think they believe that shit. I think they think the tip goes to the service of whoever's getting the service fee, which is normally the motherfucker working at the damn computer. Well, since we helped them find a the ride, we're going to keep the fucking tip. Or was it a $10 tip? Get a person $3. Like, motherfucker, I know this person didn't leave no $3 tip on a ride that good, a $3 tip, and they'll keep seven. Oh, raggedy motherfuckers, man. They be pumping them popcorn ass rides with our tips. Literally saw someone tip me 20 bucks and then see the tip come in until like an hour later. Yep. That's what they do. And sometimes you don't see it at all. You got a text they ask you like, hey, where's my tip at? So the next ride I get after a $20 tip was like a $7 ride, 12 minutes away. Yeah. I did a Kevin and Fire Marshal Bill video. Hilarious. You have me dying laughing on Pedro. <laughs> No, what a, you did a Kevin and Fire Marshal Bill video, hilarious man. <laughs> Robert Reese, don't do him like that. Don't do him like that. <laughs> like, yeah, Pedro. <laughs> That's his buddy though. Boy, he look Kev loves Pedro. That I'm those two motherfuckers gonna have the Pedro and Kev show. The Pedro and Kev show. Yeah. <laughs> At the end, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Pedro and Kev. Yeah. At three o'clock central time. This is Jeff. You can work on any car. Mercedes Benz or Audi as well. Since you're a BMW guy, what you consider a Mercedes Benz. I've had three Mercedes in my life. I had the E320, the S420, and the S500. So those are the three Benzes I had, and I worked on all of them. So pretty much if, if I got the tools for it in the garage, I could probably work on it. 
I mean, I've done work on what the Bentley Mulsanne. The Bentley Mulsanne was the most expensive car I worked on, either that or the Vanquish. There's a Vanquish I worked on. The Vanquish was that it was, I think it was an Aston Martin, and they actually have nine of them. There were nine of them using a James Bond movie. Out of the nine that were used in the James Bond movie, only one was in the original Vanquish. The rest were like copies of a Vanquish because they were wrecking them and doing crazy shit. I worked on the one original Vanquish that sits in Cade Creek or Queen Creek and a hangar at the Pegasus Airport. I just got a picture of that motherfucker. It's bad. Hold up. That shit was bad. And when it when he asked me to work on it, I was like, are you sure? He was like, yeah. I was like, dude, that's a badass car. But I worked on the, uh, what's the name too? Let me see automotive work. Where is it at? Where is it at? I know it's in there. Then I worked on that. Uh, what's the name too? I worked in that Bentley Mulsanne down there. The Bentley was the fun car. So, and then that was a, that's an M4. That car right there is a kit. It's an M4 kit car. So as you can sort of see it, the M4 kit car is actually, the engine is in the back. That's the engine right there. That's my son on the other side of the engine. We had to redo all the turbo lines in this little kit car. So that's the M4 kit car. And that was a, a Model X right there. That was the Bentley Mulsanne I worked on right there. And then that was the Vanquish I was sitting next to here. And that was a DB7. That was a DB7 from the LA Car Show. It's one of one. There's no other car like that. They did the white seats interior. DB7s don't come with white seats and convertible. So he had white seats, convertible DB7. They don't make those. That was a one of one. They had the LA Car Show plate in the fucking floorboard and everything. So I used to work on all those cars back in the day, man. I'm trying to see where's that other. There's something in here. Hold up. Where's that fucking shit at? Yeah, I, man, that's all I used to do is work on cars, man. I, I've worked on a lot of cars in my life, dude. A lot of cars in my life. And it's to a point where I'm just like, you know what? I, I enjoy working on it. I just don't want to get it overbearing again. Because there was a point in time when I was doing nothing but I would wake up in the morning 50 text messages in my phone. I need this. I need this. Like, can you get this today? Because I wasn't an on-call mechanic. I was more of a mechanic that if you needed a good price, a good rate, if I can get to it today, I would. If I had other stuff lined up, I would. I would schedule people. And if I had to take my big truck, I'd bring my big truck to you. And so you can see in some of my shit here. Hold up. Let me go down here. So that was my big Escalade. So my Escalade, you can see it in the back. I had I used to put engines in the back. That's an engine to a four cylinder. So I used to put engines in the back of my Escalade. That's my Escalade. I would work on all the big 18 wheelers at uh, Home Depot that would break down behind Home Depot. I'd be doing them. And that was a big truck that broke down on the side of the road that I had to fix. So I was always working on diesel trucks and everything else like that. So people used to call me all the time and they would be like, hey, man, you know, my truck is sitting over at Home Depot. It was overheating. We don't know what the deal is with it. Can you come out, check it out? We'll pay you to come up and check it out. So I'd load everything up in the truck, drive up, check out the trucks and everything. We figured out what the issues was. It was uh, it could be a leak or something like that. And it's like, all right, let's do it, man. It was it exactly causing it? Uh oh, robberies. He got the the Kevin Fire Bill Marshall video. Uh oh, uh oh, let's see it. Uh oh. So Pedro had catches on fire and the fire marshal comes to the rescue. <laughs> He's like, man, that's funny. Calls it, I stop immediately after a ride. I asked Pastor how much and it doesn't come. Launch immediately complaint and then my money comes down. I tell him and tell him I'll call passenger. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh oh, that's it. What up, Nick? Thank you for the super chat, brother. Thank you, my brother. Was a buy yourself a crusty dusty with this good. This, sir, I'm out for the night. Waking up early. I know it, brother. You got to get up in the morning and do the damn thing, brother. Hey, I appreciate that, Nick. Thank you, my man. Thank you. Hey, we'll definitely hit you up tomorrow, though, man. Like I said, we're going to go out and get that money. We're going to go out and get that money tomorrow, brother. Since I was shocked, Jeff. What happened? What happened, Rob? Oh, let me go back here real quick. Oh, I've been getting tipped way more since I got those sexy seats. You get some, I'm getting some seats, man. I'm getting me some seats, brother. I'm getting them red seats, man. I got to get it. I thought I was hacked. What happened? You thought you was hacked with the app? Oh, with the uh, we're getting a tip or something like that. I got a man that fire marshal bill video, the crusty dusty. I'm gonna go get me some crusty dusties in a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at this this video here. Oh, I can't click on because if I click it, it'll shut my screen down. Dang it! I'm gonna have to go look on uh, Robert Reese's page in a minute. I'm gonna have to go check that shit out. <laughs> I know everybody gonna be dialing like, what the fuck is that? Camera voice, get them red Z, Jeff. Put it on my bus tour tab. Yeah. 
He's like, you need a crusty dusty hat, t-shirt, and fanny pack. I know fill that motherfucker with donut jelly. Like, I mean, I got a fanny pack full of donut jelly. Let's go. <laughs> we finna get riding tonight. We riding tonight. Shit, y'all fucking nuts, man. Yeah, but hell, what that is 11:30. Oh man, we've been doing this shit. I've been online for four hours. We back, baby. We back. The tooth works. Yeah. Was it? yes, this side up here. Yeah. But that's just like I said, that's just a temporary crown right now. Because he hit the root canal on it. Because like I said, I'm I don't tell him don't extract teeth. Don't extract. Let's save it. Let's it was gonna cost a little extra money, but let's just do the root canal. Let's put a cap on it, stuff like that. Man. Say fine Marshall Bill could seriously make a sitcom. Dude would be rich instantly. <laughs> Why Marshall Campbell, man. I'm telling you, man. Hey, all right, nigga. Have a good night, brother. Say it. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's back at the W2 for a minute, but he's w 2 in it, and he's driving at the same time. Double dipping, double tipping. Ain't nobody tripping. Yeah, Zach, and we're going we gonna to find out how we can get Kev. We're going to find out how to get Kev to actually get this money, man. Oh, yeah, Tristan, man. We still live, bro. We be on here, man. We be getting it in, man. So, hey, we, we get here and have a good time. But like I said, I've been on here for like four hours. I think it's time to call it good. It's 1130. I got to give me something to eat, man. I ain't even eat. I just jumped right on the live stream. I want to talk about that Minneapolis thing. But after that, we kind of got off track. We just, we, I mean, we go through a million topics on these live streams. By the time we get done, we went from, you know, government to fucking, you know, ride share. We don't went to money and cash. Rides. How to, man, we don't went through everything. We don't went through Robin's pup. She got a new dog now. <laughs> Rob, I appreciate that, brother. He said four hours with the same energy. Impressive. I appreciate that, brother. Man. Like I said, we've been doing this for a while, man. A lot of us, we like to sit around at bars. We like to chat, talk, have a good time. To me, this is what it is, man. I feel like I'm hanging out with drivers all of a sudden. Did you check your Instagram? No, I haven't checked it today, man. I got to check that shit out later. This is uh, Thanks, Robin. I've been in and out in between rides. This is, yeah, old Tristan's out there working tonight. It's 1130 at night. He's still out there working. Still out there working. Oh, so, man, all good, brother. All right, hey, have a good night, man, y'all. Get those business cards ASAP. Daytona said it. Get them business cards. Don't be trapped like them. If you are a driver in Minneapolis, get your business cards together. Do not let these apps sit up there and play you like a fool. Don't sit up there and let them threaten you about walking out on April the 1st. We're leaving on April the 1st. Then bye. See you. Put all the business cards you can put out there. Make sure you take care and support these riders out there. That's it. It's 1.30 on the East Coast. Yeah, it's only 11.30 here. Yeah, wait till Kev sees this. Uh-oh, we're going to have to see this shit. And like I said, if if you ain't putting out your business cards, you ain't getting everything set up, you're leaving riders in a, in a bind to where you could capitalize on that. Because if Lyft says we're leaving the city, we ain't going to have our app working in that city. It's going to be just shut down. Nobody can get a rides. Fucking let them. Don't let them threaten you like that. They're only going to hurt themselves. When riders are out there getting this money from drivers directly, y'all ain't got shit to worry about now. Only people that's going to be pissed off is Uber. Uber be like, well, damn, if these drivers out there doing cash rides and we ain't being able to get them, they're giving better deals. And we getting our asses handed to us, Lyft. Thanks for, for pissing these people off. And now everybody's out here doing cash rides now. Lyft, you guys just hit the damn hornet's nest. Let them hit the hornet nest. Go out there and get that money because that's exactly what we're going to end up doing. Let's go watch the Foul Marshall Bill video. All right, man, I'm going to go check out this video in a second anyways. Well, we four hours deep in this. You know what? I appreciate you guys for rocking with me the whole time. A lot of y'all be on this shit for four hours straight, and we be doing it, man. We be going in and having a good time, so I appreciate that shit. Thank you guys for the super chats tonight. That's always helpful because I don't be out making no money, so this is what I do here. And YouTube don't like me. That's cool. YouTube going to have to deal with me for a little bit longer because we going to keep the barbecue fucking cooking. We got all the smoke, baby. I'm just kidding. <laughs> YouTube going to be like, pew. <laughs> they going to kill my fucking channel with us. <laughs> Say, motherfucker, you ain't got no smoke. Pew. Like, shit. No, uh, no. Hey, hey, time to wake up, man. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, man, you the best. You you kept it live with us, man. You kept it live with that whole fucking camp shit, man. You all right. You all right. That's the, the link right there. Robert Reese put the video link right there. We're all finna go over there and check out this video he's got on his channel because I know this shit's going to be funny as hell. <laughs> Dude, you wild for this one, Rob. You wild for this one. Yeah, they told me they gonna cancel. Me. YouTube gonna cancel me. They gonna be done with my ass. They gonna say, Jeff, we've had enough of you. We gave you a chance. You never fucking came around. You you've been a shithead from the moment we said you was cool. Like now we're gonna get rid of you. 
Nobody likes you, Jeff. You're out of here. Like, oh, whatever, motherfucker, you do. <laughs> exactly. Blow my candle out. <laughs> They're going to be like, <laughs> Jeff's done. Channel's done. I know. I'm like, that's one down. They're going to knock your fucking, knock your domino over. Boop. Jeff's done. All right, next. Who's the next YouTuber? Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah wow all right man hey much love tonight man so i just watched the video holy shit you guys are gonna cry man hey i'm about to go watch that shit right now y'all let's let's go check it out i'm gonna holler at y'all in the morning oh man but this shit let me go check out rob's video this is gonna be all right man appreciate you guys to rock with me on this live stream we'll do this shit again like i said i'm back now we're gonna be doing these four five hour live streams you could be out there driving making this money i'm always gonna be online Hot 97 right here in LA. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is Hot 97 right here at JWATTS Watts, LA. And we got my man DJ Kev right here. Yeah, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Quit fucking with Kev. I'm going to go over and watch this motherfucking video. Let me see what he's talking about. <laughs> His news, wow. <laughs> 